Hey, if you're the day. But look, I just want to say, listen, yo, Tahuni is a close brother of mine, excellent scholar. You know, um, y'all better watch out because he's gonna be straight chopping some heads off. <laughs> Man, you got you got props from a Hebrew, bro. The oldest known spiritual book to speak on the afterlife. Get that Palo Santos burning. Start burning that Palo Santos and that sage together. You can mix them together in the bowl. They go need some um, frankincense oil in there. Oh my goodness. What's going on? What the blood seed lot? <laughs> going out the holy tab. Oh man. It's on. The Per M. Haru. <laughs> Coming to you live. He has been teaching for over 20 years. A 9-0 record in official public recorded debates. You've heard many teachers out there before in the so-called conscious community, but none with the demeanor, calmness, and detail as Tehudi Amun Hotep Ra on such topics as breaking out of the matrix, truth on religious origins, underground conspiracies, secret societies, mental, physical, and spiritual health, the Anunnaki, the Neturu, Kemet and the origins of Maat, meanings and symbolisms of Meduneter, the only one who will stand in front of question of this wide range of subject matters, answer, question, and debate. Some have podcasts, but Tahuti is the teacher, so he has a pod class. Subscribe to the channel for updates, classes, and much more. Join the chat, call in, Participate live. Get your notepads ready. Welcome to the Tehuti Pod Class. Open your mind. He has been teaching for over 20 years. A 9 and 0 record in official public recorded debates. Correction. All right, man, you already know what it is. That's the anthem for the debate music. Y'all already know. We got we got our brother Tahuti in the building and um he is going up against a heavy hitter. You know, who have been featured on this platform for a while now, Vocab Malone. Um, I don't think Vocab, I, I hope Vocab put in his homework. I hope he knows a little bit about Tahuti and. Appreciate everybody. I Press one for Tahuti. Press two for JJ, y'all. Yes, I appreciate um, always being here. It's fun. It's educational. It's good to hear all these crazy views and um, just hear where people are coming from. Uh, peace and love, everybody. Check me out every uh, Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific on the Tahuti podcast on YouTube. Your words, Brother, stand on that's the not the topic of the debate, JJ. That was not the yeah, topic. I'm talking about the whole world, uh, I'm talking about the whole misinformation. I don't give a damn about the topic of the debate. No, if you look at the community war, I mean, damn, Tahuti is like dusting you on that shit. He's killing you, Jay. And okay, this is why you
And my point is simply this. So we're going to give like this. Respect to Tahuti. Tahuti didn't want the topic. I won't say he was running because we had the conversation. So respect to Tahuti that he wasn't necessarily running like he was scared of the debate. A few minutes later. That's not even. Hey, are you, no, are you to answer the question? Scared to debate. <laughs> this is what they do. So respect to Tahuti that he wasn't necessarily running like he was scared of the debate. A few minutes later. Please, I'm only talking to you. And I'm, but I'm not talking to you. Scared. You were scared to talk to me. <laughs> Don't come on this video. He is God, the most high God. And when he repented, he Me changed and Tahuti his shook his our mind. heads the same time. <laughs> so so who so believes on writings on the wall that he don't know who wrote it? He don't know who wrote the writing, whether it was the Greeks or whether it was the Kimite. Uh, brother, I think I need to clarify that with you. I think I need to clarify. You should let me clarify. Because I wasn't talking what? to you when I was talking about the writings on the wall. There's no name given to authorship, and there's no date given. Whereas, what we know when those writings on the wall were, were done. That's all I said. I didn't mention anything about you. So, he is God. The most high God. And when he repented, he Me changed Me and Tahuti shook our heads the same time. <laughs> so, who so believes on writing on the wall that he don't know who wrote it? He don't know who wrote the writing, whether it was the Greeks, or rather was the Kim Knight. Hold on. Okay. And what does that what does it say there in verse nine? And uh, they that were with me saw and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Right. This is this is the same. Mm hmm. So those that were with him, they heard the voice, but they didn't hear it. Now, according to what he's saying here, to uh, who's he talking to here? Felix or Agrippa? Yeah. And according to this, he says they heard the voice of him that spake to me. Oh, so the other one, where's the other one in Acts 9? They, 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 no, I just want to establish one thing. It's, right, the, it's those who are with him, they didn't, they did not, according to Paul, no. not hear the voice that was with yeah, him. Yeah, you're right. I remember reading this recently and I was like uh, caught on that. I was thinking like, that's something that I don't understand because I don't see what, you know, it's like, it sounds like a contradiction. Isn't it, isn't it easy to understand? No, it's not. Uh, wait, uh, uh, have you ever heard of, um, have you heard of a liar? It sounds like a contradiction in Acts, doesn't it? Right, right. It sounds like a, it sounds like a lie, doesn't it? No. When something is is said and something is said the opposite, both things be true at the same time. If something is said the opposite of something, can they both say at the same time? 
Yeah, yeah. like, a, like, yeah. Can I, can, can I be, can I be six foot four and at the same time be five eleven at the exact same time? <laughs> you to pick which okay. one is the truth. You can, you can try which... to make me look like a dummy, and you know, maybe I am. That attitude. I just wanted to know I which still one. Still honor God above man, and I don't put my trust in man. Okay, I just wanted to know which one was the truth. I want to tell my son so which okay. one is the truth. I mean, you know, that's that's fine. I've been up against oh. the wall before. I know what it feels like. It's all right. It feels strange, right? Swimming up? No, it just makes you stronger. Uh, do you feel stronger right now? Can you hear me? Mic check, mic check, press one. If you can hear me, check the room and see. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me see the one. Let's see a couple of ones. Okay, greetings everybody. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. We are about to have a good one tonight. I already see some questions in. AJ Super Mogul, you sent in something. And I made a, a masterpiece. You sent in a question. I saw, I saw it. I don't think it came in during the class. It came in in between. Maybe sometime right before this one or something like that. I'm not sure. But I saw a question come in and I saw some more come in. I'm looking at my... I'm looking over here already. And let me see. And... Uh, uh, people are supporting. This is great. Let me go ahead and uh, start with the affirmation. And then we can explain how the Tahuti Pod class works. Okay, here we go. Welcome, everybody. We are about to start with the affirmation because we do have a way of life. We do have a certain conduct code that we do follow. I know for all the new people that are here that are used to chaotic so-called conscious uh, sites, it's just chaos and argument. I know you're not used to any code of conduct, but I teach one here, and we follow that. I'm about to get into it. So first, before I start, we're going to start off with the affirmation, and then I'm going to give an acknowledgement to everyone in the class. One moment. Let me give the affirmation on the screen. Okay. My camera. Okay, my camera. Okay, here we go. So this is the affirmation that I start my morning with my family. I start my meetings. I start many important things with this affirmation. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn the music down just a little bit. The top part is in transliteration. That means the sounds of the metut. And then the bottom is the English translation of what the sounds of the metut says. Okay, let me put it on the screen and then we can get started. Here we go. 
everybody can just follow along. You can say it in your mind or you can say it out loud, whichever you choose. I just want you to acknowledge that we are always going to start with the vibration of the affirmation. We're always going to lower our vibrations. We're here to lower vibrations. So here we go. Let's get started. We'll start on the count of three. One, two, three. Anki Ma'at, Un Ms, Nin Tet, Aset Amayat, Nin Habapet Amayat, Her and Hukiwi, Her Ikut. I live from Ma'at, I exist within her. I do not speak in the place of Ma'at. Every day I advance towards Ma'at, my being is surrounded in darkness. I come forth as conscious light. And on the two sides, you can see the image of Ma'at. I've already seen people place this on their Facebooks already. I've already seen people post this. Wonderful. We're starting a new trend. Um, I developed the Anki and Ma'at as a greeting in my meetings, my affirmations, and my classes. And now I'm seeing Anki and Ma'at being said in different uh, chat rooms, which is good. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this. Welcome, everybody, to the Tootsie Pod class. Let me give an acknowledgement of the people that I see in the room. Okay, so of course, the very first person that stepped in was Ashley the Great, who I think is Ashley Too Crafty. I'm not sure, but shout out to Ashley the Great. Shout out to you. And the second person in the room is, oh, it was me. Shout out to me. I'm the second person in the room. And we got our Nanny Aset Murr, one of the moderators. Shout out to you. We got the awesome supporter, Jamie OX, who sends in great questions that have sparked and spawned wonderful classes. Shout out to Squano Trending, who's here basically every pod class. Very consistent. Shout out to Vinny Black Lodge. Vinny Black Lodge, who's been here pretty much every pod class as well. Another one of our moderators is Anki M. Ma'at. And I'm going to explain what the moderators are in a moment. So, okay, we have, uh, oh, Vinny says peace to Uti Ho Paul as well. Yes, all is well. We got. Comedic Heru Hancock, if I'm correct, this is the brother with the super deep voice who called in Killer Priest one time um, after I handled somebody and uh, gave respect for that. I believe this is the same brother. Shout out to Comet Heru Hancock. Shout out to one of the giants. These are This is one of the pod class giants. When I say pod class giants, I mean one of the most serious supporters who supports every single pod class with a donation with support which i'm going to explain in a minute how it works and this brother here always sends in the wonderful questions he's the one responsible for sending in the question that is going to now change the conscious community and that was the question about lower and higher self last week check that out for the first time you're going to hear that there's no such thing as a lower or higher self and that you should not focus on raising your vibration uh, pretty soon, that will probably be a common teaching, but you heard it here first at the Tahuti podcast. Okay, we're not here to raise our vibrations, and there's no higher and lower self in commit. This brother here asked that question. Shout out to the good brother Danny Salinas, who also asked a couple of good questions. His last one was on the Black Knight satellites. Very good question, broke that down. Shout out to uh, to Chandler Brigade. I know him from actually actually a couple of these people I know from Killer Priest Chandler Brigade. Shout out to you. He's a consistent one. Chandler, I'm looking for your cash apps and PayPal. I don't know if you're secretly donating under another name, but go ahead and support the class. And brother, you're here every single week. Good to always see you. Send some support. Help the Tootsie Pod class. Shout out to Chandler Brigade. Arcad Infinite. He's one of the brothers that's on the team. Arcad Infinite. Shout out to him. I'll be introducing them after I answer the first question. Shout out to... Uh, Here's an interesting name. This name brings a very peaceful vibration. Star, Feather, Ghost, Dance. I like that name. Star, Feather, Ghost, Dance. I see somebody in the wilderness um, and, and just meditating. That name is very good. Star, Feather, Ghost, Dance. Shout out to you. Never seen that person before, but I love when the new people step in. Okay. Um, then we got uh, Master K, one of the most dedicated, one of the most dedicated, always asking questions. And I want to know if Truth Seeker is here, or if, if true is Truth Seeker Master K. I'm trying to get acquainted with the different names that I see. Uh, is Truth Seeker here? Shout out to Master K. 
And shout out to True Seeker if that's Master Kane, if True Seeker's in here. Shout out to another one of the Ma'ata Raiders. He's a technician moderator, Ma'ata Raider, and this is the scribe. Ma'at Hotep to the pod class, Ma'ata Raiders, and Saba Tahuti Snake. We are in for another great banger. Yes, we are. I've checked some of the questions out already. And the whole string of questions is on outer space. <laughs> There's one question that's not, but the whole string of questions that, that I've seen so far, because you guys are going to send them more in now, but uh, the questions I've seen pop up already um, is all on outer space, extraterrestrials, Anunnaki. It's a whole string of them. Very, very good uh, vibration that everybody seemed to send in um, the same topic. Except for one person. Shout out to him, though. He sent in a topic on one of my favorite topics. Okay, shout out to the scribe. Shout out uh, Danny Selena, <laughs> me and Tahuti. Shook our head at the same time. Classic. That is a classic. Shout out to AJ Super Mogul. He's another brother on the team. He's another brother on the team. This is Uncle Justin Epp to the chat. Greetings and salutations. This is a brother who's already sent in a question. And his question will be addressed tonight. One of my favorite topics I already see. AJ Super Mogul. He says, he says Uncle Ja Sinab to the chat. Greetings and salutations. And he also says, Patep Ma'at Peace Ur Body. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, shout out to uh, Hybrid Cypher. Yes, Hybrid Cypher is another name that I see on a regular. Uh, this may be a new name. I'm not too familiar with his name, but shout out to you. Big Blunt One. Shout out to you. He puts up the, uh, the fist. Shout out to you, Big Blunt One, with the fist. Shout out to one of the most consistent, Ed Wren, who I see popping up on other channels. And him and the other brothers mention me on other channels in the chat. Thank you all. Shout out to you all for that. He says, Tahuti this fire. Tahuti the slayer. Shout out to the other dedicated, another dedicated, Jody Southworth has been here for every single pod class that I think I can remember. Also know her from the Killer Priest. Shout out to Jody. Eric, that's it. I don't know where I've seen this name. I think I've seen this name on Sonetta or here or somewhere, but the name sounds very familiar to me. Eric, maybe I've seen him on, uh, what's the other brother that... Uh, not forever. I'm not sure, but I've seen that name before. Shout out to Eric. That's it. Shout out to you. Shout out to the brother on the team. He's also on the team. Tahuti Mo, son of Tahuti. Great brother. Used to be a rabbi. Gave it up once he saw my pod class and saw me on Sonetter, where they hardly give any um, donations um, in the uh, super chat. But this brother threw $50 when he saw me teach and said, we need more of Tahuti. Shout out to Tahuti Mose. And ever since then, that don donation wasn't even to me, it was to Sonetta. But ever since then, he's come in here and he has no small donations. This man just. And he brought his, his brother, he's doing work. Shout out to Tahuti Mose. Shout out to Tahuti Mose. Okay. All right, everybody. Big Blunt says Hotep. Anthony Drain. Anthony Drain with the consistent support. He always sends in. A donation prior to the class even beginning, Anthony Drain. Shout out to you. I think I'm gonna have to get to your question. Um, I didn't even. I, <laughs> he sent in the last donation, and because he sends in so many donations and never asked a question, the last time I didn't even know there was a question attached to it. But I did see it, and uh, I think I'm gonna get to that. That's another. I'm so I'm. I got so many questions to answer, but we're gonna get to that. Pazuz, Pazuzu, Pazuza. Shout out to you, Anthony Drain. Shout out to everybody in the room. Everybody in the room. Uh, I like this name right here too. Naya Ninti. Shout out to Na Nahia Ninti. Like that name, Ninti. Shout out to you. Shout out to. You. Okay, that's a lot of people. I can't shout out to everybody, but Ben Frank, Cash Peden with the donations of one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, 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 seven, 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 eight, 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 nine, nine. <laughs> Cash Peden did that one day. Um, so, uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we got a bunch of people in here. Shout out to Lance Mitchell who says, hope to hear the answer to my question on comedic yoga and martial arts in the book soon. Absolutely, Lance. I got to check something because, um, what is that? Is that here? In, uh, 
I did see that question. Let me see if that's uh I'm not sure why that's not uh here on my list. I did see it though, definitely. Thank you for reminding me, brother Lance. I have so many questions that are sent in. Um I'm gonna go back. I, you know what I want you to do, Lance, for me, if you can hear me. Um, I don't have it here in front of me. Go ahead and um because I don't know what your name is on the Cash App. But go ahead and screenshot the cash app that you sent in with the question. Go ahead and send that in. I may be able to answer that tonight. I, I got uh, I don't see the question here in front of me, but I do remember that question being sent in. I do remember that. Uh, I don't seem to have it here in front of me right now, but I do remember it. So you're not forgotten, Lance. Shout out to you. Thank you for mentioning it. I do get backed up sometimes. Okay, Big Vapes. Big Vapes who always gives a donation the day after class. <laughs> Shout out to Big Vapes okay and uh okay so shout out to everybody let's go ahead and get started and uh oh kameet i didn't see kameet kameet here's another one of the monsters one of the one of the giant donators supporters shout out to you kameet may, may your minds feast on tonight's knowledge yes 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 may your minds feast on tonight's knowledge lance if you could go ahead and uh, uh moderators put my email in the room Lance Mitchell, if you could. Oh, TD Jinx. i never seen that name. TD Jinx. Shout out to you. Okay. Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker. Is this a... Uh, Matthew? I guess. There's so many names. Truth Seeker. Did you send in a question about um, about the nuclear, the nuclear explosion on Mars? Was that you? I get so many questions in, everybody. <laughs> I get so many in, but don't worry. I answer everyone's question. Everyone that I see, I have it, get it logged. Um, Maurice Waller, shout out to you. Okay, here it is. Truth Seeker says, I sent a question about the Mars topics you did not cover. Maybe answer tonight, thanks. Uh, yes, Truth Seeker, that was you. I did a class on, um, on the artifacts, the sculptures, the buildings on Mars. And then I believe in between a class, it wasn't class time, but somewhere when the class was over, you did send in a uh, a cash app or a uh, PayPal, which had the question about the um, nuclear explosion on Mars. Yes, that is you. Thank you. And I will be, uh, I see that here. I will be getting to it. All right, everybody. Shout out to everyone. Let me go ahead and introduce myself to those who are in the room. Uh, moderators, if you could put my um, put my email in. I, don't, I haven't seen it so far. So, uh, shout out to the other moderator. I saw Sinetia Moon's name in here and it disappeared. There it is. Shout out to uh, Sinetia Moon. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining the Tahuti Pod class. Wonderful. That is Sinetia Moon. Speaking of moderators, oh, here's another giant, another monster, Black Elucard, the man who asked me for, he asked me for one on one classes. I was so busy, I couldn't give it to him. And then he just kept donating. <laughs> he just kept donating uh big numbers without even questions he just donates he also got on my diet plan he got on my diet plan now he looks like a little bodybuilder shout out to this brother he's very very serious shout out to you okay wonderful 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 okay so lance if you could screenshot your question with your cash app send it in i actually uh may be able to get to that uh tonight i just gotta see it in front of me I got so many questions scrolled up and down that some of them don't see. But you're, tonight is going to be woo-wee, woo-wee, woo-wee. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, fresh off Karis one concert. Wow, lucky you. Chris is a good brother. Brother Chris, shout out to Chris Parker. Shout out to Karis one Shout out to Karis one one of the fathers. Okay, um, Conscious Conqueror, Conscious Conqueror. I saw you uh, on other channels. I finally got to see you. Um, heard the uh, Caribbean accent. Shout out to you. All right. Um, okay, everybody, let's get started. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. My name is Tahuti Amenhotep Ra. I am a teacher who has been teaching for several decades. I've been teaching since the early 90s. I've been teaching um, some of the parents of the popular people that you see on YouTube, their parents that got them into the information way back in the early 90s. I used to teach in an organization also 
where I would be in front of anywhere from four, 30 to 50 to 500 people at the time. And um, it was a beautiful thing. I am battle tested, meaning that uh, the 500 people that would come to class that I was thrown in front of, I had no idea what their questions were. They would come from Britain, Jamaica, Trinidad, Canada, uh, every, every, all type of places, all type of places, England and all type of places all over the world. News reporters would come and I would be put up front and just ask everybody, what do you all want to ask about? And that's actually what brought out, one of the things that brought out the talent that I have, which is to be battle tested, to be in front of a crowd and answer random questions. This is before the Google, before the YouTube, before all the research. There was no such thing as Wikipedia at the time. We just, I just had a bunch of books in front of me and a podium. And so that's what helped transform my mind and advance it to what it is today. Okay, so I was teaching in public for several, several years. And then um, in that organization, because of unfortunate jealousy, uh, the teacher of that organization said that it was not safe for me anymore to be there. Brothers were bringing torches to my um, to my living quarters, wanting me to burn my material. All type of strange things. So anyways, I had to separate myself and I was extremely damaged at the time because I was extremely loyal to my movement in being a teacher and raising up the people. But I could not be around that organization again because of the dangers, the threats and other strange things that were going on. So what I did is I moved away from that type of uh, knowledge because thinking and teaching that type of knowledge was actually bringing um, pain to me because I couldn't be a part of the, uh, the movement as I wanted to be. Um, brothers were getting extremely jealous. The teacher at the time was telling everybody in the organization, if you want to learn how to teach, ask that brother. He would say that in front of like a thousand, two thousand people. And that created, he's, if you want to learn how to rap, to rap music, talk to that brother. And, and it became um, a situation where I fell to the point where even he had said um, that my questions were starting to crucify him. So it was, uh, I just uh, excelled to the point where I had to break through. That was a great stepping stone at the time. And then I went into seclusion. I went into seclusion, focused on business finance and started generating money and went back to the organization and started helping people financially, providing housing for them, teaching them about LLCs and corporations, um, showing them how to open up trust and protecting their money and how to flip properties and so and so and so. So I, I ended up uh, developing a lot of finance. So the people in the organization at the time started saying that I was working for the FBI and my Cadillac Escalade was bought for me by the FBI and all this madness. And that started another type of danger for me because now they said I was an agent being provided money when I was actually just flipping property. But this is what the jealous do. Okay, so anyways, um, I started teaching just a small group of people in person, my inner family. And then um, I ended up moving out here to uh, move to, moved to Canada, then I moved to California, and I was teaching my small group of people. And then um, I met up with a young brother, uh, brother at the time, named Mahati. I don't see him in class today. I don't know if he's here, but um, he's there. Okay. Um, so, oh, Lance, I checked the email. Okay, Lance, I will check the email. Thank you, my brother. We are all working together. Thank you, Lance. I am the only teacher that is putting himself up front to be at blasted questions like this. So if I do fall behind with a question or so, it's because I'm the only one on YouTube doing it. So um, I started teaching the brother Ahati Ma'at. I developed trust for him and I started bringing him around my goddesses and around my family. I brought him into the circle teaching him. Um, anyways, after a while, he started going on YouTube and started seeing the other teachers. Some of my, my goddesses were being taught by other teachers on YouTube. And uh, when I asked one to show me who it was, <laughs> who the person was, who I won't say, but who this particular person was, um, this was a person that um, came as a young man to uh, convert me into Christianity. And he was an upcoming minister at the time. He was an upcoming minister in college, young man. And he, he was brought by someone um, to debate me and convert me. Anyways, in the debate, 
I ended up converting him. He got he got into uh, knowledge. This is somebody that was on YouTube. Uh, he got into the knowledge and um, started becoming a, a security guard for the teacher. And he developed himself on YouTube, became one of the YouTube teachers. And then when one of my goddesses said, here's who they, one of the people they've been watching on YouTube, I said, oh, that's the, uh, that's the brother that I converted out of Christianity. So um, that's how it goes. So at any rate, um, Ahati Ma'at saw all these people on YouTube and told me, you need to come all into the public and let the people know who you are because you have a special gift that the others don't. And that gift is to elaborate thoroughly without the emotion, without the rhetoric and the chaos is breaking down fact after fact after fact. And he said he's never seen that done before uh, where I don't insult anybody. There's no name call. There's no ad hominem. And I'm giving fact after fact, slide after slide after Medunet or after Hebrew, after uh, NASA, after science, all type of things. And he says the people need that. So after about five months of him trying to convince me, I finally came out into the public again under a debate league for an interview and ended up debating the champion there, became the champion and just kept um, beating people over and over again, according to the rules. Once again, I want everybody to know I myself as Tahuti, I do not claim any win of any of the debates that you've seen me in. I don't claim that because it's not my position to claim that as the debater. You yourself should never say, I say this, I say that I won. I, of course, you're going to say that. Um, all the debates, every single debate I've ever had when I came back onto YouTube, because it's my first time having YouTube debates, my debates were always on the street in person. Every debate I've had, according to the rules, the regulations, the voting, the judging, I have won every single debate that I have been placed in. Whether it was uh, Jabari, I have won that, according to the rules and regulations and saw another declaring that. Whether it's a brother named Commission, whether it's Unc West, whether it's, I never knew any of these people. I, I hear their big names. I don't know anything about that because I was not a part of the internet world. I just came on and according to the judgment system, yes, I won every one of the the debates, not by my, Tahuti's words, but by the actual judging system. So afterwards, I was getting a little bit bored of that because um, I'm not a debater. I'm not a debater. I'm not come to debate. I've come to teach. I like the debating, which makes me and my students sharp, but I'm not out here to just... I've never challenged anybody to a debate in my life. I'm not out here for that, but I enjoy the uh, the sparring. And so um, I ended up leaving that league. That league was a little chaotic and and some very, very, very off the wall things were taking place. Uh, some craziness was going on. So um, I stepped away from that and ended up continuing on with, with uh, just teaching, going on to kill a priest on editor. And other places and then i announced that i'm gonna have a pod class so here's what happens here's how this started let me explain how this started and why we're all here now so i'm a one-on-one -on -one teacher where people pay me for one-on-one -on -one, um lessons um, through one person in person lessons or on the internet i'm a one-on-one -on -one teacher it got to the point that when i came onto the internet so many of my old students and people recognized me from 1994, 1997, 1998, that people wanted the one-on-ones. And so it was too much for me to do and still have my regular life. It was too much to do that. So I came onto the Kill the Priest show and I told everybody, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a pod class where everybody can come in for free. But all I expect, since people have the concept of reciprocity and respect for my time and teaching, just send in super chats and I will answer the questions as I see the super chats and the super chats will help support me because this is all that I do for a living. This is what I do for a living majority. The things that I, other things I used to do got destroyed through uh, COVID, um, which is training um, and performing outside got destroyed through COVID. So anyways, I open up a uh, YouTube, I reopen, I've had my YouTube channel for 12 years. I reopen it under the pod class and then YouTube took away my monetization so I couldn't have super chats. 
So what I did is I developed a system where people can actually support by sending in cash apps. So here's how it works. When you send in a cash app for support or for a question on the cash app is a little section where you can type in just like you would on these super chats. Okay. So when you do that on the cash app, it actually pops up on the screen such as uh, that. So let's say for example, Raphael Gary asked me about Easter Island. So the question comes in, comes into my email and boom, um, either I can answer it that day or the next week. Um, when I, when I see it in a row, because there's so many people sending in questions, but everybody's questions guaranteed to be answered. So you send it in, you type in your question, Nito Campbell, he sends in $27. He sends in multiples of nine every class before the class even begins. It's either $18 or 27, something like that. Uh, so you can send in your support through that. Of course, you got monsters like uh, Lamar Owens who sends in $111. Do not be intimidated. You do not have to send in any of these big amounts. These are just the people that truly, truly appreciate. And I know some new people here don't know what is going on. Why would somebody send in this kind of money? When you start to see the way that I answer questions, you will at that point comprehend. When you send in a question, I either answer it there on the spot. I show some slides. But if you send in a question with a large amount and it gets to the end of the class and I can't get to it, when I come back to the next class, I'm gonna write a book for you. My answer is gonna be as if I wrote a book for you. You shall see. So um, those who send in um, the, uh, the uh, cash apps, that's what they look like. Back Alucard, that's Boss Fee in the room. He says, thanks for the knowledge. He always sends in a donation with just a um, thanks for the knowledge or thank you or something like that. Um, now, PayPal. Let me go ahead and put the PayPal because some people don't use Cash App. They use PayPal. No problem. PayPal, in some regards, is even better. Send it as a gift and they will not deduct money from you. If you send it as a business, they will take uh, money from the amount sent. Cash App doesn't do that, but PayPal does. That's one of the um, disbenefits. One of the benefits of PayPal is that you can write a whole paragraph such as this. See this? The amount that you can write on the PayPal is way more than you can write on the uh, on the Cash App. You see, so Stranger sent in this, and you get to write a lot. You get to write a lot. Look at this. Look at all this. This is Beget Leisure. He's another one of the monsters. He's one of the the, the, the Tootie Park class giants. He sends in um, fifty dollars, and look how much you can type. There's actually more. This uh, this uh, Thing is covering it here there's actually more than he typed so you can't even put this many words in a super chat but in the paypal you can so there's way much more advantages to the paypal um so whatever you have whether it's cash app boom like that arthur richardson asked me about the iti that was awesome class since in 27 dollars or whether it is a paypal boom you get in uh, a certain amount of fonts to send in so because I'm a teacher and because people respect what I do, this is why people send in support to me. I tell everybody that I appreciate whatever you send in, anything because this is reciprocity. Now I know some people just come, for example, we have 68 people watching in about an hour, it's gonna be about 102, 102, 125 in about two hours. And there's gonna be 100, and there's 71 now watching. There's gonna be 71 people watching and soaking up the information secretly because we can't see who's watching um, and only about maybe 12 people to 13 people tonight will support um, and this is what we do uh, to each other as a people unfortunately this is what we do to so the supporters shout out to you but of course the other um, 60 people <laughs> that do not support um, please have a appreciation for what I do for the time that I spend. You will understand when you see the way the questions are broken down. Um, and this is what I do for a living. We should have more respect. We should have more respect for teachings like this that can resurrect people and break you out of the matrix than we should for the thousands of dollars that we spent on donuts. Cartoon um, networks and Netflix and going to watch the Avengers, Avengers, 
uh, going to watch Thor, uh, going to watch many Batman movies, multiplicity of times, buying the popcorn, which is $10 a pop. And us as a people, we have no problem donating to um, movies where, where women are calling themselves kings and all type of strangeness. But we will get up at this blink of an eye because it's media or because it's popular and go support these strange, ridiculous movies as opposed to supporting a brother that is actually taking his time to intricately break down the truth for you. We would rather see the fantasy, and everybody knows they spent way more on fantasy than they have on truth. Most people, can't say everybody, but most people spent way more on football, way more on basketball, way more on the new Gucci shirt, the newest polo, whatever you have, than actually spending money on books to read or getting an actual personal teacher. I do this for a living, so much respect to those who do support. And for those who do support, you will see the type of answers I give. With that, with, with that, also, I want to give a shout out to those who are helping the room run very, very smooth. These are my moderators, with, whose name has been actually changed. I'm going to explain that. So in every single chat room, in most chat rooms, you have people with a wrench. They're called moderators. Well, a great brother named Stranger came in and he said, you know what? These are called the moderators with the word mod. Okay, so the moderators are Ankiya Ma'at, Nani Asent Mer, Sinetia Moon, and Ahati Ma'at. I'm going to move this from the screen and play it, show it again. Here are the moderators Anki M. Ma'at, Nani Asent Mer, Sinetia. Let me start again. Shout out to the moderators who is Anki M. Ma'at, Nani Asent Mer, Sinetia Moon, and Ahati Ma'at. These are the people that you will see with wrenches in their hand. They will help keep the room under control. I will tell everybody now and warn everybody. And of course, uh, one second, let me show the technician, the technician um, who is our moderator. And he's in here somewhere, the scribe. Let me go ahead and find the scribe here. He is our technician. He's the one responsible for running the website. Uh, he is responsible for so many things behind the scenes that you all could not even imagine. He's very dedicated and loyal. I trust the brother. And that is one of the only reasons that is the Oh, here's Netta the Great. Shout out to Netta the Great. Peace. Uh, one of the only reasons why um, I gave him a wrench. No one is supposed to have a wrench in the Tootsie Pod class other than those who I trust directly, who have proven to me things face to face. Nobody has a wrench. I don't just throw out, there's no purpose. Um, but the scribe is the one and only brother who I, who I do not know personally, but has shown so much dedication and his technician work that he has a wrench. He helps keep the room in order. Explanation. In other chat rooms, you will notice vulgarity. You will notice ad hominem, people cutting each other off, all type of craziness. And in those chat rooms, they will say, man, I haven't got any cash apps. Man, I've only got a $6 donation. And that is because everybody just wants to see the free chaos. So because there's so much disorder in the so-called conscious community, people are used to having their religion as disagreeing. That means if you look at some of these popular brothers out there that are teaching, they actually have no way of life. Their way of life is just to disagree with somebody else. If you take away their disagreements, they actually have no YouTube channel, which means that they themselves have no actual teachings. Pay close attention next time you, you go to those other channels. See if the person talking actually has a teaching or if they're just, I'm an atheist. I'm against this. This is wrong. The Bible's wrong. This is wrong. Contradiction. I don't like you. I don't like your shoes. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't that, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, the person talking doesn't actually teach anything or believe in anything. So therefore, it creates an environment of people just arguing and arguing and disrespecting. Here at the Tootsie Podcast, we have none of that. That's why so many people get banned here. Uh, people get um, put on hide, hidden, because they're so used to the chaos. They want to come here and type in the chat, chaos. And we don't have that here. We have respect, we have reciprocity, 
questions and in factual answers. Information. And I know it's hard for people to keep their mind focused on information because we want the chaos. We want to see the car crash. When the cars are driving on the street smoothly, nobody's looking at them. As soon as the car crashes, yo, man, everybody's on the street. Why, why are people looking at car crashes more than they're looking at cars that are successfully making across the street? Because subconsciously, we want chaos. We want destruction. But here, there's none of that. So speaking of such, we are now going to get into the questions on the 2T pod class. Shout out to the scribe again. And who says, shout out to Shannon. I don't see Shannon here, but shout out to you, Shannon. Um, shout out to you, Shannon. Shout out to you. Peace and love. I don't see you. And uh, shout out to you. Oh, do, 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 do. oh Cash Peden says, I'm patiently waiting. No, one day I'll get the answer. What question is that, Cash Peden? Send it back in. I'm not sure which. <laughs> what, I'm not sure what question. Oh, also, I want to say something happened last week. So a lot of people that come to the 2T Pod class are watching. Because the class is so long, people um, fall asleep. You know, people go to the bathroom. People do um, many different things. The class sometimes is six hours. And then they come back and they'll say, um, hey, Tahuti, my question wasn't an answered. And uh, one brother said that. And I said, you know what? It was answered on May 27th. You either went to the bathroom or maybe you missed that class. So sometimes people's questions are answered the next week. And the, you, just, you may not be in the class for that um, time. So if you don't see a question answered of yours in a week, um, go ahead and... and um, and let me know. And I may have already actually answered in a previous um, class, which you may have missed. If, you, if it hasn't been answered, then I'll go ahead like uh, Lance and I'll go ahead and put that back into the, uh, the circle and it will get answered. So shout out, shout out to you, Shannon. South Harvard says peace and love. Appreciation to you, Mr. Tahuti. That's how her voice sounds. <laughs> shout out to Shannon. Shout out to you. Shout out to uh, Tahuti Mos who says, hit the thumbs up if you are down with my odds okay shout out here we go and um one cannot put a price tag on my odds occasion but must but must today run after education which leaves them in debt and less wise make wise investments absolutely true okay and conscious conqueror says i want to teach the debate Gar garfield that would be a good debate um Actually, he he issued out a debate. I accepted it, and nothing happened. <laughs> you know, they say in battle rap, the two guys are fighting, and nothing happened. So uh, he already issued out a debate to me on the Christ thing, and nothing uh, nothing became of that. Um, but yes, if he challenges me, then then uh, I may uh, debate him. Um, it would be a all my debates are good debates. The outcome is always the same, but they're all good debates. Shout out to you, Conscious Conqueror. All right, everybody, let's get started with the first question that came in. Welcome to the 2T Pod class. I am going to grab some agua. Uh, and uh, let's go. Here we go. Okay, so um, also, for those who are wondering, what is this moving on my hat? And this is Nia. She's all the way from the bottom, the bottom, the, even past the bottom of the Nile, even further, further down to the, to the South African area. That is where she is from. She is a South African unicorn, and she represents string theory. If anybody wants to send a question on that, you can. So Neith represents string theory in the teachings of Ma'at. And of course, with me is uh, one of the stars of the pod class. He is Zebra. Zebra, a play on word, Seb. Zeb from Seb, the son of our goose. And then Ra. But of course, the words combined sounds like it's making the word Zebra. Because this beautiful, he's so long he can't even get on the screen, but this beautiful young, ah, she adult, adult snake is in the pattern of a zebra. Isn't he beautiful? I keep animals around me because I trust them more than 
people. I know their behavior, I know their nature, and they live according to their nature without any religious book. But any guidance, a lion is a lion, but any guidance, the snake is a snake. The people don't know what they are, and that's why there's so much chaos. So these are my energy centers. I have quite a few of them, and I've been around these creatures ever since I was about seven years old. Peace. Let's get into the first question. Hatima Ma'at says, we practice reciprocity here. We practice reciprocity here to get. We must give to Uti Cash App. Thank you. And below him, Shannon says, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Shout out to all of you, Conscious Conqueror, everybody. Okay, let's get started, everybody. These questions that have come in so far are all about out of space, <laughs> uh, except for one of them in. Maybe two if I see the, uh, I'm going to check my email and see the uh, the martial arts uh, yoga thing. Um, shout out to uh, Robert Williams. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and see something. I'm going to check my email right now. I'm going to have to put it at the, uh, let me go ahead and throw... Martial arts list poses symbolic. Okay, let me put um I do remember this. I see it now, Lance. Don't worry, I got I got you. I got you. I'll do my best to get it in tonight. There's, there's uh but uh I do remember this and I'm actually going to um I'm actually I'm actually going to screenshot this right now. For everybody to hear me say that I'm doing this, I'm going to screenshot this and I'm going to uh, place it right in the file. And I'm going to put, um, I don't know the date this was sent in, but, uh, oh, oh, this is uh, just last week. Oh, that's okay. I got you, Lance. This is just last week. Okay. This is just last week. No problem. Let me go ahead and put, um, put you in right now, September 23rd. From September 23rd. This is just last week. I was looking at things before that, thinking it was an old question. It's just, it was just a week ago. Okay, here we go. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna, okay, Lance, you're in there, Lance. We got you in there. Let me do one more thing. Um, let me do one more thing. Uh, five, uh, let me just see something here. Okay, boom. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. It's kind of a two-part question this one. I hope. Um. Okay. Uh, let's do this. One second, everybody. I do all this. I'm the one-man engineer. <laughs> uh, I do all this solo, engineer-wise. Let me go back. Click off this. And I'm going to make a little file for you, uh, Lance. Um, from, uh, September 23rd. Lance, I got you. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, go like this. Boom. And it versus September 23rd. Is this it? There, Lance. And I put your uh, donation in there too. September 23rd, Lance. And the question again is, just so everybody can hear that I'm seeing it, yoga, martial arts, and yoga glyph poses, are they symbolic? So the, uh, are the poses in the yoga, are they symbolic? Okay, good. You know what? We'll get into it. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Welcome to Tutti Pod Class. We are here. I am here to answer these questions. Uh, let's go ahead and erase this. All those who are new here, watch this. Watch how it goes down. Okay. Let me go ahead and get to the screen. Okay. One second, everyone. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's get into it, everybody. Welcome to the 2 T Pod class. I'm going to do one more thing here. So much going on, everybody. So much going on. Okay, hold on. Uh, 
Do -do 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 -do. And that. And prizes. Is this it here? No. Uh, okay, hold on, everybody. Not sure. Okay. And here we go. I'm going to go like this. Look at the 056. Oh, copy. And this is a, a, like a folder here. All right. Oops. Okay. I'll go like this, this. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody, let's get into it. All right. Um, here we go. Let me get to the screen so I can see everybody. Okay, good. Here we go, everybody. Welcome to Tootsie Pod class. Who here actually remembers me um, breaking down um, meditation at all? Meditation, um, the most popular meditation position. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll do that again. I'll break it down for Brother Lance. Um, who here remembers that at all were, were the most popular meditation positions, you know, the, the folded legs, the hand, and where it came from? Um, Anybody remember? Okay, scribe, you remember? Now, Lance, um, shout out to Lance. You know what I'm gonna do, Lance? I might as well just, I'll break down some of the, medita the meditation position, um, meditation, one of the most popular ones. I'll break it down, the significance of it, where it came from, go ahead and break that down. And then from there, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get into some of the other ones I see. But thank you, Lance, that's how we do it here, right on the spot. Let's go ahead and break it down. The seated position, there we go. You remember Netzer? Well, we're about to do it again. I'm going to break it down again, and let's go ahead and get uh, get to it. Let me go ahead and go. Here, oop, I'm off the screen. Okay, good. I was not prepared to break it down, but Lance reminded me he had a question in from last week, so might as well. Right here we go. Welcome to Tootsie Pod class. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into the. Uh, this is very good though. For those who were here that saw me break this down before. You all know the answer, um, but of course, there's constantly new people coming in, which is beautiful. And there's people watching this that didn't watch other classes, so we're going to go ahead and get um, right into it. Okay, here we go. Where is uh, Lance? Here we go. So here we go, everybody. Let me go ahead and welcome to the Tootsie Pod class. We're about to break this down. Whoops. I'm going to break this down and uh, put a little bit of understanding. Let me hide this. Oh, a little bit of understanding into some of these uh, these so-called yoga positions, or at least one of them. I don't have time to break down them all, but I'm break down the most popular one. Okay, so here they are. Here's some of those popular ones right here. And it says, if you ask someone what exactly does meditation mean, uh, you will get an answer source in any. You will not, you will not get an answer source in any actual language. What you will receive is a plethora of ambiguous fluffy opinionated projected made up answers that are usually created by the person you are asking which create a feel-good answer which itself is never questioned or you end up in one of these stereotypical positions which are usually uncomfortable and the focus of maintaining the foreign position in mind itself is a distraction to the mind's focus on the meditation what if I were to tell you that the original word for meditation was the same as the word for the body itself? And the reality is that your consciousness is what holds the physical and etheric body together through saket, memory. So here's some of the yoga positions, the most popular ones. Uh, the most popular one I would say out of all of these would be the ones on these side. What would you all say? Would you all agree that these of all the yoga positions, meditation positions, I would say the this is the absolute most popular yoga meditative position that everybody gets into. Some type of folded feet crossed and they're thinking or their hands like this. Would you all agree? These ones here are a little bit more abstract. Uh, of course, we've seen people in these positions. But these are the ones I'm going to deal with right here. Let's get into it, everybody. Welcome to Tootsie Pod class. Thank you, Lance, again for reminding me because you did give a huge uh, donation. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, deal with you and break it down for you, brother. Here we go. All right. So we're going to scroll this down, shrink this down, 
and uh, break it down. Let's take a look, everybody. So here is uh, let me shrink down. Okay, so here is Tahuti. So this is Tahuti for those who are new. This is the image of Tahuti, which is a man with the mask of a habu bird, also called a kamam or kamam bird, or the habu bird that the Greeks call the ibis. So this is Tahuti to the Egyptians. Um, was Egyptian god of wisdom, learning, inventor, writing, patron of scribes, sculpture of the statue depicted with him with the head of an ibis, a long-legged wading bird common in Kemet, or Egypt, as they have it. The ibis was sacred to Tahuti. So too was the baboon. He was also often depicted as the head of a baboon. So this is Tahuti, Tahuti. The Netra Tahuti, the god of thought. Keep that in mind, very important. He's the god of thought. Uh, his scribes, in the position of writers, thinkers, think thinkers, those who teach mental focus. Remember, when you see the image of people in yoga, they will tell you, this is how you focus. Breathe in, breathe out, go within, and focus. Let's look and see if there's some ancient indig indigenous images of anybody in those positions. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are uh, new, who have not seen this before, um, here we go. So this is the statue in limestone of Henka, priest scribe of the Pyramid of um, Seneferu, found in um, Midian, early 4th Dynasty, Old Kingdom. This is the position of the thinkers, which eventually became the position of the meditators. And if anybody what meditate means, they'll say it's to think, it's to go deep within. They always have their legs crossed and their hands are usually on their legs or their hands are, are out. They, they have their palms up, symbolic of receiving um, energy, and their fingers in different um, positions, which circulate the energy, which is why you may see them in positions of a circle. But here is the origin of it. And it was the position of the thinker. Okay, the thinker. So here is Eminem Opie of 1300 BC, scribe of Ma'at. You see him in the exact same position. Okay, where does this position come from? Remember over here, it was said that Tahuti was sometimes shown as a baboon or would have a baboon that would represent him. He was often depicted as with the head of a baboon. Why? Because in ancient Kemet, what do we base things on? We base things off of watching the nature that was around us and then formulating a system that would emulate nature so we would be living vicariously through nature and it would be living vicariously through us or the as above, so below principle. If you are surrounded by beautiful nature as you would be in Kemet, you would want everything around you to remind you or to make you think of your ultimate spiritual goal, which was immortality. So you would take aspects of nature that you couldn't resist looking at because it was all around you and you would incorporate that into your spiritual system, which is exactly what the people of the Metut did and the Netur did. So over here, we have the baboon. See the baboon over here? The baboon, the symbol of Tahuti, but why? Why the symbol of Tahuti? Tahuti, the great thinker, the great meditator. This position originally came from an animal. It did not even come from a person. It came from an animal. This is the great baboon that the Kemetians would see along the Nile and throughout the motherland. Notice how the baboon is sitting. It is actually one of the only known animals to know to actually sit on its own butt like that with its hands on its legs and we would observe this and the, and the baboon would look like an old man thinking so this became the symbol of thinking and eventually became the meditation symbol so this the scribe would imitate the baboon the original object of an animal that was thinking here we go over here so the netatuti got a thought of the script and the scribes in the position of the writers thinkers those who teach mental focus now we go over here and we see the scribe over here he's in an interesting position in his position one of the positions of meditation one knee up one knee to the side where does this come from it is also the other position that the baboon does everybody see it boom so the you see this is where the meditation positions came from or at least that particular one the one that i have time to go through the most popular ones so you see the scribe has one knee up one knee to the side here's the baboon one knee up one knee to the side 
and the Kemetians would imitate that. And look at this over here. Tell me that when you look at this image of this beautiful animal, not this little cute guy right here, he's cool, he's cute, but not this little cute, cute guy right here, but what about this? Tell me, everybody, when you see this, you don't think of a man thinking. <laughs> does that not look like, <laughs> does that not look like an old wise man in a Kung Fu movie thinking? Look at that, look at the baboon. This is what the Kemetians would see in the morning. They would see at nighttime, howling at the moon. And they would see the baboon sitting there. And we would say, wow, look at this animal. It's the only animal that sits in a position. And the way that its face look, looks, it looks like a person, a man. Look at his hands crossed, and he looks like he's thinking. He's sitting on his butt. You don't see dogs sitting on their butt, lions sitting on their butt. You don't see frogs sitting on their butt. You see this wise man, and it looks like a thinker. So thus developed the position of the scribes. So what did the scribes do? They took this position of the thinker, the meditator, and they used themselves as their own table. So here's the position of the thinker, the baboon. And over here, you'll see the scribal papyrus inside the feet because the feet now serve as the table. So what are you thinking and meditating on? On that which you're reading which is why when you look at this particular scribe here, it looks like he's looking down, right? Because he's reading, he's writing. He is the writer of wisdom. You see that? This is where the position of that particular yoga uh, position came from. The concept of meditation now, how it ties in, because most people don't even know what meditation even means. We go to the etymological dictionary. Everybody, welcome to the Tutti Park class. This is how... We answer questions here. The good brother Lance reminded me of a question that uh, I didn't even have in my file to answer, but boom, here it is. So we look at the word meditate. Meditation is contemplation. Contemplation devout, right? Reoccupation, right? Private devotions, prayer from meditation, which is thought, reflective study. See that? That's how we know it came from the scribe. It deals with the study of something, thinking about that which you study. So this is meditation. To rehearse something. Do you guys see that down here? To rehearse something. Because you're rehearsing that which you read. You're a focused person, so you have a plan. You're planning, revising, studying. That was the job of the scribe. Okay? So meditation invented these, from the word meditation, it has the the cognates of these other interesting words. See these words here, such as empty. Empty is in there. Medicine. See that? That's why when they tell you in meditation, when you're meditation, meditating, empty yourself. Empty your thoughts. Start over again. Start fresh. Put yourself in a certain mode. Put yourself in a certain... And do things in moderation. Put yourself in a mood. This is where the concept came from, from the scribes. Okay, let me go ahead and shrink this down. Okay, so meditation itself is healing. To think, to mold yourself in a form of medicine, it is to channel thoughts. As we can see, the system is, is in place of meditation to mold one's thought. Right, so the system in place, once again, we see that meditation is going back to medicine. Who was Tahuti the god of? What did it say the Tahuti was the god of? The god of thought, the god of medicine. Medicine is where they got the concept of meditation from. Now in this, in this culture, meditation is completely separated from the medicine or the medical field because they don't mix um, science and spirituality. But in actuality, the medicine man in the motherland along the Nile, he was the person that taught you how to meditate. That's why when they created the Masonic English language, it had the same root, medicine and meditate, to put you in a particular mood, okay? So now what they do is they give you a new form of meditation to put you in a particular mood and to control your mind, and that is, ba 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 the media. Media is also from that same term. Media, that's your new meditation now. You will admit everybody in this room that you watch more TV you have watched more TV, you watch more Instagram, you watch more Facebook, you watch more, uh, what is that called? The TikTok. You watch all of those much more than you meditate. 
because that is your new meditation now is television media that is what molds you now <laughs> okay and that's why you watch that much more than you actually meditate you watch way more youtube you've watched way more avengers way more batman way more thor way more captain america way more woman king you sit there in front of a movie woman king or any of these other silly movies for two hours staring at a screen that is a form of meditation because during the movie you rarely are not talking you're just in thought of whatever the media is giving you that is the new meditation they flip the script and switch it around let's take a look everybody welcome to Suti pa class i'm going to break this down right here okay in reality we would say nukku nukku in the medut in the metut which is i am consciousness so you are light consciousness your manifestation of light that is one of the things that you would focus on in the Per M Haru, the very first spiritual known book of meditation to the afterlife, we are on um, page 115. And here it is down here at the bottom. I am provided. I am intelligence. Nuk ku. Get a good look right there really closely. And what will you see when it comes to intelligence and thought? You will see bump, 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 the Tahuti bird. Going back to Tahuti and reverence, you see the man there on his knees. You see these images. You see the man there with one leg up. <laughs> I know people are always wondering when you see the image of a person, why they have one leg up. Did you see the baboon with one leg up? Okay. You've probably never heard in your life of why the images of the people in the Midnight Script, why is there one knee up? Just like the baboon has the one knee up. Nook ku. You are intelligence. That is what you are, conscious light. That's why in the affirmation we say, I come forth as conscious light. We have EUF, Keperef, M, Ku. You become conscious. That is the whole goal of the Per M Haru, is to tap into your consciousness. Okay, now let me go over here. Let me go ahead and blow this up. To show you how deep the people in Kemet was because the word meditate is always about going inwards and tapping into your inner self okay so here is the ancient bird of Tahuti again the bird of consciousness going all the way back to the tomb of scorpion one that's where they got your movie scorpion king from from scorpion one at abti that's where they get the the uh, word abydos scorpion one 3400 bc tomb of scorpion one there is the bird and there it is for the word spirits the word spirits this is where the concept of spiritual comes from when people say i'm not religious i meditate i have crystals i'm not religious i'm spiritual because in ancient commit the concept of spirit was you you are the spirit you are the light you are light consciousness that is what you are looking to come forth as conscious light in your thinking posed position of the baboon the thinker reading the per m haru reading the axioms of Patahotep reading the instructions of Ma'at and going inwards, putting yourself in that meditative position, which is really the position of imitating a reader or a thinker. Now, we go to the word Kai. Kai, the word Ka, which is the ancient word for spirit, over here. Ka, what is that? It is to think. Look at that, everybody. The word ka is also the same as kai, and that is your inner self. That is your, actually your bioenergetic template. The bioenergetic template, which is the real you, the inner self, which echoes itself out into the pure energetic, pure energetic etheric uh, um, double, which becomes the ba. It starts off as the ka, or what's known in the ancient meditators the new ancient meditators, which became the Asians, and they took the Ka and they put themselves in those same positions. And they say, we are going inwards to tap into the Chi. <laughs> and the Chi is from the word, is from the Ka, the Chi, okay? Chi is Ka, same um, energy, force, that is in everything. It's the energy that you see when you have an out-of-body experience. That is your Ka. And the Kometians were so in tune that you were a conscious person, a being of consciousness that the word Ka actually means to think, to think out, to meditate. 
to speak, repeat, to say. Okay, that is the ka. And now we have kat. The kat is meditation, thought of the heart, the kat. In Kemet, the way that people spoke or the way that um, communication was made, it was through the sound of an object, not necessarily just the spelling, but the sound of an object. So kat is to meditate. Right, but what else is kat? Over here, kat. Over here, kat. This is spelled a different way, but it is the same kat. It's actually spelled multiple ways. Is the body, your own body, the womb. At one birth, you see that? That is the kat. People, mankind. So people, mankind is the kat. It is also the ka, it is also the kai. You are the meditation. See the word for a person? The word for a person is the meditation. Do you see that, everybody? Have you ever heard this before? The word for meditation, the kai, which is to think, which is also people and mankind, is a man in the meditative stance of the baboon. Boom, there it is. And if you go over here and go down, we see ka. And there's ka, associated with the ba, the soul. Sekum, vital strength. The spiritual body, that is you. You are the ka. You are the kat. You are the manifestation of meditation. And thus, the determinative of a person who is the meditation itself is, in actuality, a person in the position of of meditation. I don't think I actually even broke that down last class, but here it is. Boom. That is you. You are thought manifested consciously. You are the meditation. Boom. Meditation for connection to pure energetic double, the ba, and sensitivity to refine subtle changes within the bioenergetic template. The ka and the power of attraction in the real time zone. Here is one of the practices and rituals that are said in the Per Am Haru. And it goes like this. From Inpu, my legs and walk are firmly grounded. So you're walking firmly grounded as a spiritual being. You rise up for yourself. Make it for yourself to rise. Seket. What is Seket? That is Sekmet because it is the female energy that brings your meditative body or brings your ka into awareness and causes you to have an out of body in other words a rebirth from yourself out of yourself the ka coming out of the kat both of them having the same root the kai the key the chi the meditative that is you just echoing yourself out and becoming your own double but it cannot be done without the feminine power that is the sectet the seket the goddess so the goddess is on the other side of rebirthing you that you may be in the higher conscious realm which is the pet being done what i command because in that realm you are the utu you're the commander it is your vibration and thought because you are thought manifested and that thought manifested comes out in tones which comes out as a vo voice and that voice of pata is that which creates everything so thus everything that's being done in that world you can command it in the realm of the het pata ka that is the realm of sound underneath, the underneath realm, the subatomic realm, the realm that opens the ka. Right? I know by the way of a by way of pure heart. I have conscious memory. By way of pure heart, I have conscious memory. By way of the pure heart. Okay, so you are. Oh, let me uh, blow it up. It got cut off. Okay. I have conscious memory by way of the pure art, pure heart. I have conscious memory by way of my heart. I have second gained power over my two hands and arms. I have gained power over my feet through mental consciousness. And my ka and I mentally manifest my desires through love energy. There's the ka, there's the marit. There's the artery, 
the Ari, which is which is consciousness or the ability to see something or make something through consciousness. That is the Arit, the word in Kemet for working, but it's it's imaged through the eye, which is consciousness. That was one of the meditations in Kemet. Boom. There is my answer to that question, Lance. I hope you appreciate it. I'm going to go back in the room and see if I covered some information that you didn't know and at least gave you a little bit of extra knowledge and wisdom. For some reason. Okay, there we are. I'm back. Okay, good. Let me go back in the room and see if anybody heard the answer. Or maybe you've heard all the other committee teachers break it down already. And I was just repeating. Let's take a look and see. I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. Here we go. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Let me see if uh, boom, 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 boom. the person who actually asked the question, Lance, heard any of it. Let me check and scroll down. My thing lagged, so I don't get to see it at real time. But we got, okay, we got Shannon putting up fire, fire, fire. But Shannon putting up fire. We got uh, Mary Bonuts saying powers to Hootie. Okay, here we go. And then we got Master K saying there's no relation between Meru with the Sanskrit or vice versa as of yet. Yeah, I've heard people, um, another topic though, but I've heard people, a particular person trying to say that the Meru came from the Sanskrit, poisonous. But anyways, yes, uh, we got, uh, oh, Shin, Shinbo Shane, peace family, peace to you. That is the brother that uh, Hootsy brought in, he calls him his little brother, shout out to Shinbo Shane. Asked two questions that I answered, I believe last week that was also explosive, shout out. All right, so we got Shannon saying, summon, summon command, summon command. Lance put his thumbs up. <laughs> Lance, I know there's a lot of notes to take. I don't know if that's my very first question I've answered for you, but that is an example to you and some of the new people of how Tahuti answers and breaks down question. And I was not even prepared. I was not even, um, I forgot about that question. I just, uh, I, I forgot about that <laughs> question, but there's your answer. Boom, okay, big vapes. Uh, put up. I don't know sure what that is. Shout out to Big Vapes. And then we got uh, Tahuti is properly deciphering the Per M Haru. That is my job as Tahuti here. Um, profound, profound, profound. Heka Kepara. We got Lance is still putting up. Uh, he already gave a thumbs up. He's putting up these things. This the symbol of the vagina. And uh, I guess that's praise today. Now shout out to Lance. We got Jody giving a happy face. Okay, good. People heard the answer and they uh, appreciate it. Cash Pete and put up fire, fire. And uh, Conscious Kankara says, that was great. Ba and Ka and Baboon and Real Yoga Masters. Okay, wonderful. And Lance says, oh, Lance says, thank you. You're welcome, brother Nini. Look, that was not even a part of this class. <laughs> that wasn't even a part of today's uh thing today i thought all the questions that i saw in were was, was all on ufos and extraterrestrials and stuff you know so boom we got that in all right we got uh we got robert putting up fire 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 and we got are these updated slides <laughs> it's interesting you know because uh i have a lot of information i have a lot of information and sometimes i just focus on certain things and and right there, I'll take things from slides I did from another from another teaching, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll put them together in a folder and give you that. Some of them maybe from something you've seen, some from not. So just uh, I kind of put things together quick. <laughs> All right, so uh, um, okay, boom, boom, boom. We got uh, we got uh. The priest did do the poses by emulating the animals. Yep, 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 yep. That's how it starts. Uh, peace to Shambo Shane. Maurice Wallop put up fire, fire. Jamie OX says, beautiful work. The baboon, the baboon. So now that's an example of why you all see me um, always with animals. You know, in commit you couldn't even speak if you didn't understand the animal, the actual language of metut or what they're calling the meru is actually written in living animals living uh leaves animals baboons birds snakes panthers to understand it you have to understand the nature of the animal so the meru netter they say meru netter is dead meru netter nobody deciphered as a dead language nope it's actually the only living language <laughs> it's the language with literal living creatures in it. 
Pull out your Spanish. Pull out your Hebrew. Pull out your Portuguese. Pull out your French. Pull it all out. Pull it all out. Pull out your Sanskrit. Pull it all out. Meduneter is the language that has living creatures in it. So no, it's not dead. It's actually living. All right. Peace to everybody. Here we go. We're going on. We're going on. Uh, shout out to Humble Books LLC who says, I had a Christian tell me I shouldn't meditate and do yoga because it's ungodly. I just sent them this live. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you, brother. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ned of the Greatest says, I'm ready to learn about aliens. Okay, let's go, everybody. Welcome to the Tahuti Paw class. We're, right, we're going to get right into it. Let's get into it, it, it. Let's go, everybody. Oh, some all this stuff just popped up on the screen. Oh, that's Lance with the Fire. Shout out to Lance with the Fire. Shout out to Lance Mitchell with the Fire. Let's get into the next question. I'm going to answer this question, and then I'm going to take a little break and put on the brothers. Brothers, get ready. Get ready to be on deck. I'm actually going to put the link in the room right now so you all can have it um, ready to be on deck um, to jump in when I'm done this. This is for the brothers who are part of the team. You all know who you are. If you even want, you can even ju jump in and just wait in the waiting room. So as soon as I'm ready to jump out, we can make this quick. I just go doop, 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 doop. I'm not waiting for you to come in. You could you could just be in the waiting room, still watch the class. And then when I go boop, 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 boop put you on the screen within one second. Here it is, the living word. That is absolutely right. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, here we go. Are you all ready? Here we go for the next question. Welcome to the Tootsie Paw class. We are about to get into it. So this is for the team. Um, you all can just wait in the back room. I already see AJ's on, ready to go. Because when I take a break, I'm just going to go. So I'm not going to wait for anybody to jump in. And when I step away, I can't put you in the room. Here we go. What is the next question on the Tootsie Paw class? Oh, the questions have disappeared. Let me go ahead and pull it back up. <clears throat> Ooh, these questions are, man, should I answer, uh, I see AJ has one about the Nakas, I mean, what's going on here, oh man, AJ Super Magul, I don't know if you can hear me right now, brother, but uh, that is something special for you, I, 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 I wasn't going to answer this at the time, and I and I, just, I got, um, I got possessed, man, I got possessed, that's what happens to me, sometimes I go to answer a question, and I just want to do one little thing, and then and I can't stop information just oh and AJ you asked one of those questions where um it just started flowing so you're gonna get a great answer let's see uh the uh, so I answered um so that is uh Lance ended up being the first question let me go ahead and put a note by that and then I answered it he ended up going from no answer to being the very first answer. So the next one is, is E Manifesto in the house? E Manifesto, are you in the house? Oh, Stranger. Stranger asked about the space logo. Is Stranger in the house? Stranger, are you here? Um, what's this? Oh, is Nightlife here? I see a question about um, evidence of meteorites. Let me check the room real quick, everybody. I want to see. I like it when the people who ask the question are actually in the room. So, um, is nightlife here? Is uh, who else had a question? E manifesto. E manifesto, are you here? And uh, ooh, oh hey, here's my good brother, Chris MVP. MVP, one of, uh, I know him through, uh, actually in that little path I had doing debates, he was, uh, he's a debater, and I know him through that, he has much respect for me, and I appreciate it, and um, anytime in a break, also, if he wants to jump on, he can jump on too, he has showed me a lot of, a lot of respect, and if you know this man, Chris MVP, he doesn't really... He's not out there to show people respect. This man's out there to cut people's heads off. I've actually never seen him give praise to anybody. So he's just, he's there with a sword ready to kill you. But he definitely gives me a shout out and respect behind the scenes and in front of people. So shout out to you. I'm doing great. We're going to get into the next 
um, question, everybody. And uh, Chris, sit back, relax, everybody listen. I don't know, Chris, how much you know about uh, extraterrestrials but <laughs> or whatnot, but we're about to get into uh, some questions in right now. Here we go, everybody. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? The team is here. Let me see something here. Let me check on something. Did, did Nanny step out? Oh, she stepped out. Okay, here we go, everybody. Let's. Uh, I need to. Um, I'm gonna. Um, I am going to. Let me do this. Give me one moment, everybody. I'm going to um, step off for for just two minutes. I'm actually gonna put the brothers on the screen real quick right now. For just about two minutes, I got to step out for a, a two minutes, and then I'll be back, and then I'm going to get into the next question. There's one here on, um, on, uh, woo-wee, nuclear explosions on Mars. Let's go. Look at these questions, man. Where, where else are these questions asked? Every question here is about space, the space logo. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and throw the brothers in the room. Um... I think different ones seated, different cultures. There you have it, man. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, let me go ahead and throw the brothers in the room real quick. I'm going to take myself a little break. When I come in, it's going to be blast off. It's going to be blast off. Do not go anywhere. There's 85 people in the room. Do not go anywhere because when I come in, we're about to get into the meteorites. The question was asked about meteorites. I've seen here. meteorites. Uh, Explosions on Mars, all type of interesting questions that you will only get here at the Tootsie Podcast. Let me go ahead and load everybody up. Boom, 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 boom. Load everybody up there. And I'm going to step off for just a moment. I don't see a hot team. Is he here? I'm going to step off for just a moment. Uh, you guys go ahead and uh, take it on for about two or three minutes, maybe five. I'll be right back to blow the room up. All right, peace. Somebody needs to mute their mic. Okay, there we go. Peace, brothers. Hotep Ma'at. Huh? Hotep Ma'at. Good job. The nab, the nab. Peace, 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 brothers. Peace. Peace. Peace, tribe. Salute the most. Peace, brother. Hotep. Peace, the Houthi Mahos. Hotep, good brothers. Hotep, Hotep. Hotep Ma'at. That was a great breakdown, man. That was incredible. <laughs> That was awesome. Yeah, Saba. Hey, Chris Harris in the room. I want to thank you personally because I uh, watched a lot of your debates. Saw you chopping up the Hebrews and uh, got a few little bumps and bruises behind it, but you brought me to my art. So uh, big ups to you, Chris Harris in the room. Ahati, my art. What's up? What's up, brothers? What's up? What's up, Pharaoh? <laughs> Otep, oh, my art. Ma'at, the great brothers reunited again. I'm so excited. So excited with this teaching from Tahuti. Great breakdown, Saba. As always, I'm looking forward to the Anunnaki questions coming up. Yes. Yes, sir. If uh, anybody here is new to the room, please come out and support us on Sundays. Please come out and support us on Study Guide Sundays. You can see it right behind me on the screen here. It starts at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And the scribe put on the website everybody's time zone. So should, there should be no excuses. You're going to have fun. You're welcome to come on the panel and join us. Contention is welcome. As long as it's not too obscene and uh, irrational and chaotic. But we'll welcome everybody's uh, opinion and belief system. Just ask the conscious conqueror in the room and um <clears throat> the brother arcad infinite is leading the, the the meetings and as usual the brother scribe is the architect so please come out and we welcome all all right we're gonna scribe with the owl i just know she <laughs> i just know it's my heart in the back flying silently behind you that's one of my favorite birds besides just the sparrows. 
That's great because they're silent. Right. Actually, I almost had one hit me uh, about a month ago. I was up in uh, I was up in uh, some section of South LA near the near the uh, Sierra Mountains, and the sign flew right by me. I didn't even hear it. Yeah, I seen one for the for the first time around in my area, probably about a couple months ago, just sitting right outside my door. Nice. I was like, wow. Nice. I see AJ's here with his uh, Tut Uncle Moon. Tut Uncle Moon representing AJ the Asesh, the great secretary, as they call it in English. The netter, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for AJ's new name. Yeah, it's Saba the other day. I want to, I want to, I want to sneak peek in the Saba. Can I say something real quick? My part that I'm reading Sunday is yeah. about the mislabeling that the Tamahu has done to us. So it's nice. going to be really in alignment with what's going on with, with me and with our team and everything. Good. Everybody join us Sunday. Peace, Saba. Everybody join us Sunday. This really is going to be incredible. Yes, yes. Peace, everybody. Okay, that was just a quick break. The next time I have you on for to break down more, I'm just have to step away for a quick moment to get into the mode that I'm going to have to get into to answer these this uh, question here. And uh, let's see. So I'm going to give a. Uh, so first of all, shout out to the team. Is, is everybody in here? I thought a hottie was here, but I see him. There's a hottie. Okay, good. I see RK. I need to blow the screen up. Let me see everybody clear. All right, there we go. I see uh I see Tahuti Mos. I see a hottie. I see formerly known as AJ. <laughs> I see he's a, that's his name. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's like Prince. Prince. <laughs> he's Prince. Prince. <laughs> the yeah. artist formerly known as AJ. I see, uh, I see the scribe with an owl. Listen, everybody, I don't know if you all remember this, but the scribe long time ago sent me a question, a great question. It was to break down the significance of the owl. And I don't know if you all remember, some people remember, I, was, I broke down the owl, and now that class does not exist. Scribe can't find it. I can't find it. I remember breaking it down. He sent a cash out. I answered and uh, we do not know where this is. I don't know where it is. Scribe doesn't know where it is. Scribe, have you found the answer yet? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> huh? It is gone. It's gone. I, I'm gonna answer, I have to answer it again, but I remember that question and I remember how much I like breaking on the owl and we don't know where that answer is today. It's somewhere in the Mandela, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll have to end up, I'm going to answer it again. I don't know. But uh, okay, everybody, we're going to get into it. Here we go, everybody. Uh, shout out to, to Hutimo. Shout out to Ahatima Ah. Shout out to uh, Netzer, formerly known as AJ. Shout out to the scribe. Shout out to Arcad Infinite. We're going to get back into the class. I'm going to break down one more answer and then I'm going to take a break, put the brothers back on. Here we go, brothers. We're going to say peace to you all for now. And here we go with the answers to the next question. This is, and Misha, yeah, I remember. You remember Misha? Misha remembers the owl. <laughs> it's a Mandela effect. The owl answer is now gone. Okay, good, good, good. Let me get um, Arcad Infinite. He's stuck in here. I gotta put him. Um, Arcad Infinite, remove from studio if you want to prevent person from rejoining. Okay. Arcade Infinite. Okay, it is back. And here we go, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the 2D Pod class. Here is the next question. So I see uh, there's a question here from um, from Stranger. Is Stranger here? Going once, going twice. I'll get back to you if you come in later. Is Arcade Infinite? Sorry, not Arcade Infinite. Is, is E Manifesto here? Nope. I don't see him, but if he comes in, I'll go ahead and answer. And then we got uh, AJ Super Mogul. You're here. All right, let's go into AJ then. AJ Super Mogul. AJ Super Mogul asked the question. Let me go ahead and throw that up on the screen. Here we go, everybody. Welcome to the 2T Pod class. Here is how questions are answered. You send in your questions. When I get to them, they pop up on the screen as, oh no, this is a Matthew McDonald. 
Is that true? Seeker or AJ? Okay, we'll go AJ. Then we're gonna go Matt. We're gonna go uh, Matthew McDowell. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. So um, here's how it goes. You send a question in. And AJ Super Magul actually sent this one in. It was in the middle between classes. It didn't actually come in during a class. Uh, let me go ahead and put it up on the screen. Let me go and do this. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, so shout out to AJ Super Magul for your support. Very good brother. We appreciate you, AJ Sigma Magoo. I'm going to go ahead and show a uh, screen share and show AJ Sigma Magoo to put on. AJ Sigma Magoo, who put on 2772. 2772. Whoops. Shout out to you, AJ Sigma Magoo, with the 2772. He is one of the. Um, one of the first class monsters who's constantly supporting. Shout out to you, AJ. Let's look at the question and let's go ahead and read the question for everybody to see and hear what the clear question is. And it is, let me go ahead and uh, turn this down. Boom, boom, boom. And the clear question is that he asked that popped up on the cash app is. Ooh, actually, no, I don't want to read it like that. I want to read it from the big screen. Is this it? There it is. He said, Who were the Nakash, Nakashi people enchanters? And in the point, when he asked this question before, he also asked, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, AJ, because you asked this verbally, and I think you may have sent it into the um, in a message too. But you, always, you also wanted to know how they related to the snake people. The people, uh, Nak yeah, the Nakashi snake people. Let me go ahead and look in the room. Uh, AJ, do you remember saying that to me? You were asking about Nakashi, but you also wanted to know about connection with snake people. Is that is that correct? Is that correct, AJ? The Nakashi, the snake people. By the way, the reason why is because the word Nakash is actually the word for serpent inside their uh, their Bible. Okay, if AJ Sumagul is here, shout out to you, AJ, for asking that question. He said, yes, yes, yes. So I remembered it, and uh, he wanted to know about the Nakashi, Naka, Nakashi people, Nakashi people, and the association with snake snake people, okay? And one of the reasons why I, as Tahuti, call myself the snake. Oh, wait. Call myself the snake. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. All right, everybody, I'm going to take this off the screen. Shout out to AJ Super Magul. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod Class. Here is how we answer questions on the Tahuti Pod Class. Let me go ahead and I'll... Oh, wait, this is, this is it. <laughs> here is how we answer questions here at the Tahuti Pod Class. For those who are just getting here, um, you will understand why people send in support. I am the only channel, I repeat, the only channel where people are sending in donations like this on a continuous level to ask a question and to get an answer. The channel is unique because I, as your teacher, do not set up or preset up any lecture. My class, as your servant, your Saba, my class is based on what you ask me which I don't know what the question is going to be. It could come in during the class, at the end of the last next class. And based on the questions you sent me, I open the door to answer the question. That's why I'm called the Saba, the door opener. And this question is about the Nahasi. Let's get into it, everybody. Welcome to the Tuti Park class. Send in your support, your donations, and help this continue. Here we go. Let me go ahead and get to the screen. Move this up here. Okay, I'm going to do this. Um, so, of course, you support to your cash app, TT Amun. I have to keep putting this because this is, uh, if I don't keep doing this, people will just be here for free. Soak up the information and run. And uh, we ask for support. This is what I do. 
So PayPal is at Rocky SV, Cash App is dollar sign TT Amun. Please support with questions and just support whether you're asking a question or not. Here we go, everybody. Welcome to the 2T Pod class. We are about to get into AJ Super Magool's question. And this is how I answer questions on the 2T Pod class. Thank you for appreciating me. As soon as the screen begins, boom. What do you see here? There is an extremely popular term that modern day black people have taken pride in. That word is Nubian. Nubian. And everybody in this room I'm sure has heard of the word Nubian. Nubian is a popular terminology, so popular that you have uh, YouTube videos, you have Nubian Queen, you even have this down here. We have um, Billionaires, Nubian Queen. <laughs> Billionaires, Nubian Queen. Look at the look at the look who has the Nubian Queen too. Billionaire, Nubian Queen. Um, you have uh, you have of course brand Nubian, one for all, brand Nubian, and all for one. One for all, brand Nubian, and all for one. And you have the Nubian Nation. Actually, the group that I was a part of. That I was telling you about in the beginning of the class, that's what it actually was called. It's called the Nubian Nation. The Nubian Nation. The Nubian Nation. So it became so popular, it became the name of rap groups. It's it's in movies, it's everywhere. Nubian, Nubian. You all have heard of it, right? Let me go and look at the chat. Everybody heard of it? Anybody called the woman my Nubian queen? Nubian sister. What's up, my Nubian, Nubian god, Nubian this, Nubian that. Okay, the Nubian, the Nubian, right? All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to the 2 T Pod class, and let's break it down. We are on the Nubian. Okay, how does this tie into Nahashi? Let's see, everybody. So, is this term ancient? Can we find it in ancient writings? Let's go to the Tablet of Kamos. That's 1550 BC. That's pretty ancient. So, if you find this word Nubian in the Tablet of Kamos, then maybe we found its source. Let's take a look and see about Nubian. Here we are, everybody. Welcome to Tutsi Pod class, where we break down things with archaeological research, archaeological evidence over religious opinion. So this is the Tablet of Ka Mos, all right? It's also called the Carnivon, the uh, Carnivon Tablet, Egyptian Museum number 41790, okay? This is the Carnivon Tablet. Here's what it looks like right here in the black and white over here okay and let's see what it says let's go ahead and read it roll stella of the carnivon tablet or the tablet of ka most let's take a look at it and it says here uh regional year three of heru he who has appeared upon his throne the two ladies repeating monuments of the golden the golden falcon right so regional year three of the heru he who appeared upon his okay good, good. the two ladies one second everybody. hold on one second one moment hold on one moment one moment hold on You guys be safe. Everybody be safe. Okay, here we are, everybody. Back to the Tablet of Kamos. Here we go. So, regional year three of Heru. He who has appeared upon his throne. The two ladies repeating monuments. The golden falcon. He who contends the two lands. King of Upper and Lower Egypt. Wad Kepur. Ray, son of Ray Kamos, the villiant. Granted life, beloved of Amun Ra, Lord of the Thrones. You see that, Lord of the Thrones? Lord of the Thrones of the two lands like Ray forever and ever. Victorious king within Thebes. Really called Waset. Kamos, the villain, giver, uh, given life forever, is effective king. It is Ray who has placed 
him as king himself uh, to whom he has given victory in very truth. His majesty spoke in place to the council of officials, which was in his following. To what effect do I perceive it? My might, while a ruler is in avarice and another is in Cush, I sitting joined with an Asiatic and a Nubian. There's the word, everybody. And a Nubian. Each man having his own portion of the land of Kemet, sharing the land with me. Okay, see, they're working together. But here we have the Nubian, a mention of the Nubian. Okay, so is this the real word? Let's take it up. So we see Nubian here, but is that the actual word in the tablet or the papyrus? No. In actuality, Nubian traces uh, back to a European named Strabo who came across a tribe called the Nubas. Let's look at this book, Egyptian Mythology, A to Z, page 135, and Encyclopedia Britannica. Let's take a look. Here is Egyptian Mythology, A to Z, uh, Pat Reamer. Okay. And here it is, Nubia. Nubia, because of their long... Let me pull this up a little bit so you can see. So here's where the foolish uh, terminology of Nubia came from. Came from the European again, because remember, whatever he names something... We follow it because we see the European as our father, unfortunately. So when he says, this is called Africa, we say, yes, sir. This is called Africa. This is Nubian. Yes, sir. You're a Christian. Yes, sir. So uh, we're trying to break that spell. But here's the root of it. Nubia, because of their long um, tumultuous relationship, Egypt's and Nubia's mythology and religion are closely linked. Of course, they're actually the same people. Nubia has always been, uh, been a geographic location rather than a country. Nubia began just south of modern Aswan in Egypt and extended into the Moro part of the Sudan. The name Nubia came from Strabo, the geographer who while traveling in the area met a tribe called Nubas and so named the entire area Nubian. The Egyptians called it Taseti, land of the bow. The Bible calls it Cush. Nubia extends over the vast desert, and it keeps going on. But we see that here is the here is your father. Here is your father that has named it. Here he is. Here he is. Strabo, 64 BC. This is why we have the word Nubia today. Somebody show me the word Nubia on any ancient papyrus. I will give you the Tehuti podcast. All right. So here is Strabo, 64 BC. 21 CE or A day. He was a geographer, historian. And here he is, everybody. Here is why you have the word Nubian today. You like that guy? There is who created the word. This man found one tribe, one of thousands of tribes in the area and called the whole area Nubia. Made a mistake, just like Christopher Columbus said, Indians. And now you got black people saying, I'm an American Indian. And I'm like, that was a mistake by Columbus. They didn't come from India. But here we go. So Strava creates Nubian, and now black people follow because the European is the master, and whatever he says, that is our name. So now we're Nubian, right? <laughs> Nubia. Okay, there it is, everybody. For those who didn't know the origin of it, who thought that that's some type of ancient terminology, no, it wasn't. So Nubia only goes back to a European man that was in the ADs and is only pertaining to one tribe in Sudan. So what is the hidden word that they translated to Nubia, and what was the agenda behind it? So there's actually a word here, two words that were translated to Nubia, but the words there were never Nubia. So what was the words? Let's take a look. Boom. Let's go into the beautiful brother, late uh, bro the brother, uh, Sheikh Anta Diop. Coming from the book by Sheikh Anta Diop, African Origins of Civilization, who describes Champollion's finds in Kemet, Egypt, and his inferiority complex based on comments. When coming across the first documented designation of race inscripted in ancient Egypt. So the book is you can get African Origins of Civilization. And then this is also photocopied into my book, Melanin Dark Consciousness, where I give the citation. African origins of civilization and the page number. And then I go ahead to break down even more in my book, Melon and Dark Conscious. But here it goes. It says, let us start with the oldest of these, that of Champollion the Younger. I don't know if people knew there's two Champollions. 
It wasn't just one brother. Champollion the Younger set forth in the 13th letter to his brother. It concerns the bath's relief on the tombs of Sesostris because you see the European had speech impediments. So he couldn't just say the name Sinisaret. That's how you say the name. There, there's no S. There's no Sesostris. So ask any Egyptologist, why would the Greeks say Sesostris instead of Sinu Soret? You see S-E-N, Sinu Soret, not S-E-S-O-S-T. <laughs> That's some very bad mental illness there to transform, but that is what the Greeks did transform and that's not a greek word either it's just a mutation because for some reason the greeks could not say the frequencies of ancient terminology so they would re literally transform it into a completely different word that they would make up on the spot it's not an ancient greek word so here is sesostris but it's really sinisoret um visited by rienzi uh these date back to the 16th century bc 18th dynasty represent the race races of man known to the egyptians um, this monument is the oldest complete ethnological document available. Here is what Champollion says about it. So here's Champollion's words and what he said about it when he went to the area. And I'm going to show you what he saw. So right in, so this is him talking now. Right in the valley of Bibin el Malak, we admired, like all previous visitors, the astonishing freshness of the paintings and the fine sculptures on several tombs. I had a copy made of the peoples representing the bass reliefs. At first, I had thought from these copies of the bass reliefs published in England, that these people of different races led by the god Horus holding a shepherd's staff were indeed nations subject to the rule of pharaohs. A study of the legends informed me that this tableau has, more general, has a more general meaning. It portrays the third hour of the day when the sun is beginning to turn on its burning rays warming the inhabited countries of our hemisphere according to the legend itself they wish to represent inhabitants of egypt and those of foreign lands thus we have before our eyes the image of the various races of man known to the egyptians and we learn at the same time the great geographical ethnographical divisions established during that early epoch led by Heru, shepherd of the people belonging to the four distinct families. He says, the first one closest to God has a red color. Well, <laughs> you see the craziness of the European? Have you ever seen anybody with red skin, red color skin? But he can't just say brown. He said, a red color, a red color. If you saw a red man walking on the street, you'd, you would run unless it's a European whose skin is blushing. But you've never seen, you see, you see the color of this writing? This is red. There's nobody on the planet that looks like this. But to the European, he says, the first one was closest to God, has a dark red color. A well-proportioned body, kind face, noise slightly alkaline, long braided hair, and is dressed in white. Legends designate this species to Ret and Rome. I want you to remember that, everybody, that the Cometians were the first people to call themselves Rome. They were the first people to call themselves Rome, and they called themselves Ret and Rome. Ret and Rome, that was the Cometians before Cometian, Ret and Rome, that's what they call themselves, Ret and Rome, race of men of par excellence, i.e. the Egyptians. There can be no uncertainty about the racial identity of the man who comes next. He belongs to the black race, designated under the general term Nechasi. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The word that they use for Nubian, when you see the term Nubian in the papyrus, there's two words that are in the Medunetter. One is Taseti and one is Nechesi. So this leads into AJ Supermogul's question, who are the Nechesi? So here we go. We see the Nechesi by name on the papyrus. And it says the third represents, but we won't even get into that because it cuts off. So let's take a look, everybody. Let's take a look at what Champollion saw. So here it is. Here it is, and I'm going to blow this up. Here is the here is the the dark red person, right? <laughs> Here's the red of the dark person, right? And I'm going to explain to you why you can't even find this picture anymore. We're going to get into it, but here is the Ret and Rome. It says it right here. Ret and Rome. Here is the Namu, the traveler, from which you get the word nomad from the Namu. 
Okay, and here is who they call the blacks. Here it is, Nakhasi. Here it is, everybody. So there is Nakhasi. So this is the painting from the tomb of Ramesses III, 1200 BC. It shows the Egyptians how they saw themselves. So here, here they are. Okay, now let's take a good look, everybody. So here is number C, and this is the Nakhasi. Everybody get a good look? This is supposed to be the black, the Nakhasi. Let's take a look, everybody. Welcome to Tutsi Pod class. We are about to break it down. When you look at the uh, Wallace E. Budge Dictionary, page 386, we see it right there. Nakhasi, see that word right there? And that is he of Sudan, the Sudanese, the Negro. You see? So there's the word Nakhasi, and right beside the man's name, there it is. You see, it's kind of blurry, but if you can make out, there's the bird, there's the flax, there's the, there is the, uh, there is the uh, the Seneb and the Nakhasi, and the Nakhasu are the plural. So there, so we can clearly see they have grouped blacks under Nakhasi, which is the general term for Sudanese, Ethiopian, Nubian. Note the dyed reddish brown plaited hair. Okay, get a good look, everybody. Get a good look at the hair. It's like plaited and a little bit reddish complexion reddish brown complexion so that's the nakhasi that's the nubian that's the nakhasi okay here they are today the exact same people okay so the plaited hair is still seen in ethiopians today so here are the beautiful sisters and here are the nakhasi looking exactly the same as they did way, way back in the image of ramesses and sinisaret there is the Nakhas. Same people, same hair. Here's where the division begins. Here's where the matrix starts. So there is the Nakhasi. So, who are these Nakhasi? Are they a different race from the people of Kemet? Note, note in the chart in, in um, Set's tomb that the Egyptians are called Ret. And they look identical to the Nakhesi. Okay? So make a note of that. In the tomb, they're called the Rets. Here they are. And the image is identical. Of course, they couldn't report that back. But here is the Rets. Rets M. Rome, which are the Kemetians. And here's the Nakhesi. Do you see any difference at all? <laughs> okay. So there's the Nakhesi. And there is the Rets. Okay, let's go down here. Here we go. Boom. So here I blow up the image here. I show the image with the ABC. And I show the Nechest there. And here it is. The Rets. See the Ret. So that's what the Kemetians call themselves. The Ret men. And there they are in that same pose. There they are in the baboon pose. The Ret. The men in the baboon pose. Men, i.e. Egyptians in the Tuat. They were formed. Please make note of this. Very important. They were formed from the tears that fell from the eyes of Ra. That makes perfect sense, right? So note the red Egyptians are formed directly from the fluid of Ra, which makes complete sense because the people of Kemet separate themselves from other people by considering themselves chosen and directly from Ra. This will be significant soon. Now here are the Nahasi. Look at this, boom. The Nahesi, boom, the exact same people. Now remember, the people of Kemet only consider themselves as the direct descendants of Ra, making them the Ret, M, Rome, right? So what about the definition of, of these Nahesi? Who are they? They are supposed to be the Blacks, the Nubians, Sudanese, right? A different set of race of people than the Ret, Egyptians. Let me break the matrix for you. Here we go, everybody. Let's break it down. So this is the Nubians, the Nakhesi, who are different from the Ret, because the Ret are the direct descendants of the tears of Ra. The Kemetians would never consider any other race of people directly descendants from the, the tears of Ra. They are the Septepin Ra. They are the descendants. They are the chosen of Ra. But here's the Nahesi, everybody. Let's take a look. We're going to go to the Nahesi. 
Welcome to the 2T Pod class, and here we go. Let me break you out of the matrix. Here we are. Now, Hesse, back to page 386, and look at this. He of the Sudan, the Sudanese, the Negro. See? So they made sure you know that this person is definitely the Negro, the Black, the Nubian, the Sudanese. Okay? Keep going down. There they are. Nechesu and the Tuai. Uh-oh, what's this? What's this, everybody? What's going on here? Sudanese tribes of the Tuat, the results of the masturbation of Ra? What? The Sudanese, the blacks, the Nubians, they're the results of the masturbation of Ra? But wait a minute. The Retem Rome, the Kometians, they were formed from the fluid that fell from Ra's eyes. They're a direct result of Ra. But over here, the Sudanese tribe are from the direct masturbation of the result of the fluid of Ra. The Sudanese Negroes, the Hesi, are the result of the masturbation of Ra. Why? Because of the same people. Here we go. This is what the European and Arab invaders are trying to hide. Do you know that if you were to go look up the original cage image of the mural of races in Kemet showing you the Nahesi and the Egyptians are the same, that it has been removed from the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Yes. See this image over here, everybody? Let me make it clear to you. This is why people debate this image. Some people even say Shekhar the Diab made this image up because it's a redrawn image, right? It's a redrawn image. And when you look it up on the internet for the actual picture of it, it has been removed. You cannot find it. What's going on, everybody? Why can't you find it? Oh my, it's getting deep, everybody. So here we go. So the mural of, of races, that image there showing the Nechesti and the Ret as the same people. It has been removed from the internet or shadow banned. That means when you look something up and it says search results. Uh, 2,875,225. And then you press page one and it gives you 10 results. That's 10 of the 2,875,285. You press page two, that's 10 more, pay 10 more clicks, links to the 2,800,000. <laughs> you think anybody's going to keep clicking to, to, to even 200? It's going to say search results, 2 million or 50,000. Nobody's going to keep clicking the page, so it's called shadow ban. So by the time you look up the image of the Nahesi in the cave, no, everybody's going to go to page one. How do you all look up things? You go to page one, two, three, and then you ah, forget this. Nobody's going to go to page to the pages of, of 800,000 or 50,000. So by that time, that's where the information is. Boom, ban, shadow ban, or put somewhere where nobody wants to go. All right, the internet has a shadow ban. Here is what you get when you look it up. The Tamahu, Nahesi, and Namu. You can only see three races now. The ret that looks like the Nahesi has been banned. But you know me, you know the Tuti Pod class, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what happens now when you look it up. Here we go, everybody. Can you believe it? Remember this image over here? This is, this is they say this is a redrawn image. So let's go to the original cave because this is from the cave image of the Tuat. Let's go and see the image. Here it is. Boom. Here it is, everybody. Hey, what's going on here? Wait, there's only three of them now. What happened? Where's the ret? Round to the ret. Look at the <laughs> look at the extent of the racist agenda when you look it up in Alami. The image says Nubian, erroneously labeled as Egyptian. See? Because way before Alame, way before this, Shankanta Diop was over there exposing this image here showing the image that the Kemetians and the Nahesi are the exact same people. So what do they do? They took that off of the internet. And now when you look at Alame for the pictures of this, remember this image over here of the Nahesi? There he is. Remember this here with the, uh, with the panther skin in the red? And then you see this over here. You see the Kemetian with the, uh, the panther skin in the red. And then, and then you see the ret. 
look what happens when you look this up on Alamy. Look what it says. Look what it says. Look, look how the evil, the extent that they go through. Look it up. Here we are, everybody. Boom. There it is. There's the cave image. There's the cave image of the Rhett. But look what it says here. It says Book of Gates. Remember? Because we read it from Book of Gates. Here it is in Alamy, Tomb of Seti. The same one I just showed you all. Book of Gates, fourth division, a fifth hour, lower register, scene 30, Nubian, one of the four races of mankind, erroneously labeled as Egyptian. By who? <laughs> who? Who erroneously labeled? Who? Shekhan to Diop? Who is out there? What Egyptologist is out there erroneously labeling this as Egyptian? Who is Alame talking about? Look at the image here. Everybody, you use your common sense. Just look at the image here. Can you all tell me what's missing, please? What is missing? Let me go in the chat and see if you all are paying attention. What is missing on this image? Something's missing here. Let me go in the chat and see if everybody's paying attention. What is missing in that image? Let me show it one more time. What's missing here, everybody? Something's missing in the image. They show, they're showing you the cave image, but there's something very important missing. Let me go in the chat and see. If anybody can tell what is missing, what is missing, everybody? What is missing? Anybody, everybody, what is missing in that image? Something extremely, oh, e manifesto here. Okay, this is gonna be a, a, a whole, a full class on aliens. And, <laughs> okay, good. Oh, Master K, the there we go. There it is. Boom, bing, 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 bing. The glyphs, remember. Remember when Champollion saw it, each glyph was written there beside the name. Each person had a name beside it, right? The background, there we go, the background, the glyphs, right? Something is missing there, which is the name. The name is missing. Look at that. Look at these devils. Look at this. Look at this. They, they cut it off right here where the name would be written. <laughs> and then just in case you find this image, they make sure they put the Nubian, the Nechesi, the Nubian, erroneously labeled as Egyptian. <laughs> look at the sick devils. Look at the demon. Look at the, look at the evil that these people, the extent that they go to, right? How crazy is this? Okay, here we go. Welcome to Tutti Pa class, but here it is. You know, you know how we do it. You know how I'm going to do it for you because I'm going to uncover every stone, everything, nothing. Nothing is going to be left uncovered here, everybody. Here we go. Well, worry not. Here at class, I'm here to straighten this out. Here is the actual photo from the cave, thanks to our good late brother, Renoku Rashidi, who took and brought back the exact same image of who they, the Isfetians, the devils, are hiding even to the point they say erroneously labeled as Egyptian. Uh huh. Uh oh. What is that Medunetter word in front of the Nubian? Uh oh. Here it is, everybody. Erroneously labeled as Egyptian. They cut off something though here. Let's go to the picture taken by the good brother Ronoko Rashidi. Let's see what he came back with. He went to the cave himself and took the <laughs> he took the image we are not satisfied get a good look at the evil though look see the white background you can see it see the white background so you know it's the exact same image see the white background you see the man with the blue with the red the same image i showed here it is right look at this everybody even to even to emphasize the exact same image look at the shoe look at the uh look over here See the sailboat? See the, see the sails of the boat? The sail there? You see that image right there? See the man with the reddish tints here? See the white background? Let's go back to Alame. Al Alame, who says, uh, who shows the image. Uh-oh, look at this. Look at this. See the white background? See the shoes? See, the <laughs> see, this? see that right there? But it's cut off. So you know what I'm about to show you is the exact same cave, peace and love, to brother Renoko Rashidi, who went back there, took the picture, brought it back, and here we go. There it is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Remember, 
it's erroneously called they erroneously called the ret the egyptians there's the word ret see that the r the t that is the hubble and that is the raw the mouth the egyptians formed from the tears of raw and what is this right here everybody oh what's this what's this carved in the wall right here what's this is that saying a hesse <laughs> you see alame cut it off right here doesn't that say ret isn't that the ret there's the original picture welcome to the tutti pot class i gave you now the image directly from the cave itself but you cannot find this anymore because when you go look it up now here's what the internet shows you they only show you these three they cut off the ret the 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 the, 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 the focus to get rid of the ret image that looks like the nubian is strong there's the there's the nahesi supposedly right there's the tamu the namu there they are and where's the fourth image of the ret gone when you go over here here's alame showing you this cutting it off right there so you don't see ret and then putting in your mind through programming erroneously called the egyptians it was it was an error well who made the error <laughs> who made the error once again the ongoing trend agenda racist narrative that the indigenous people of the culture cannot speak for themselves that is the agenda ladies and gentlemen remember when you watch these other channels and they're talking about the egyptians the Kemetians, notice they never ever quote what the Kemetians say themselves when i debated um jabari when i debated all these other people none of them quoted the Kemetians' words themselves when people tell you about the, the new age and the esoteric and the this and the that Tell me what the Kemetian said. What did the Kemetian said? So, according to racism, the people can't speak themselves to the point where Alame would say erroneously labeled Egyptians. So the Egyptians made the error? <laughs> the reason why this is called the Egyptians is because the Egyptians, the Rets, the Kemetians are the ones that put this in the wall. So they made the error? <laughs> now, what type of sick racism is this so say they say erroneously labeled egyptian so the egyptians made the error they don't know who they were the nerve of these euro racists the nerve of them all right so the nahesi we're establishing the nahesi people are the same people that we've been studying the people of kemet here we go everybody let's go because we're not over yet so and that is because that is because the nile valley culture was the entire area which is three times the size of america euro and arab invaders and their descendants are adamantly trying to separate the people into their titles do you notice that all the labels of separation of the nile people are greek or arabic look at the names of what we call ourselves today are the people of that area ethiopia greek egypt greek Sudan, Arabic, Aswan, Arabic, Tanzania, Arabic, Nubia, Greek. Uh, now is is an Arabic now now it's an Arabic word. So now when you look up Nubian, you can actually find Nubian in the Arabic dictionary, meaning brown skin. <laughs> oh, here is the Nile and the areas it spans. It is not just a small area the Europeans call Egypt. So here's the Nile, everybody. Here's where it spans. Look how large this is. Look at this. We're going to read this together. Here it is, everybody. Welcome to the Pod class. Here is how questions are answered here. The Nile countries. You see? The Nile. This is why Europeans and Arabs, they don't like to say the Nile countries. They don't like to say Nile Valley culture. They like to say Egypt. 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 No, 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 no. It's the whole Nile. The Nile takes the name from the Greek word Nilos. Even the word Nile is Greek, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the racism and white superiority. So even Nile is Greek. Ethiopia is Greek. Egypt is Greek. Nubian comes from a Greek man. The longest river in the world, although many people consider it an Egyptian river, it actually flows through many countries and is primary water source for both Egypt and Sudan. Who made the separation? The Europeans. Classed as an international river that now flows through nine countries. Look at this, everybody. Let me name for you the Nile Valley. 
Is it just that little part up top called Egypt? No. Egypt, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi, Kenya, Ethiopia, Sudan, Zaire. While there are disputes about the exact length of the Nile, it certainly travels um, thousands of miles through central, east, or northern. Okay. So here we are, everybody. I'm going to shrink this down. So look at these areas, everybody. You see how they have to cut it off and just say Egypt and then separate the Nahesi and say the Nahesi are the Ethiopians, the Sudanese, when the Nile flows through the whole area because the same people. Here it is, everybody. Here's an image of Kemet on the map of what it would look like. Here it is. Here's Cairo, this little area right here that the white the Europeans called Egypt. They call this Egypt, just this area right here. Look at the Nile flowing all the way down through Sudan, it's through the blue Nile, southern Sudan, all the way down to Lake Tana, all the way down to Kenya, all the way down to Tanzania, Orendi. Look at these areas, okay? So now, I'm going to quote somebody. Diodora says, there are also numerous other Ethiopian tribes beside those at Moreau, some living along both sides of the river and the in islands of the river, others dwell in the regions that border in Arabia, i.e. the east. Others, again, have settled in the interior of Libya. The major of these tribes in particular, uh, those who live along the Nile River, have black skin, stub nose faces, and curly hair. That's Diodorus. So the, all the people that live along this Nile Valley, this is what he saw. He started, they started calling them Ethiopians to the European column. All right, so here we go again. Now, now here's Diodorus again saying from his own statements, we learned that, that he traveled in Egypt around 60 BC, same time as uh, around Estrabo. His travels into Egypt probably took him as far as the South Cataract. And he quotes and he says, they, the Ethiopians, say that the Egyptians are colonists sent out by the Ethiopians, Osiris. King of kings, God of gods. Having been the leader of the colony, they add that the Egyptians have received from them as from authors, their their ancestors, the great part of their laws. So see, the people of so-called Ethiopia, which they never call themselves that, are just saying the people that live up there, they're us. Osiris, that's us. All of it is us. It's the European that's saying, and the Ethiopians say this about the Egyptians. Did, did the Ethiopians have to actually say that? Did they actually say, we're Ethiopians. They're the Egyptians. Those are Greek terms. It's just people at one part of the Nile talking about the other people at the other part because they're all the same people sharing the same culture. All right, let's continue. Here we go. So further, they write that amongst them, this is Diodorus again, further write that it was among them that people were first taught to honor the gods and offer sacrifices and arrange processions and festivals and perform other things by which the people honor the divine. For this reason, their piety is famous amongst all men and the sacrifices among the Ethiopians are believed to be particularly pleasing to the divinity. The Ethiopians say that the Egyptians are settlers from among themselves and that Osiris was a leader of the settlement and the customs of the Egyptians, they say, are for the most part Ethiopian settlers having preserve their old traditions for uh, to consider the king's gods. I want to make I want to make a very important note for everybody right here. This is for all the people that say that the uh, that the that the Natiru are principles. Do you know that all the great scholars quoted this? All the scholars, all the Dr. Ben's, Dr. Clark's, all the the comedic people that teach Kemet, they all quote this. They all quote this that Ethiopia was first, supposedly Ethiopia, and then they migrated to Egypt. And they all use this Diodorus quote, and they all say, this is true, right? You, all, you Most of you have heard this quote. A lot of you have heard this. Okay, so it's true, right? This is true. Hmm. And the snake style comes because they say, this is true. Is all of it true or only the parts that you pick? Because if you're going to quote Diodorus, who's quoting the Ethiopians, and you're going to say, see, the Egyptians were black because the Ethiopians say such and such and such and such, and they came from us. But what did the Ethiopians say? If you're promoting this, saying that it's true, the Ethiopians say that Osiris was the leader of the settlement. Are you going to cut that part out? 
principal people, principal Kometians. Are you going to cut that part of the quote? That part's not true, right? <laughs> Everything Diodora says that Dr. Ben quotes and Dr. Clark and all these people quoting and, and everybody's quoting Diodorus. Let's see. Diodorus said that the Egyptians told them himself that they said that the culture comes from them. It started down by Ethiopia. The rituals come from them. Well, didn't they also say that Osiris was a physical man who was a settler who moved from that area and then settled up there? What about that part? Is that part to be ignored? Boom. You've been snaked. All right, here we go. Let's continue, everybody. That's for the uh, principality people out there. Don't ever quote that again. Don't you ever, ever quote any of the things that Diodorus or Herodotus is saying that the Ethiopians said because they also said that Osiris was, a, was an ancient man who settled, who started uh, Ethiopia, who came from Ethiopia as a man, not a principal, and, that, and started commit, and the cult of Osiris started from him. All right, let's continue, everybody. Welcome to the Tutti Pod class. Let us continue. I got a couple more things down the brick, a couple more things to break down, and then we're going to go into the brothers. But here we are. Here it is. Who's that? Is that Osiris? All right. That's the Nehesi. That's your Nubian, right? And nobody looks at this person and calls him an Egyptian. Here is Het Heru, Hathor, Shu, and Tefna. These are Egyptian gods, right? Everybody? Het Heru, Shu, Tefna. Those are Egyptian gods, right? Those aren't Chinese gods. Those aren't Indians, right? Those aren't Native Americans. Those are Egyptian gods. Right? Let's take a look at it already. Welcome to the Pod class. Here it is. Here we are. We're going to blow this up and take a good look at the what they're calling the Egyptian gods. Here is Het. This is the Het symbol. Here is the Har, and that is Het Heru. Right? There is Het Heru. There is Tefnut. Shu. Sorry, there is Shu. And here is Tefnut over here. Right? In the uh, Brooklyn Museum. Right? There is uh, Tefnut right there. These are Egyptian gods, right? Wonderful. All right. Let me show you one of the reasons why they hate Budge's Dictionary. Everybody ever wonder why do people always hate Budge's Dictionary, but they never actually point out the actual issue. They just say, it's been outdated. It's not to be used. It's... But they don't actually, when they, they say, to who do you teach from Budge's Dictionary? And I say, okay, um, yes. And what precisely do I teach from that dictionary that's incorrect? What's the incorrect? Well, here's what's in Budge's Dictionary that they don't like. Here's one of the things. Let me take you to the Sudan area of Bao Kem, as it's described in the dictionary. We're going to go to an area called Bao Kem, and the definition of Bao Kem, which is in the Sudan. Let's take a look, everybody. We're going to go to page 977 of the Budge's Hieroglyphic Dictionary. And we're going to go to the Sudanese area called Bao Kem, Bao Kem, Bao Kem, right? In the Sudan. What does it say in the dictionary? Sudanese country. Well, what does this say, everybody? Whence the worship of Hathor, Shu, and Tefnut and other Sudanese gods was introduced to commit. <laughs> what? Shu, Tefnut, Hetheru, Aset? Three main netters of Kemet were brought from the Nubian Nahasi Sudanese people. You see, it's the same people. It's the Europeans separating them and saying, these people brought them to these people. No, it's the same people. They're not different race of people. So here it is right in the Budget Dictionary that Hathor, Shu, and Tefna are Sudanese gods. Any racist that tries to use Budget Dictionary, you can't use it anymore. Can't use it anymore. You've been banned. Because Budget Dictionary that you're using says that the main three female deities are from Sudan. Okay? Not from Sumer, from Sudan. All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to the Tutti Pot class. Let's go into it. Let's get it on. Here we are, everybody. Boom. It's about to get even deeper. Wait till it. Yeah. All right. It's not that they, quote unquote, brought from the Nehesi. The Nehesi and the people of Kemet were the same people. The reason it's worded like this is because Egyptologists are pushing that they are different, quote unquote, races with different teachings, equal separation. The fact is just that the area of Kemet that people are calling Ethiopia 
quote unquote Ethiopia, quote unquote Sudan, quote unquote Nubia, are parts of the Nile where our old human MRCA, most recent common ancestor, began. Thus our origins, Paut, thus our netter. Let me show you something you've not seen before. It said the netter, Het Heru, which we know is Aset. That's what the name literally means. It means the house or the womb of Horus. So you know that's what Aset became when she became pregnant. So Het Heru Aset, Shu Tefnut, came from Sudan. Look close at the word Nahesi again and see the determinative is Natiru wearing the feather of Ma'at. Are you all ready? Did they show you this when they spoke about Nahesi? Boom, everybody get a good look. Welcome to the Tuti Pod class. We are here to break the matrix and show you what you've not been shown before. So here are the blacks. Here are the blacks, the, the Nubian, the Negro, the Sudanese. But look at the determinative. <laughs> look at the determinative of these blacks. Look at the determinative of the Negroes. Look at these Negroes. Look at these Sudanese. Look at these Nubians. Well, what is this, everybody? Why are there three netters here with ma'at feathers on their head as the word for blacks? Huh? Hey, racist. <laughs> hey, racist. Doesn't a word that has a determinative, doesn't the determinative describe what the word is? Meaning that if I write Osiris or Osar, right? I remember when I was debating Jabari one time. And he was texting me under the table in the middle of the debate. He was texting me, does Anpu have a determinative? In the middle of our debate, you couldn't see. You saw his hands under the table. He was texting me, does, uh, does Anpu have um, have a determinative of a netter? Because they know that if the word Anpu has a determinative of the netter, then that's talking about the gods, the netter. They're the ones that have the netter determinative. So wait a minute. If the Nehesu, the Nehesi, the Sudanese, the blacks, the Negroes, huh? the, the Ethiopians, the blacks, they have the determinative of the netter. <laughs> Somebody go ahead and explain that. Here it is. So the Sudanese tribe, who are the direct result of the fluid masturbation of Ra, are also the Netiru. That's the Netiru, everybody. That is the netter. That is the netter. What did Diodorus say? He said the Sudanese, the Ethiopian tribal people, told him that one of their people, Osiris, the netter, migrated and settled from the Ethiopian area up into the so-called Egyptian area. He was a netter. They call those Ethiopian people the Nehesu. Well, the Nehesu consider themselves, the blacks, the Negroes, consider themselves also the direct result of the masturbation of Ra, of course, because from Ra, you have Jeb, Nut, Shu, Tefnut, and then you have who? Osiris, who has the netter determinative, who was a man who migrated up to that area. So that's because he's from that tribe or race of people called the Nehesu, the Nehesu have the netter determinative. Did you see that? I don't know if you all have been taught this in other places, but please digest. Please appreciate what it is that I'm doing here for you. I hope you do because they don't teach us anywhere. I don't know. I'll visit other YouTube channels. You guys send me the link and I'll see if they're teaching this somewhere else. I'll check it out. So here it is. Boom. Here are the Nehesu, the picture they don't show you. Oh, look. There's the reddish brown people. <laughs> There's the, there's the reddish brown. See, every time they talk about the Nehesu and the Nubians, they only show you these jet black people. They don't show you the same reddish brown okra that they're using for the so-called Egyptians. Why? Because the same people. So-called Nubian caravan, Heka, Nefer, which means beautiful of magic, very similar to the to what the Nubians' real name was. Nehesi, whisper of magical chants where the word Nakash came from. Notice the different shades. We always were, we always were different shades. That's the Nechasu. That's the Nubian. Tell me the difference between the complexion of the Nubian and the Egyptian. These are all the Nechasu because they're all the same people, everybody. Here, I should stop. So yes, the original Nechasu 
were the masters of enchantments, incantation, utterance of words, sound vibration, one of the original netters, masters, of Makaru was Aset. Who was Aset? Aset, the wife of the Ethiopian or the Nehesu settler. Here is from the words of the Kometians themselves. This is from Legends of the Gods, page 103. Let's see what it says about Aset, the sister of the settler Osiris. Thy sister Aset acted, acted as a protectress to thee. She drove the enemies away, averted seasons of calamity from thee. She recited words or formula with magical power of her mouth, being skilled of the tongue and never halting a word for being perfect in command of word. Aset, the magician, avenger of her brother, she went down, she went about seeking him untiringly so what is she known as the person who recites the words magical power of mouth skilled of tongue never halting of words perfect of command you see that that's all the enchanter here is the birth of heru told was a cons con uh, uh, told was the constant protectress of her brother she drove away fiends that wanted to attack him and kept out of the shrine of the tomb and she guarded him from all accidents, all these things she did by means of spells and incantations. There's your Yenehesu. Large numbers were known uh, to her by her power as the witch goddess. Her mouth was trained to perfection. She made no mistake pronouncing her spells and her tongue was skilled and halted not. That is the Nehesu. The Nehesu, the enchanters. All right. Are you ready for a bomb? Remember one of the definitions of the home was Nahasi. The home of the Nahasi was Baalchem, where Hathor, who was upset that we just read about, came from. Well, guess what the other name for Hetheru is? Guess what, everybody? Guess what the other name for Hetheru is? Aset was that they will never tell you. Remember, I told you that the Nehesu were the Netiru. That was the Netur, the Nehesu, the original beings, because the Netiru were the gods, the physical beings. Those were the 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 so-called Ethiopians, the blacks as they call them. And one of them migrated upwards, settled in Kemet. He was Osiris. Asar and his wife was the great enchanter. We looked at the word Nehesu. Nehesu was the one of the enchantments because the Nehesu were beings that knew how to use the power of the word. So Aset, who was the wife of the main one, Osiris, she was called skilled of the enchantment and incantation. Same word. Incantation, enchant, same word. But what was her name, everybody? Are you ready? Oh my. There we go. What was Aset's other name? Let's see if they tell you this. Uh-oh. What's this? What is this? Woo! Remember they said that Het Heru and Aset came from Sudan? Well, here it is, everybody. The Nehesi. That's the feminine version. See the Mut, which is the mother. Right? Nehesi. There's the egg of Aset. What is it, everybody? What is it? title of the Sudanese Hathor. <laughs> Aset's name was Nahes, Nahesi. That was Aset's name. She was the enchanter that came from the tribe of the enchanters. Nahes, mutter, incantations. There it is, everybody. Boom, Aset, Het Heru, Nahes. Nahes, T, the child raiser, see the egg. The Sudan, Nahesi, Netur, who heals, commands through sound vibration to raise Heru, the female enchanter Nahes, now placed in your Bible as the serpent Nakash, that spoke to what gender first? Of course, the woman. Guess what the word for serpent was and Nakash actually means? Hmm. Let's close it up, everybody. Because it gets deeper and deeper. This was just a little thing for this is for AJ Magul here. I wrote a little book for him, masterpiece for you, AJ, for your great question and your good support. This is what you get at the Tootsie Pod class. If you want to go to the other places and just argue and scream and argue and call each other names, enjoy. You will not get that here. So Aset's name was the Nehesi. 
the Nehesi, the female Nehesi, that she was of the Nehesi. <laughs> All right, the serpent was the symbol of the female, the mother that raises you, <laughs> rebirth your frequency in the afterlife. Okay. How do we know this? We're going to go to the oldest. We're going to go to the Torian Papyrus, everybody. Welcome to Tutti Pod class. We're going to go to Ma'at. Ma'at, the female goddess ruler who ruled Kemet for 700 years. Go debate with the Papyrus. Don't debate me. All right. So Ma'at, who ruled for 700 years, who had the cobra sign. Why? Because the cobra sign was the female sign. There it is, everybody. There is the egg. There is the egg, there is Ma'at, and there is the cobra, the one who raises, see, the Nechesi of the Hiss, the snake. All right. Ooh, this is getting deeper. Wait, so there's Ma'at ruling for 700 years. Go debate with the Kemetians. Leave me alone. All right, so here we go, everybody. Boom. We're going to now go into the Per M. Haru. The Per M. Haru. Shrink this down a little bit. And there it is. We're going to go to plate 15 down here and look at the word for goddess. See the word for goddess in the turt with the serpent because the female was the one associated with the serpent, the razor, the razor, the child razor with the egg. Okay. Woo. Here we go again. We're going to blow this up per M. Haru. Again, page 210 for those who have the per M. Haru. You can use as a reference, right? Uh, plate 32 per M. Haru. And now we see what the people were called. Look what it says here. Thou saith our name, serpent children. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. The serpent children of Renunet. You see, ladies and gentlemen, those are the people. Those are the Kemetians. Those are the Nekesi. They considered the woman, the razor, who resurrects you in the physical world and in the afterlife. That's the symbol of the cobra, the serpent, raising up. So thus the people of Kemet call themselves the serpent children. <laughs> children of the serpent. Children of the Nekesi. Oh, okay. All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to Tutti Pod class. And now we are here in uh, page 211. Thy names, thy knoweth them by us. Um, thou tread thou not upon, not shalt thou tread upon me with the floor of the hall, except thou sayest my name. What is the name? The Ren. You see that, everybody? The Ren. The vibrational frequencies that raise you in the afterlife where you get a name. But the name for the word for name is Ren, which is the root of Renunet. Because we're the serpent children of Renunet, who is the cobra that raises you because you're raising out of your body. And then your frequency culminates. You now have your sound frequency. You're now a one being in the other side as a sound frequency so that you get your name because it's not a name. It's your frequency raised up by the serpent mother. And you're the Renunet so that you get your name and you become the Ren, which is why the symbol of Ren is the mouth, which is sound, and the wave, which is the frequency or the oscillation that is the Ren, the serpent children of Ren, Renunet. Here's the papyrus of, oh, if I got possessed with this one, I think. I don't know. I wasn't supposed to answer this long, but here's a papyrus of Horeb. And there he is in his immortality surrounded by the snake as a serpent child. Do you see him as a child? Do you see the child, the serpent children of Renunet with the child side lock being resurrected? And there's the snake biting its tail. The serpent children of Renunet. Woo! Where he gets his Ren back. And here it is, everybody. Here it is. Welcome to the Tuti Pod class. This is the type of information you get here. Okay? So there he is in 1319 BC. Successor was Ramesses. The serpent child of the Renunet. Poor Amhab. 
Renunet. Who is Renunet? There is Renunet. Look what Renunet means, everybody. To bring up or to nurse. Renin. Bring up or to nurse. Right? Role in naming the children. Why? Because Renunet was one of the goddesses there to name the kings. In the papyrus I used in my debate where I show the netter there, Renunet, in there helping to name the baby king who is a physical man who's on the physical king list. Anyways, here is the symbol of Renunet. Woo! Your Ren. Here it is, everybody. Renunet. Right? The goddess, the nurse goddess. Right? That's why Renu means child, boy, youth, babe. Do you see that? <laughs> young. Because the Renunet who raises the young, it is the serpent woman who raises the young, that is the Renunet. Right? The goddess of the eighth month of the Egyptian year, the name of the Aureus and the royal crown. Woo! Here it is, everybody. Let's keep, let's, let's go on. Man. Let's go. Here is the Reheti, the combination sisters of Aset and Nevtet. What do you see their symbol as? Oh, look at that. The two serpents. That is the Renonet, because they are the child raisers, everybody. They are the child raisers. Let's go. Here we go. All right. Guess what the God of the Bible does? Here we go. Here's the copy now. Because remember, the Renonet were the gods who came from sorry, the Renonet. The Nahesi were the enchanting gods, the Netter, who came from the upper part of Kemet, right? Along the bottom, the which is really the top, the top of the Nile. So they're associated with the Nile River, the Nile Valley, traveling upwards and settling somewhere else. Guess what the Bible does when referring to the Nile of Kemet, where the Nahas, the rulers, began, where they were called the bee. Understand that the same Nahasi, the pharaohs, they were called the bee, which is the Nesu bee. Two words, Nesu and bee. That's where you get your word bee from, those little things that fly around. Guess how God communicates in your Bible, ladies and gentlemen? Hebrew Israelites... Everybody, get, now that you know all this information about the Hiss, the, 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 the Renunet, the Serpent, the Nahesi, the Nubians, guess how God communicates when referring to the Egyptians. Here we go. Isaiah 7, 18. And it shall come to pass on that day the Lord shall hiss. <laughs> Man. <laughs> what? The Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers, the Nile, of Egypt, and for the bee, that is in the land of Assyria. So God here, when it comes to Egypt, he's hissing, because they understand the sign that hiss, serpent, snake, sneaky, slithery, all goes back to the neh hiss, because in actuality, neh hiss is also two words, neh and hiss. I may get into that in another class. That is your hissing serpent. Here's God hissing in the Bible. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> God is speaking through hissing, stolen from the Nehes concept. Who were the bee, the rulers, but the Houthi? Why does it say fly? It actually doesn't. Okay, does it say fly? Let's take a look. In the Strong Concordance, here we go. We go to Strong Concordance, H2070. And the word there in the book of Isaiah for the fly, the fly, see it says fly over here in Isaiah 7, 18. It says fly, but what does it actually say? Oh my goodness, look what it says. Fly, which just means the action of what the animal is doing, not the actual insect that is called a fly. Look what it says here. Anybody ever been stung by a fly before? Nope. Ever been stung by a bee before? Yep. But look, it says fly, fly, zebub. A fly, especially of the stinging nature. <laughs> what fly do you know, everybody, that's of the stinging nature? The thing that flies that's of the stinging nature is the bee. It is flying, so they call it in the Bible a fly. The bee, which was a symbol of the Nehesi, the rulers of Kemet called the Nesu Biti. In the Taurine Papyrus, see fly. So they're in Egypt. God is talking. He's hissing, symbolic of the enchanting, the hissing words, the nehissi, the hissing words of the Renunet, the serpent people, and their children, us, called the serpent children. Right? And here, here it is, says B, B of Assyria. See, it's a B. That's <laughs> not a fly. Boom, the word is B. 
So the Nehes, the serpent, gods, Netter, were the gods of resurrection, immortality, later to become the people of the Nile, starting as far back as Uganda, Ethiopia, Sudan, all false titles to hide the true name, Nehes, a concept stolen, put in the Bible as serpent, who discusses what? What does the serpent discuss? The Nakas, what does he discuss? For the day you eat thereof, goddess no, you shall you shall truly die. Talking about you shall not truly die. Talking about immortality. They literally took the Nehes, the gods and goddesses of immortality, put it in the Bible as the talking serpent, and the only conversation he's having with the woman is about whether they're gonna die or not. I am done. Boom! There is my answer. I'm done. That's it. That's it, man. I'm done. I'm done to your screen share. That's it. Boom. I hope that you appreciated that answer. AJ Super Magul coming from me, one of the serpent children. <laughs> All right. Let me check the chat room and I'm going to take my break and put the brothers on. To continue, let me check the chat room to see how many people are saying, we've heard this before. Our comedic priests on the other channels talk about this all the time. Let me go. <laughs> I don't know, everybody. I don't know, man. I really hope. Two Tahooties? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, that's why it's glitching. It has two of me on here. Wait a minute. What's happening here? Okay. There we go. One of me. If everybody can hear me and see me, press A1. They're not going to stop. This isn't going to stop. Press a one if you can see me and hear me. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. If you can see and hear me, press a one, please. Press a one if you can see and hear me. Let's check the chat room to see if AJ Magool and others actually heard my answer. And then I'm going to take a break. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. This is what they want to stop. They want to make me invisible. We do not want to promote this at all because this is not arguing, screaming, fussing. This is information based on what I am not ashamed of, which is what the Kometians teach. I am not ashamed of what the Kometians teach. I'm here to represent what we've been teaching for thousands and thousands of years. I'm not a debater atheist that's just here to cut down the Bible. And I believe in nothing. No, we're going to break it down step by step, dictionary page by map by archaeological site, by everything, so you all can get the multifarious plethora of information and do what you wish. I know what I'm doing with it. Let me go ahead and check the room and see if uh, <laughs> if anybody heard the answer while I was teaching. Okay, we got Nightlife. Fire, fire, fire. Nightlife has a question here, too, about meteorites. We got a T-Dog, T-Dog. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, this is awesome. You all are really, um, really like this. Okay, good. Um, oh, it's oh, it restarted. I can only go. I can only go this far up. That's interesting. The schlacken is here. Schlacken says, "Got them. The netters were black. Exactly." Exactly. You got Nana said Mercy's welcome to the Tootsie Pot class where you get mind blowing answers again and again. Darius McNear says Netur equals God, divine rulers on earth. Exactly. E Manifesto, how you liking this, my brother? Oh, your question is here too. Oh man, I'm gonna get be able to get all this. Uh Scribe puts I don't know what that is. RPM puts wow. 
Arcad Infinite. I can't even see that. Arcade Infinite. Put, AJ Super Magool puts hats, hats, hats. I think that's what it looks. Is those hats? I can't, are those hats? My screen is very small. Um, Darius McNear. Darius McNear says, "Osiris, Lord of the Perfect Black, Wesser." Exactly. We got uh, Mr. Highest. He puts some symbol here. Reddish Brown Bros. <laughs> One of a kind. Jamie X. Nightlife Fire put stars. I think fire. Shaniba put boom. Jody put. 66 likes and 100 watching, and then one other person liked it. All right. Um, man, Shannon South Art is setting me on fire. Darius put Nechess. Voltage Control put Boom. I like that with the fire in it. Robert Williams put Nechess. Hicka kept Ross throwing cannon grenades at me. Darius McNear says, Children of Isis, Nechess, this is awesome, you guys. Man, isn't this beautiful? This is so beautiful. Tua AJ for asking the question, yep. Whispers and chancers, you all are getting it. Uh, Shannon Southard put, great question, amazing breakdown. Snake fire, snake fire, snake fire. E Manifesto says, Nechess, Cobra Commander. <laughs> yes, the Cobra Commander, yes, yes, yes. Oh man, this is awesome. Nanny Summer put fire, put fire. Kamit 101 says, when a simple answer will not be suffice, just as to Houthi. Desmond put. <laughs> I wonder if this is why the Vatican architecture looks that way. Yes, it is. Woo! Wow. That is why you say serpent style. Exactly. Now you all know <laughs> that is the snake style. That's where it comes from. Set and Tamar, Tasseti and Tamari. Yep, that, those were the names, right? All right. Uh, Nightfire put Desmond. Good observation. Wow, you guys love this answer. You guys have all kind of comments. Oros Boros is an ancient symbol of a snake or serpent eating its own tail. Uh, variously signifying infinity in the cycle of birth and death. Absolutely, Kamit does his studies. Absolutely. Desmond says, yep, Kamit, yep. <laughs> Nightfire puts more fire. t Dog sitting on fire. Serpent represents the, the sun. Yep, 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 you all are right. Woo, e Manifesto says, woo, multi-layered answers. Let's go. <laughs> Nesu BT, yep, that's it. Okay, you guys. This is as much comments as my answer. This is awesome. Another part of Christianity stolen from Kemet. That is a conscious, conscious conqueror. Woo, we, we, we. This is okay, good. Let me, let me, you guys loved it. I get it, I get it, I get it. Thank you all for your appreciation. This keeps on going. You all are truly, um, really liking the answer. Tehuti showed itself for a second. Tehuti's, <laughs> Tehuti's car showed itself for a second. <laughs> Okay, you guys all love it. Awesome. Um, Heka Kepara says, the scholarship is from another galaxy. Tua Saba, mind-blowing. This whole rest of this class is going to be about another galaxy. An no, another an an another other planet. Woo, Arcad Infinite says, I quote, mind-blowing answers again and again. Maurice Waller says, great breakdown. Shannon says, wah, wah. Darius said, uh, everybody's trying to make me debate somebody. Darius uh, Darius versus Tehuti versus Chief X. I don't know who that is. Was ancient Egypt. <laughs> Whoever Chief X is, bring him. I don't know who anybody. I don't know who anybody is. Um, whoever they are, bring them all. Uh, awesome. All right, everybody. Let's um let's go. Nanny Set Mercy. Shout out to the to the best chat. Good stuff, Tehuti. Where is my Moderators, where's uh, where's Sinetia? Where's uh, oh, we have uh, Star Feather Ghost Dance is astonishing. The the release the schlacken, <laughs> release the schlacken. <laughs> I'm not sure what that even means. And Ascari, oh, Ascari, you're gonna love the rest of this class. This is all what you love material, Anunnaki, Mars, 
Fantastic Supreme Breakdown. All should donate. Or you are stealing. Thank you, my good brother. Fantastic Supreme Breakdown. All should donate. Or you are stealing. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I don't know why everybody's not donating. I don't know why any way people would watch and not donate. Are you watching thinking, hey, this this information is not worth anything? Or to who to you? This is just a walk in the park. Or I'm going to watch and I'm not going to support. I don't know the mentality, brother. I'm not sure, but I'm sure the same people that are doing that will go tomorrow and buy some bubble gum and donuts and buy their son a Nike shoe and donate to the Woman King and, and uh, Avengers tomorrow. But... Those who are um, appreciative of what I teach, thank you. Please donate. Please donate and support. To Huti Shakur. What, what is going on here? Okay. Saba, check your uh, check your messenger. Okay, I gotta I gotta see that. Is anyone experiencing major shift when Saba's on the mic? Which messenger? Is it uh, the Facebook Messenger? I'll well, I'll do that when I take a break. I'll do that when I take a break. Shannon Southard says, anyone else experiencing a major shift when Saba is on the mic? Okay, Tahuti goes in. All right, everybody. You all loved it. I'm going to take a break right now. Put the brothers on the mic, on the screen. I'm going to put the link in the room right now. Brothers, get ready to jump on. You all are going to have a nice uh, seven-minute chance. Not chance, a seven-minute um opportunity to speak get it out promote do whatever you all feel is right and i'm going to be stepping away for about seven minutes that is the link in the room i just put it in for the brothers uh, anki and maat says mystical television a gmail purchase thank you desmond says i love the energy in this room you help this energy desmond desmond and darius I believe you two I see in some other rooms. And yes, you see the difference in energy, don't you? You see the difference in the energy. All right. Everybody is on. Where are my moderators at? Where are my moderators at? Anki and Ma'at, there she is. Ahati Ma'at, where are you? Is Ahati Ma'at here? And where is Sineti Amun? I see Nani Asep Mur. Okay, I'm about to step away. So when I step away... um. When I step away, oh, there's Arcan Infinite. Oh, okay. When I step away, um, the team is going to go ahead and explain some things. And Ahati Ma'a jump in. Well, Ahati, you have the link. The link is in. But when I step away, I will not be able to physically let you in. Um, this is for the brothers, the team, jump in. If Conscious Conquer, if you want if you want to jump on, you are a supporter, you do go to the Sunday class. If you want to jump on and give a tribute to the pod class, quickly say how it helped you. You can you can jump on and speak only after all the brothers on the team have said their piece. So yes, you can jump on in the seven minutes that I am gone. Where is Ahati Ma'at? There he is. This is everybody. Conscious Conquer, if you want to jump on and share the energy of appreciation, you can do that after the brothers here have spoken and done their um what they have to advertise speak about jamie x is leaving he says i'm out y'all after 12 on the east coast i'll catch the rest tomorrow shout out to jamie x peace i'm gonna let everybody in the room now and i'm gonna step away and take my break so first starting with the hati boom arcade infinite boom scribe boom Kalutimos, boom the formerly known as Boom. <laughs> Conscious Conqueror, Boom. All right, and come on the screen, Conscious Conqueror. Put your, um, put your come on the screen. On. This chat is a whole vibe. <laughs> uh, interesting. Okay, so go ahead, everybody. I'm going to step off now. And when I step off, um, those who are not talking, mute your mic or it's going to cut out everybody. Okay, Boom, Boom. Darius says, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Is everybody in here? Do I have everybody in here? Is Conscious Conqueror, Hati Ma'at. Is anybody missing? Oh, the scribe. Boom. We can't do it without the scribe. 
I'm glad I double checked. Everybody's in here. I'm stepping off. People do not leave. When I come back, we're going to talk about. Oh my goodness, man. Is, is Stranger even here? If Stranger is here, he, he wants to know about the SpaceX logo. It's about to get crazy. We're going to talk about nuclear fusion and everything. All right, here we go, everybody. Is everybody in here? I'm going to step away. Peace. Hotel, my hot hey. brothers. Hotel, brothers. That was a AJ. Thanks for asking that question, brother. <laughs> Hotel, good brothers. Hey, AJ, that's hey. on point. I mean, should I say formerly known as that? That's on point, brother. All oh, I man. did is so oh, Saba man. was Saba mentioned this, and when he was on Sodnetters, uh podcast and i just asked the question based on something he said so it's just saba i'm just like asking him about stuff he said so Brother, I don't get no credit to me that's all saba <laughs> that was amazing thank you man thank you. he went in he went, he went in. in he went in and i'll tell you what i like to echo what somebody said in the room that statement that they made about getting this for free and stealing yeah. because i'm telling you that right there um you, you know you you, you got to come out your pocket i don't care if you got coins i don't care what you got you got to come out of your pocket and you got to put something in it because i don't even know how you're gonna sleep at night after that because <laughs> you're stealing you're, you're robbing and you're cheating and that's what's up <laughs> i can that's literally feel my body my whole essence changing when he was speaking that sound vibration yo that's man that's i can't even describe like how lucky we're not it's beyond lucky how that's like beyond royalty like what we get from saba it is it's precious it's priceless it's it's the highest level of teaching that's a fact that is an absolute fact and you know what? You're not even stealing from you stealing from yourself. <laughs> That's what's crazy because you are cheating yourself. Even though you think you're getting the information and you think you're getting over, you are cheating yourself because you're not on that. You're not you're not willing to invest in yourself and learning. I just came here to learn. <laughs> Thank you, AJ, for asking that question. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, we got a guest on, Conscious Conqueror. Conscious Conqueror. Peace, brother. Peace and love, brother. Get on and speak, brother. Peace, peace, peace. Peace City Brothers, man. Peace City Foundation. I'm walking away from the road there because um, cars pass, you know, outside. I have a little family inside, so. Yeah, um, I love the show, man. Right now, I just, I just have to work on... A little credit card and thing because I can't really pay as yet. But when I when I do that, trust me, I'll be the number one donator. I love the show, love the show, man. Like even the information that he said tonight about um the Nile area being three times the size of America. First time I hear that one, and that's that's mind blowing to me. Ninatas being black, you know. Love and peace and love, man. Peace and prosperity. Peace and love. Peace and love, Conscious Conqueror. Saba peace, said... Peace and love, Hecka, good brother. He said, Hekka Nefer is beauty of magic? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Where you gonna get that from? You, you not gonna yeah. hear nobody go in like that. Like, that was yeah, like... Was my mind is blown. That's beautiful. But, but you know what? Here, here's the thing. This is the beauty of it. See, we can take this information and we can apply it in the matrix and just dominate. You know what I'm saying? We can use this info. I, I just I just did it this week. I just see and you just see how our magic, we reverse engineer the magic back in our favor. And that's the beautiful thing dealing with these Tamahu and all this other stuff. Now we have the technology, the information to correct things and make things right. So conscious conqueror, you're gonna do more than just get credit cards, man. You're gonna own a bank, bro, my brother. 
<laughs> that's what's up with this information right here the power this powerful information if you take it and you apply it and just watch it work and, just, and, and it's beautiful it's just beautiful to behold because we're dealing in a spellbound language called english and now we bust in the matrix with with, with the facts and the magic of our ancestors that's all i gotta say peoples that's a fact yes because um I went on um I was I was talking about the netters I think on God Garfield podcast and I was explaining to them I was asking brother Reggie like how old you think the, the, the pyramids are and if it lined up with Orion and and he was saying that he believed that they build the pyramids with, with copper tools and then they were saying well um, who do you think build the, the Great Pyramid and when I said the netters the whole podcast laugh at me. So I'm like, wait, boy, the conscious community don't really know what to hooty, I'm in hotel, bro, no. <laughs> yeah, it's sad, man. It's sad. It's a fact because this is just the truth. This is the truth and the facts being laid out before you. But uh, Conscious Conqueror, they learning, they hearing it, and it's going to be up there. They're going to take it back. And, uh, you know, slowly but surely, we stepping out of the matrix. You know, so, you know, shout out to all them brothers that's uh, in the chat, sneak listening, coming back, getting all the information and taking it back. Shout out to you, brother. You know, just spread the information. That's all you got to do. Just keep spreading it. <laughs> little by little. Because that's what we doing. Little by little. <laughs> the Saba Saba. The teacher's teacher. The teacher's teacher. Where's the uh, scribe at? Scribe not on here? Peace and love to all you brothers too, man. Ahati. Peace, brother. <laughs> Shout out to Ahati for motivating this brother to get out back into the public and peak. Yeah. Can you imagine if it wasn't for this good brother on the side of me? I don't know if it, if it shows the same way. For motivating this brother to get out and teach us. Do you know how honored it is to be a part of this, to be able to learn and get this information, to be in this time, to be able to record it and go back and study it? I have to go back and listen to the lesson over and over again. Because you can't you can't just get it just listening one thing. Not me anyway. Maybe y'all smart brothers out there can get it, but man, I'm I gotta go back and listen and digest it and process it. You know what I mean? And just let it sink in because it's nothing but the truth. And it's all laid out for you. You go back and do your own research on it. Go check it out yourself. Check it out yourself. Arcad, right. can't yes, you sir. can't you can't you just visual visually see a Hati learning from Saba and just like wondering like Saba, how can you not be teaching? You gotta teach. Yeah. The way you yeah. teach the world needs yeah. this. So it's yeah. like Ahati did what would only make sense. It does not make sense for Saba to not be teaching. Tua, yeah. Tua, Tua. Shout out to Ahati. To a young Return brother. To my, Tua, my young brother. brother. Tua. Yes. Yes, Tua, brother. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tuudimos. Thank you for that. Appreciate Tua, it. Tua, my young brother. Two of my you young brothers. You look about 16 over there. You, you look 16, <laughs> 17 over there. So. <laughs> That's that heck of magic, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, I'm going to go to bed uh, happy and pleased tonight, man. Just because <laughs> <laughs> my secret potion is yeah. working. Um, there you go. There you go. There you go. Mail some yeah. my way. Yeah, when I, I need met to get my uh, nines I, back. I, get, I need to get my nines back. I gave it out to my son. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll get my eye right on it. I'll have her uh, <laughs> do some hair cut on the on the on the lotion, and we'll get that shipped out to you by tomorrow. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, yeah, brothers. You know, this is this is great. This is was about a couple months ago. It was just me sitting up here on his breaks, and now look what we're having. Slowly but surely, we're growing. Yes. You know, for the life of me, and I think I'm like with Arcad, probably AJ as well. For the life of me, I used to sit back. I would sit back in the back of the class 
And I was wondering why nobody would go in and relieve. You'd be the only one up there. I was like, man, why is not nobody going up there, you know, to talk and just, you know, you know, give Saba a break, you know, give him some, you know, give him some rest. And I would always wonder why nobody would come up here besides yourself, Ahati. But, you know, that's all changed. That that was months ago. Now I'm seeing the change. So, yeah, two of brothers, two of my, my great brothers. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, the Tomahus is built a virtual reality that's, that's more real to us than the physical, uh, physical relationship we have with people. So I don't know if I could have done this if I met Saba virtually, so I commend you brothers for that, but, uh, I needed to meet him physically. That's how bad I was hurt. You know, I thought I knew everything. I'm coming fresh out of Hebrew Israelites. You can't tell me nothing about God, Most High Mashiach, you know? And then all that man had to do was open his mouth a couple of times. And I realized I didn't know S, I didn't know nothing. Yes. That was a very, very, what they call humbling experience. And I knew from that moment forward, I had finally found what I've been looking for my entire life. Because since a little boy, I've been asking questions and even as a little boy, I remember uh, people shutting me down. They said, you ask too many questions. Go ask the experts. And I asked, who's the experts? They said, the pastors, the priests, the reverends, the scientists. And they're all Tamahu minded. So Roland's still in the confusion for 10 more years and 20 more years and on and on. So, yes, um, I felt it was my obligation to somehow, some way say the Makaru, the true voice, get something that resonates with him to motivate him to come out. Because like he says, I'm very persistent, I'm very diligent, and I was not going to give up on you brothers and sisters. I see the sisters out there. Uh, because I am for my people first. I could care less. I say this all the time, but I could care less about the likes, the views, the popularity. If there's one of us hurting, I hurt. And uh, I know Saba is, is, is the voice, and we are the body, and we form together just like Voltron formed. Because Saba can't do it alone. His words are just words. If we don't do anything with his words, it's like Kepara in Creation Story A from the Bremen Orion Papyrus, where it says Kepara rose out of inertia through the foundations of who? Through the foundations of Ma'at. We are Ma'at and he is Kepara. If we do not connect and get this thing moving, this is the last chance. I told Saba this personally and I'll tell you guys here because you are my closest men. We are the last chance. I don't see anybody coming after us. So if the people don't get it now, they'll never get it. So that's why behind the scenes, everybody out there in the chat, we work diligently hard behind the scenes to support the hoodie is not just some fad or thing we do for fun we're, we're, these brothers are literally putting in time because of our love for Tahuti. so i agree with the Ascari. respect my great warrior and i'm gonna wrap it up with this i agree with the Ascari, the great warrior that's in the chat you are stealing from saba i would go out of my way to rearrange my schedule for saba i would go out of my way to carry saba's bags of pills I go out of my way to follow Saba wherever he told me to go. I go out of my way to give Saba whatever he needed, and I would find a way to get it. That is the loyalty that we're looking for. That is the loyalty that these brothers right here are showing. And if you have the same type of spirit within you, the same ka, join us. Just don't sit here chatting and talking for the rest of your life. Let's do it. Can I say one thing? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Saba for sharing that Ma'at ruled for 700 years. Be inspired by that. And that makes the affirmation even more powerful. Think about the affirmation we do and Ma'at ruled for 700 years. That is something to chew on. Thank you for that, Saba. You are welcome. Thank you all. Thank you all. Appreciate the dedication, the love. Appreciate. I heard in the background while I was doing something. Um, I heard uh, Tahutimos quoting Ascari, um, saying, "Yes, it's stealing." Thank you. I heard Ahati talk about his his love for the people, his love for me, and 
how serious it is. He doesn't care about views and likes. And I heard, I heard, I heard little bits of everybody while I was organizing. Thank you all for your dedication. Th thank you um, for your um, for what you just said, um, AJ. And yes, these are the things that the people that say they teach commit they have to ignore. They have to ignore my teachings. Understand that they are not allowed in the Isfetian doctrine to, to teach what it is that I'm teaching because if they teach what the Kemetians um, really did teach, it would cause a revolution and they would be accountable and it would expose them as just um, atheists. The Kemetians were not atheists, so they're not allowed to teach this. So when I say Ma'at rule for 700 years, why is that not spoken about on all the Kemetic channels? Why is that ignored? Why is everybody talking about Ma'at but not talking about that part? So somebody tell me what that means. And nobody out there knows because they got to ignore that. That either means a being on this planet lived for 700 years or the laws of Ma'at only existed in Kemet for 700 years. Which one is it? It can only mean those two things that you get snake styled. That's how I caught Jabari. Either it means there's a woman or a being on this earth who was a Nesu Biti, who was a, who was a ruler, and she lived for 700 years, or the laws of Ma'at only existed successfully in Kemet and then ended after a 700 year period. Which one is it? Whichever one you choose, you're done. Okay, here we go, everybody. We're going to get back to it, everybody. The next question in, I'm going to answer a couple more, then put the brothers back on, but I got a lot to answer. Shout out to you, brothers, for coming on. We are going to, um, to continue. Shout out to you, Conscious Conqueror. And everybody that was in here, shout out to you. Okay, here we go, everybody. The next question that came on uh, is E-Manifesto here. E-Manifesto. <laughs> You're trying to haunt Jabari. That begs the question, what are gods? I once asked for Man, it's haunting. <laughs> okay, let's get in. Speaking of the gods... Let's get into e speaking of e manifesto and the gods let's get it in let's get in e manifesto's question he's actually next up to bat then i have a uh, nightlife about the meteors and i have uh i have matthew ooh, ooh, ooh. matthew has a question in here about um nuclear explosions as a matter of fact all of those things tie in i think we're gonna hmm I think we're going to go e-manifestos first. I'm going to give a couple shout outs um, from people who donated. Here we go, everybody. Somebody asked me about the wing disc and that somebody is e-manifesto. Let me go ahead and put his question. This is all the way back from the 16th, so I, I got to get him. I got to get him. Shout out to e-manifesto who asked a question about the wing disc. Let me go ahead and put this on the screen and let's get to it. Welcome to the Tootsie Pod class. We are here to break it down. Break it down. Let's go, everybody. Here we go. This question is from the 16th. Already the 30th. That's from two weeks ago. So let's go get into it. Here we go. All right. Boom, everybody. Boom, boom, boom. Chrome tab. Shout out to E Manifesto who sent the big $33.03. Shout out, E Manifesto. You are awesome. You're a great support. E Manifesto with the thirty-three dollars and three cents. The question I was sent in is all the way back to the sixteen. Here we go, everybody. So this question should be easy, right? Everybody talks about this. I have not met. I have not met one so-called conscious or comedic person. That has not mentioned this, the wings of Horus, the wing sun disc breakdown. What is the wing sun disc? Everybody use it. They use it for religious breakdowns. They use it for um, everything. One second, everybody, hold up. They use it for all type of symbolism. It's even on the back of the Chrysler car. It's, it's everywhere. Everybody uses this. Um, take this here, hold on. Got to say discipline with the diet, hold on. Everybody talks about this, but how come this is not explained? 
We're going to explain this right now, everybody. The question is for winged sun disc break down. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday Pod class. Shout out to your manifesto who asked about the winged sun disc. Let's break it down. This is going to perfectly segue. This is going to perfectly segue into the the nuclear Mars question. So much is being asked. Um, shout out to everybody who is here. Um, shout out to everybody, everybody. Here we go. Okay, let's see this on the off the screen. So the question again is, I'll read it. Winged for winged sun disc breakdown. E manifesto. Here we go. You all ready? Shannon says, get your notepads out. Um, Ed Ren says, great panel segment to Houthi and guests. Okay, here we go. Here we go. That's right, Misha. Sworn to Isfet secrecy. Here we go. Are you ready? Let's break it down. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go like this. Um, okay, oh, Scribe, you told me to check my messages. Is that the private chat? I see, I see a beautiful message from a uh, from a uh, Super Magul in the private chat. I'm so busy though. Thank you, Super Magul. That's an awesome message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we said check your messages. I don't know what if it's a Facebook, email, private chat. Okay, here we go. Let me go ahead and take this music. Um, this music may be glitching. Oh no, I removed it. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, Lofi. Lofi. Okay, good. We stopped it. Okay, everybody. Hear me clear. Here we go. Welcome to the Tootsie Pod class. We are about to break it down. The question is asked about the winged disc. Let's get into it. What is this winged disc that we always see? What actually is it? Let me go ahead and put this on screen share. Everybody hopefully can see me, hear me clear. Press a little one mic check. I want to make sure before I go in. So this, let me go one check, mic check, one, one, one. Can you hear me? Can you see me move? Am I okay? Am I clear? Mic check. My screen on my side is not moving. Last thing I got was Shannon saying, get your notepads out. Oh, they're the ones. There they go. Okay, good, good, good. Scribe. Okay, good. Boom, 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 boom. Hika Kepra, Arcad Infinite, Misha, Hika Kepra, Shannon. That's it. Eric, that's it. Two teamos, one, 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 one. Nightfire 1111. Okay, good. Okay, good. Here we go. Welcome. And here we are. Boom. And, oh, not Chrome tab. Cancel. Sorry. Screen share. Screen share. Here we go. Who? What is this winged disc? Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. Please support. Send in your donation. Send in your support. Watch what you are about to get. Here we go. Boom. All right, the winged disc, quote unquote, notice they call it that. The winged disc, let me go back to it, of Heiru is one of the most popular comedic images in the world. But what is it? Why is it when you hear comedic priests, comedic quote unquote teachers, conscious people discuss it? They literally never go back to the Kemetic writings. All their answers are esoteric fluff conjecture on the spot, created symbolism. But again, the agenda is to move you away from what the indigenous people said themselves, or at least quote, the story itself. Here is where the detailed story derives from, with the actual name of the quote unquote winged disc, quote unquote, which is Heru Behutset. Welcome to the Tusi Pod class. We are about to get into it and explain what is the winged disc. Here we go. Let us go and start with the Temple of Edfu, ancient Egyptian temple located on the west bank of the Nile. 
In Edfu, we look at the stone and we clearly see wings and a circle. Make note, wings and a circle. There it is right there. There's the actual picture of the temple. And then over here is a colored variation. And this is the colored variation of the Medinet Habu, the mortuary of Ramesses Rames the third. Here is the circle, and we have specifically these type of wings here. What does this mean, everybody? What is it about? What's it all about? Let's get into it, everybody. Welcome to the Tuhuti Pod class. We're about to break it down. Here's the actual temple. Get a look at the beautiful temple. This was, again, redone by the Ptolemies. Ptolemies redid it. It re-renovated it not too long ago. A little over 2,000 years ago, and that was what the Ptolemies did, and Alexander the Great, Alexander or Machmet, Machmet wanted to restore Kemet from the destruction of the Assyrians. And this is one of the temples that they restored or rebuilt. Here it is, right here, very beautiful style temple. In this section, where you can find the story of the winged disc, there is Aset behind Heru. And let's take a look at the story of the winged disc. Actually, let's take a look at the influence of the so-called winged disc. So, very, very popular, right? The winged disc, as I said up here, is one of the most popular images in the world. So let's go look and take a look at the influence and the popularity. As a matter of fact, the winged disc of Heru Behutet is so powerful and popular it was grafted right into everyone's Bible. <laughs> the winged disc was actually put right into the Hebrews and the Christians' Bible, grafted right in. So here is this, the, what they call the winged disc right here of, uh, of Ramis, as it says Ramis, of Ramis right here. And now the Bible steps in. For those who fear my name, the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness, will rise with healing in its wings. And if you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall, that is in the book of Malachi 1-2. There's the sun and the sun rising with healing in its wings. That is this symbol right here, representing Heru, because Heru is the son of who? Let me go into the chat room real quick. Heru is the son of who? That's right, the Chrysler trademark. Heru is the son of who, everybody? Who is Heru the son of? Heru is the son of... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Pretty easy answer. Okay, my screen must be frozen or something because I can't see anybody typing. But... Um, oh, a comment was accidentally deleted. Okay, Scribe can fix that. Ed Ren, he'll be right on it. Aset, there we go. So Aset, and Aset, like I just broke down earlier, is called Het Heru. Het Heru, right? A lot of Western corporate, exactly, have, have incorporated this symbol. Het Heru, Asar and Aset, that's right. So Het Heru is who? The cow. The cow. Het Heru is the cow. So what would that make Heru? If Asar, if Aset was the cow, with the horns, then what would Heru be? What would Heru be? Well, in the papyrus, he's the son with the wings called Heru Behutet. And if he's the son of a cow, that would make him a calf. Let's go back to the Bible. For those who fear my name, the son of righteousness, the sun will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and skip about like calves. <laughs> Stolen directly from Heru Behutet, who is the calf, because he is the son of the cow. Heru, the son of the cow, Aset. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Tuesday podcast. Here we go. Has anyone ever heard of the Jehovah Witnesses? Yes. Are you familiar with their Bible study books that are given to their students? Anybody familiar with the Jehovah Witnesses? I'm sure. I'm sure most people here have had their knock on the door from the Jehovah Witnesses. Anybody? Say yes if you have ever been knocked on the door from the Jehovah Witnesses. Have you ever been knocked on the door 
Are you familiar with the Jehovah Witnesses? Remember, we used to hide under the bed and pretend we're not home. Jehovah Witnesses, right? They they have a study book. They have a study book that helps them understand the Bible. Let me go in the room and see. I'm going to reveal something to you that you've probably not seen before. But if anybody here have any Jehovah Witness friends, Jehovah Witness friends, always knocking. Always knocking. <laughs> I wish I could say never. Anybody have any Jehovah Witness friends? What would they say to you if you were presenting them information on the netter, on Kemet? What would they say to you? What would they say to you? They would say you're what? What are you? If you're trying to talk to them about Kemet and Egypt, as, you, as people call it, what would they say to you? You're worshiping what? Worshiping idols. All right, let me go back to the room. What would they say to you? What is that noise? Interesting. What they, yeah, you're a heathen. There we go. You're a heathen. You're a heathen. Because your gods are idle heathen gods, right? Well, let me show you all something and reveal to you because we're trying to bring you out of the matrix and show you blasphemy, idol, idolatry. They would say you're blaspheming, heathen, devil worshiper. Once you challenge a, <laughs> once you challenge the Jehovah Witness fakes, they start coming to your house. Yeah, exactly. Heathen, right? This symbol is mind blowing. Okay, so. What will they say to you? You're heathen, right? Let me introduce you to the Jehovah Witnesses study guide. The study guide that helps them understand the symbolism of the Bible. Probably never seen this before, but that's why all of you come to the pod class. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What's going on? I know you guys want the Jehovah Witnesses to knock at your door now. I love it when they knock at my door. I love it. Knock at my door, I'm going to answer you with this book. This is the first book we're going to talk about. The time is at hand. What's that on the front of their book? Even with the two serpents? What's that right there? (laughs) This is a helping hand for Bible students. It helps them understand the Bible. Mm. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. Is that the winged disc? Is that Heru Behutet? Is it? Is that this? Herubahutet, there you are. There's Herubahutet on Edfu. There you are. There you are. I know Netzer the Great loves this. He loves Bible. <laughs> he loves Bible stolen topics. Anything stolen to the Bible steals, he loves it. I know you love this. I know you're going to blast Jehovah's Witnesses with this. Look at the Bible study book for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Herubahutet on the cover. <laughs> Even with the two serpents, identical. That is in the Jehovah Witness. That is the Jehovah Witness study book. There it is. There's the two serpents. You see that? See the two serpents right there? Jehovah Witness study book. There's the wings. They 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 took it down. Jehovah Witness carry more comedic symbols than than uh most brothers. Here we go. All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome. Boom. Welcome to Take Pudi Pod class. So, with all of these mutations of Heru Behutet in modern day, what is the actual story? What does Behutet and the relating words mean? What does it even mean, everybody? What is this Heru Behutet? What does it mean, and what's the actual story? Jehovah Witness Study Guide. Oh my goodness! Robert says what? <laughs> Netzer says yeah. Oh my goodness, man. Did you all even know this? <laughs> Jehovah Witness study guide is, is Heru Behutet's comedic symbol. Woo, let's go. The Bible stored and stolen borrowed nearly everything. And you got people having stupid debates saying, was Christianity taken from Kemet? <laughs> okay. No, not at all. Not at all. First clue, the Jehovah Witness belief system. Is fake. It was created in 1881, <laughs> Pittsburgh. All right. So here we go, everybody. Boom. So there it is. What do these words actually mean? What does Heru Behutet mean? Let's take a look at everybody. 
Welcome to the Zuti Tuti Pod class. Let me take you right to the sources. Here is Behutet means to spread out wings. Page 220 of the Hieroglyphic Dictionary. Behutet is to spread out wings, and we see the half of the bird wing image. There is, you see that right there? So there's the half of the bird wing image, and here's the half of the bird wing image on the sun disk. Now we will look at the word paut a name used to describe the original netter. There's another name for the netter that's not too po popular, and it is pa'ut. Let's take a good look at it, everybody. Welcome to the Tuti Pod class. We're going to take a look at the word pa'ut, one of the original names for the netter. Let's take a look. Here it is, pa, pa'ut, and there is the same wings. The wings of Heir is the is the is the name for the netter, and it means to fly. Hmm. Very interesting. One of the original names of the netter meant to fly. Very, very interesting. Here we go, everybody. Welcome to the Tutti Pa class. We are about to break it down and get into this step by step with a lot of patience. Each means to fly, but what else does it mean? Hmm. Everybody get a look at this. Beings, men, women. What? One of the original names for netter means to fly, and it also just means men and women, beings. No, it's supposed to mean principles. Okay, so <laughs> beings, men and women. Very interesting. So beings, interesting. Let's go into the writings now. Let's go into the writings now, everybody. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. Here is how we break down information. We got Paut which has the same symbol of the wing of Heru Behutet. One means to spread out wings. The other is the original name, an uh, old name for the netter, and it means to, to fly, and it also means beings, men and women. Okay, here we go. Here we go, everybody. Let's see how this all ties in together, and how does this make sense? Okay, we're back to the temple. Look how beautiful this is, the beautiful temple. And this temple has the story of Heru Behutet, which I have the translation. You can get this translation in Legends of the Gods. Legends of the Gods, which has the legend of Heru Behutet. The winged disc. Very interesting terms. The winged disc. So, in the 360th year of Ra Herukuti. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ra is a principle. Wait a minute. The netters are principal, so we can't have a 330 year. Can somebody explain this to me? How does a principal have 300, 360 year? In the 360 year of Raherakuti, who lives forever and forever, his majesty, and you see Raherakuti's name is in the Shen? That's what they put king's names in? Ask any of your comedic priests, uh, what happens in the 360 year? And 360 year from what? Uh oh. Uh oh, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hold on. The principal started at year zero, and now we're at the three hundred and sixty year. Is this is this after Narmer? Who? <laughs> wait a minute. When did Comet begin? And what is this three hundred and sixty sixty third year? Three hundred and sixty third year of what beginning, everybody? What beginning? Could it have been the the, the Zeptepi? The time of the Zeptepi, did the Netzer have their own calendar? Is this a calendar for principles? And the principles calendar starts at year one. And now this is the 363rd year of the principle of Ra. Somebody explain it. Okay, so we're in the 363rd year. And we all know that years in Kemet are not symbolic. They're not spiritual. They're the ones that invented the calendar. They're talking about actual years. So from year one, the 360th year of Ra Herakuti. Is this the sun? Principal teachers, Ra is the sun, right? Isn't the sun like 4.6 billion years old? So after the sun was created, boom, the big, the, the explosion that created the sun. And after the 360th year of 4.5 billion years ago, then this story happens, right? <laughs> Oh, Matt, Kemet kills these people all the time. But here we are in the 363rd year of the sun, right? <laughs> of Ra Herakuti, who lives forever and ever. His majesty was Ta Kens and his soldiers. This is the sun soldiers, right? So the sun soldiers were with him. The enemy did not, uh, did not conspire. Oh, 
against their Lord and the land is called Aoteth unto this day. I wonder what day that is. Okay. And Ra set out on an expedition on his boat, and his followers were with him, and he arrived at Utez Heru, which lay to the west part of the Nome and the east of the canal of Pachinu, which is called, and there's damage here to this day. And Heru Bahutet, here's Heru Bahutet, Heru Bahutet was in the boat of Ra, and he said unto his father, Ra Herakuti, I see the enemies are conspiring against their Lord. Let thy fury serpent gain the mastery over them. Then the majesty of Ra Herakuti said unto the divine Ka Herubahutet, O son of Ra, thou exalted one, who didst proceed from me, overthrow thou enemies who are before thee straight away. And Herubahutet, uh oh. He flew up into the horizon. What? The principal flew up. <laughs> where did he fly from, though? Where did he fly from? I'm, I'm confused. Where, where, where is he flying from? He flew up, right? So he's going in a direction. This is, the, this is the principle of the heart of your will, flying up. Okay, so Heru Behutet flew up into the horizon in the form of a great winged disc, which... Reason is called great God, Lord of. So Heru goes up into the air. He's flying up into the air, taking on Heru Bahutet. This is a picture from my actual book with my notes in it right here. And I want to show you all. This is the continuing. So heaven to this day. What does it say here? Let's take a look, everybody. Let's take a look at the story. And when he saw the enemies in the heights of the heaven, Enemies were in the heights of the heaven. He set out to follow after them. Could you all picture this for me, please? So there's a conversation with Heru and Ra in the 363rd year. And then Heru said, there's people that are, there's people that are trying to war against you. Heru now flies up to heaven. And what he's flying in looks like a, a disc. And the Bahuta part means that it's flying. And he's following the enemies in, have, in the heavens. Set out to follow after them in the form of a great winged disc. And he attacked with such terrific force those who opposed him that they could neither see with their eyes nor hear with their ears. And each one of them slew his fellow. Let's stop right here. What does this sound like to everybody? So we got two people on the ground, whichever ground that was. One who's the son says, listen, we have to do something about these people that are trying to war against you. He flies upwards to the heavens to follow the enemies. That means that these, <laughs> where were the enemies at? Where were they? Where were they? Were the enemy's principles too? Because they were somewhere where he had to fly upwards. And when he attacked them, there was so much disruption of noise and something that's blocking sight, maybe explosions, so much war sounds, so much, so much chaos going on in the skies that the people, the beings he was fighting against couldn't see to the point where they started shooting their own fellow. They started destroying their own fellow. They started slaying their own fellow people because they couldn't see. In a moment of time, there was not a single creature left alive. What's going on here, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the 2 t Pod class. This is why your comedic teachers will never, ever, ever, ever Read this story because they cannot break it down for you sentence by sentence. They can't not say, well, see, the enemies are the enemies of your lower self. And when you fly up into the sky, that means you're going into a higher vibration. And there's so much confusion going on when you're fighting the enemies that the inner self cannot hear and cannot see. So 
there's none of those creatures are left alive in your body. And this is all happens on the 363rd year of your chakra. You see, they can't do that. That is why they leave comedic stories alone. Let me tell you, your favorite comedic priests and teachers are ashamed of the comedic stories. They are ashamed and they will not touch them. That's why you never see them. You see them with the Hey Rube Hutet symbols on, but you'll never see them read the story. Welcome to the Tutsi Pa class. So here we go. So much explosions and dust and whatnot going on in the sky that, it, that they can't see each other, they can't hear each other, and then they're all killed. Not a single creature. Then Hey Rube Hutet, he's in this disc and it's shining. Shining, many colors came in the form of the great winged disc to the board of Ra Herakuti. And Tahuti said unto Ra, Lord of the gods, Lord of the Netter, Herubahutet has returned in the form of the great winged disc. Shining, many colors, and then there's this, and then it's damaged there, and then it says children. For this reason, he is called Heru Bahutet. This is what this is the reason why Heru got the name the Winged Disc because of this fight. Comedic teachers will never tell you how the story. How did the Winged Disc come about? It was because of a fight. They will not take you to this fight, though. But this whole fight is the reason how he got his name to this day. Tahuti said the city Teb shall be called the city of Heru Bahutet. Thus it is called unto this day. And Ra embraced his damage there and said unto Heru Bahutet, Thou didst put grapes into the water which cometh from it, and thy heart rejoiced. And for this reason the water canal of Heru Bahutet is called grape water. And it goes on. The story goes on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Lying under the... <laughs> Heru Bahutet said, Advance, O Ra, and look uh, thou upon the enemies who are laying under thee on this land. Now the enemies are on the land, laying down. Remember? The, the fight started in the heaven. The fight started and Heru flew up into the heavens in a disc, went up and started chasing them, destroying them, and now they're all dead and now they're laying on the ground. Upon the majesty of Ra set out on the way, and the goddess Ashtaroth, uh oh, <laughs> was with him. Hey, comedic teachers. Hey, conscious people. Principal people. Here we go. Ashtaroth was with him, and he saw the enemies overthrown on the ground. What is the significance here of talking about this fight? The enemies start, they're going to say, well, the heaven is the higher planes. Well, if the heavens is the higher planes, how come the enemy started there first? The enemy started in the heavens first. Heru's having a conversation with Ra on the ground, and then he flies up into where the enemies are, destroys them, and they fall down to the ground. So did the enemy start on the higher plane, and the Heru inner self, your inner heart, it went to the higher plane to fight the enemies and shot them back, put them back down on the ground with Ashtaroth, right? Okay. One of them being fettered. Okay, so here it is. Anyways, we're going to stop right there. And we're going to, let's, ha, so much has happened here. So much has happened here. Let's break it down. Welcome to the Tutsi Pa class. Here we go. Hey, Ru saw the enemies, enemies in the heights of the sky. He followed them. But in order to get to the sky, he was associated with a disc that could fly. Everyone write in the chat, what is the shape of the sun? A ball or a disc? Let me look in the chat here. What is the shape of the sun, the sun that's in the sky? Because remember, they say that Heru, the winged, uh, the symbol is the winged sun. That's what they say. They say it's the winged sun. So is the sun a disc or a ball? Is the sun a disc or a ball? Let's see. So these must be the original flat, flat sunners, right? So we got flat earthers. So <laughs> I guess the Kometians were the original flat sunners. So if this was actually talking about a disc, uh, sorry, a sun, there's a, the sun is a ball. The sun is a ball, 360 degrees in all directions. A disc is one dimension, is a disc you can flip around like a pizza. 
like how the flat earthers say the earth is. So I guess the Kemetians, they were the original flat sunners. <laughs> All right, so it's a disc. Everybody calls this the wing disc. Not the ball, not the globe, but they call this a winged disc. Okay, so here's the winged disc. All right, so associated with the disc. Now, the attack was so powerful and loud, it created debris that the enemy couldn't see or hear. What color is the sun? I'm going to see everybody watch this now. I love, here we go with the, two, with the questions. Everybody in the chat, please tell me what color is the sun when you look at it? The last time you looked at the sun, what color was it? I'm going to give everybody about a minute to type in the room. What color is the sun when you look at it? You can put um, the different times of the day. Like you can say, well, when you look at it in the evening, it's kind of reddish because uh, it's setting. When you look at it in the morning, it's kind of bright yellow. Um, in the afternoon, bright, bright yellow. What color is the sun? Everybody type in the room, what color is the sun? I'm going to give everybody a minute and watch how I break the spell. Here we go. Okay, what color is the sun? Everybody put, oh, yeah, here we go. Nice one. We got, we got white. Hey, shout out to, uh, shout out to Cannabis Bob Bev. Okay, good. Here we go. What color is the sun? The sun is black, because you remember my class. <laughs> okay. The sun is black, white. This is good. This is good. This is good. We got uh we got white. We got yellow. I agree. Okay, I agree. We got white. Okay, good. Sometimes it does look orange. Um yellow, yep, yellow. The rays the rays are yellow. Okay, good. So we basically all agree the sun is either white, yellow. Or in the uh, setting time, it's it's uh, orange, right? It goes kind of orange, orangish, right? Blinding red. We got blinding red. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, good, good, good. We got a. Uh... Okay, good. We basically all agree the same colors. It is either white, yellow, or orange, right? The black part is what you can't see. That's from my class. But when we look at the sun, we see. We see white, yellow, and orange. Good. Let's keep that in mind, everybody. You all have committed to the answer. So here we go. Let me break the spell for you. Here we are. All right. Boom. Notice no one said multi, <laughs> multiple colors. Why? Because the sun is not changing into multiple colors as you're looking at it see as we stare at it so when we look at the sun we don't we don't we don't see the sun with our eyes that's why nobody put uh white and yellow and red and everybody put a one a color right let me look back in the chat everybody put a color nobody looks at the sun and says hey look it's white it's orange it's it's, it's changing multiple colors as we're looking at it. it's white and changing colors it changes it appears to change colors for hours of the day that means for like three hours it's like bright white in the evening time maybe for another three hours it's an orange in the morning time so as you're looking at it it's not changing colors in front of you right it's one color that's why everybody let me click on the answers again white one color yellow one color you see everybody's blinding red one color. Nobody ever puts uh, red, blue, orange, gray, because you definitely don't see that. Nobody has looked at the sun and seen multiple colors. Sun, right? Yellow. That's what you. everybody sees that. White. See? So everybody puts one color. That's what everybody put. Boom. Okay, here we go. All right. So now, and then somebody put rainbow of colors now after I said that. But before, when I asked the question, when I asked everybody to put what color is this? What color? Nobody put rainbow of colors. Multiple red, blue, green. Nope. Everybody put one answer. Because when you look at the sun, everybody knows you see one color at a time. Let's go back, everybody. So let's go back to the story now. Let's go back. We stare at it. But the disc that is flying in this battle 
the disc that is flying in the sky, chasing the enemies, is giving off multiple colors. And after this war, is not one creature left alive. So remember everybody, when we read the story, the disc as, as the story is happening is giving off multiple colors. Look at this, the wing disc shining with many colors. You see that everybody? Welcome to the PA class. So this could not be talking about the sun for all those people out there that are saying, yeah, the uh, it's the sun, the sun. So first of all, the sun is not a disc. It's not a disc. And this, nobody looks at the sun and says, hey, man, at 12 o'clock when I was looking at the sun, man, it was blue, green, orange, red, violet. Yeah, I saw multiple colors of the sun. Nope. This thing was giving off multiple colors as it was shining. That is what the story says. Giving off many, many different colors as it was flying through the sky. We know when we look at the sun, the sun is not flying through the sky chasing anything. But this thing, this in the shape of the disc, is flying, chasing, and it's giving off multiple colors. Okay. So I noticed no one in the room said multiple colors. Simple. Everybody knows that. Nobody says the sun is multiple colors when, I, when they look at it. That's why I got everybody to commit to type it. So now... Let's go. Let's continue, everybody. Welcome to the Tuti Pa class. We have established this is definitely not the sun. Definitely not the sun giving off multiple colors, flying through the sky, killing enemies. And remember, the fight started in the sky. Look where the enemies ended up. So in the story, the fight started in the sky. But look where the enemies ended up. Let's go back and see. This is the story of the winged disc, legend of Heru Behutet, what they call the winged disc. Then the god Tehuti spoke after he had looked upon the enemies laying upon the ground. Everybody see that? So when the story started, when the story started, it said the enemies were in the sky. Heru flew up towards them, upwards towards the heavens, started chasing them, it says following them, and then when they were killed, they looked upon the enemies, and now the enemies are laying on the ground, because of course, if you have a fight in the sky, or a war in the sky, just like any plane, and you shoot it, what's going to happen? It's going to come falling down to the ground, it cannot fly anymore, because those who are controlling it are dead, just like it said, all the creatures are dead. Did you all see the Anunnaki in the story who helped? She wasn't one of the enemies. As the enemies fell from the sky to the ground, not just any Anunnaki, but the one clearly written about also flying in the skies. What is she doing in, the comedic, in, the, in their comedic stories? Conscious teachers, what is she doing in this comedic story? What is she doing? Here it is right here. Hey, Rupa Hutet said, advance, O Ra, look upon thine enemies who are laying under on this land. Thereupon the majesty of Ra set out on the way, and the goddess Ashtaroth was with him. Hmm. The comedic pre uh, teachers, what principle is Ashtaroth? How come you guys never teach about the principle of Ashtaroth? You talk about the Natiru, and Heru represents the inner will. Set is the lower self. Okay, so who is Ashtaroth? Which which principle is Ashtaroth? Because that's not even a Netiru. That's one of the Anunnaki. The right, the comedic writers or the writers who are writing this believe in the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki is here mentioned by name. Ashtaroth was with him during the fight. What is Ashtaroth doing with Heru in a fight against the enemies? Is that a principle? The principle of Ashtaroth. So the enemies are overthrown on the ground. Hey, Ru's alive, Ra's alive, and so is Ashtaroth. She's with him, looking at the enemies on the ground. Very interesting. So, in the hymn, Inanna Ishtar, the most popular female Anunnaki in her journeys to the heaven, her move vehicle in which the gods roam the skies. Here it is right here. So here is the, the tablet, which is the Lady of Heaven. She puts the garment of heaven on. If you all remember, I read this uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago in the pod class. This is Ashtaroth. This is the story of Ashtaroth, Inanna. She puts on the garments of heaven. She violently ascends towards the heaven. So here is Ashtaroth ascending towards the heaven. 
we have Heiru over here ascending towards the heaven. And she's over all the people's land. She flies inside her Mu. Heiru looks like he's in the form of a winged disc. All, why do these things need other things to fly? So Ashtaroth is inside of a Mu. Heiru, when he flies, is associated with a disc. This sounds very familiar. In the heights of the heaven, over all the resting places. Look how she's dressed in her garments of the heavens. So here's what Ishtaroth has on. There's Ashtaroth. It looks like a space suit to me or something very strange. I don't know what culture matches this. If this is a ritual, but this looks just like goggles and a space suit. But she puts on her garments of the skies and she flies towards the heavens. Hey, Ru is in a winged disc or in the form of a winged disc and he's flying towards the heavens. How do people explain this? This is why the conscious people will not talk about this because they literally will have to make up the answer on the spot. They do not have a predetermined explanation of this story. So if you ask them Monday, they're going to say one thing. And if you ask them Friday, they're going to say something else because it's not in any of their writing. They're ashamed of these stories. Here we go. All right. Yes. In the culture of the Sugagi, the Assyrians, Sumerians, it was all about beings that could roam the skies. In actuality, that winged flying disc was a common representation of them. Let me show you. So that winged disc that people may try to tell you is a principle of the rising chakra or whatever they say, this was not a symbol that was limited to Kemet. This is a symbol that is even predating the Ramesses symbol. Let's take a look, everybody. Uh-oh, what's this? <laughs> Zora star. Everybody get a good look, everybody. Look at the exact wings. Look at the circle in the middle, except for this one has a man inside flying. He's inside of the disc flying, and it has legs, like landing legs. But here is a man inside flying. Here is Shamash. Uh-oh, same thing. And Shamash predates the Ramesses Temple. It predates the Ramesses Temple. So here's Shamash, the god of the Sugagi, and the same winged disc. And the, and the Anunnaki stories are clear stories of beings flying around, as we just read in the tablets of Inanna Ashtaroth. Here is all the images together. I put them together for you. Get a look. Here is Herubahutet from the Edfu Temple. Get a good look. Notice the shape of the wings with the flat top and the rounded at the bottom. Notice the shape of the wings with the flat top and the rounded at the bottom. Notice the circle in the middle. Notice the circle in the middle. And this one is the Anunnaki Shamash, meaning sun, from where the Bible actually gets the word sun from. In Psalms 81.11, the Bible actually stole the name of the god Shamash, this god right here, the god of the sun and actually called their god Shamash. Look at this. This is Ki Shamash Uman, and this is the sun shield Yahweh. Yahweh is the sun and the shield, and the word there is Shamash. It literally says Yahweh is Shamash. <laughs> what is the Hebrew Bible doing saying Yahweh is Shamash? This is Shamash. This existed thousands and thousands of years before anybody called himself a Hebrew. And over here, the Hebrew Bible in Psalms um, 8411 says, Yahweh is Shamash. Mm -mm -mm. All right, everybody. So here we go. The Lady of Heaven puts on her garments of heaven. She valiantly ascends towards the heaven. Over all the people's land, she flies in her moo, Lady in her moo. To the heights of heaven, joyful wings over all the resting places. That is Ashtaroth. And here we is here we are on the legend of Herubahutet. Herubahutet said, Advance, O, o Ra, and look upon thine enemies who are laying, who are laying under thee on this land. Thereupon the majesty of Ra set out on the way, and the goddess Ashtaroth was with him, and he saw the enemies overthrown on the ground. Ashtaroth is there with Ra and Heru. Both beings that are associated with flight and, of course, the Anunnaki, all throughout the Anunnaki story and the Igigi, associated with flight. Woo! Boom. There we go. Of course, I could stop right there, but no. 
E Manifesto is a great donator. I'm going to drop one last little thing, not even little, but let me drop this and take it as you may. Here we go. Welcome to the Tootsie Pod class. We are breaking it down. Here is another image of a winged disc, but this wing is Kepara, the evolution winged, but this has the sun in the middle, clearly distinguished as red. And here's another winged symbol. Kepara with the wings. You'll notice these wings are a little different. If you notice, they're circular, whereas the Heiru ones were flat. In the middle is not the disc here, but it's actually Kepara. But I'm just showing you some other winged um, symbols here. So I want to show you something very interesting. So this is a very obvious comedic symbol of Kepara. And over here, what do we have? We have a crop circle that was discovered, and this is in the East Field, Alton Prairies. Wiltshire in August, and it is the Kepara symbol. For anyone who'd like to know about crop circles and their validity, you can send in a question on that. Um, the, the majority of the crop circles I talk about are extremely real and proven, factually proven, to be unhumanly made, of, as of course there are people that can make crop circles, but the ones I discuss are not humanly made. If anyone wants to take me up on that or question, send it in. No problemo. But here is a crop circle in the shape of the winged Kepara. Very interesting. These crop circles have not been able to be explained, only the man made ones, which are actually easily explained upon arrival. Upon arrival of a man made crop circle, you, you need not to do much of any investigation to tell if they are man made. It is actually extremely easy, and you can actually tell they're man made as soon as you. Um, walk up. Uh, we can get into that in another class. But, but here is Heru. Here is uh, the Kepara symbol. Very, very interesting. And then over here, we have another interesting crop circle and boom in the shape of the winged disc of Heru Behutet. Very, very interesting indeed that we have crop circles that are in the shape of these ancient symbols. Okay, let's continue. Of course, this is a uh, King Tut Amun Scarab Beetle, and then this is the crop circle in 2005. All right, everybody, let's continue because now it's about to get um, very, very interesting. And here we go. So whether whether people want to argue if crop circles are intelligently designed by unearthly intelligence or not, I will show you an image. I have captured myself, which could never have been made on Earth. I have the live footage, screenshotted it for you, something interesting flying around the sun. <laughs> Again, whether people want to argue if crop circles are intelligent designed by unearthly intelligence or not, I will show you an image. I, me, me, Tahuti, I have captured myself, which could never have been made on earth. I, me, Tahuti, speaking to you. I have the live footage, screenshotted it for you, something interesting flying around the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look. We're going to go to the stereo. What is the stereo? Uh, this right here. So this is the view of the sun, heliosphere, and you can go to live footage and click on uh, minute by minute or second by second, and you can actually see the sun all throughout the day. You can see um, uh, debris that flies by it. You can see the lava coming out of it. It's live footage. I used to watch this all the time. Very, very interesting to watch. And then... I found out about this and went and looked. <laughs> and here is the stereo image, solar flare. And this is one here. And there it is. So the sun, when you look at it through this, uh, through this, you see this right here. It looks kind of like this. Everybody's seen this before. And, uh, you see little, you see all type of debris and stuff flying around, lava, all type of things coming out of it. 
but something extremely interesting that I screenshotted. So this is a 2017-08-16. 2017-08-16. And I saw this, everybody. Here it is, screenshot right here, right from the live. And this right here is a very, very interesting image. It looks like a bird. It looks like something with wings on the side, a circle in the middle. If anybody have ever seen a lava ball that looks like this, if you've ever seen um, uh, a comet, a meteor, an asteroid that looks like this, please let me know and send me a picture of it. By the way, the size of this thing is massive, if you truly understand the size of the sun. And I have the video footage of this thing fly, moving around. I'm only showing you the screenshot, but I have the video footage of this moving around the sun, and it never changes this form. It never changes into a lava. It never breaks up. It never. It stays in this form all the time. Take it as you may, but this is an image that I've captured, and here again it is. And it's clear and clear. I have the video footage, and it is a clear circle with two uh, what appears to be wings, and it's just flying around. I have this and many other images. I actually showed this on my first time I went on the Killer Priest podcast. Had different skeptics. Interesting thing about a skeptic is that they can never say what it is. It's easy to doubt any. You can doubt anything. Doubting takes no research. But now I need the explanation of what is this? What is this thing flying around the sun? Is this a hoax? Is this made by man? What is this thing flying around the sun? So boom, that is my answer. Thank you, E Manifesto, for that great question. Hey Ruba Hutet is the sun is the winged disc that was a part of a great fight that was taking place in the 363rd year of the Zeptepi when beings were trying to fight against Ra in the skies. And Hey Ruba Hutet had to fly up into the sky in the form of a wing disc and was up there and shot them or blew, destroyed them down to the ground. And one of the Anunnaki were there. No one has touched this story. No one is talking about this because as soon as you start talking about this, you have to answer multiplicity of questions. The Hey Ruba Hutet symbol is not unique to Kemet, it represents several flying. Anunnaki and other other beings from other cultures and this thing here has yet to be explained by anything this this flying object with the with two wings on the side that is humongous no one knows what it is but it's not being burnt up by the sun which is extremely interesting it is flying near the sun all around it in my footage and it's not being burnt up by the sun and it's not coming out of the sun or going in it. It's just flying around the sun in my footage. But boom, that is my answer, good brother. Thank you for asking such an interesting question, my good brother E. Manifesto. Take the information as you may, however you may. And that is my answer to you. I hope you appreciated it. Boom, that is my answer. Welcome, everybody, to the Tahuti Pod class. I'm glad everybody enjoys appreciates the you know this cannabis pause answer is still up here uh <laughs> let me take it down uh, appreciates the information um e manifesto i hope with that breakdown you have much more information than you did uh 25 minutes ago take the information go and research it and ask yourself the questions that i asked in the pod class and see if the comedic teachers can break down this story. There we go, everybody. Boom. Let me go ahead and close this out so I can see you all on the screen. Let me go ahead and go to the chat and see if everybody heard the question, the answer. And let me go ahead and see what is going on here. Is, is the brother that even asked the question in the room? Let me see. Let me check it out. We got Sanetti saying, oh, Sanetti's back. Welcome back, Sanetti Amun. Says beautiful. Um, and let me go ahead and see where E Manifesto is. Where is E Manifesto? And actually, that's his wife. 
Uh, let me go ahead and see. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Oh, E Manifesto said, Where can I find this story, please? Um, it's on page 103 of Legends of the Gods, the story of Heru Behutet. You can get the translation, um, the most e the easiest one that has actually the Meru Netter beside it, where you can compare the words, is uh, Wallace E. Budge's Legend of the Gods. And around page 103 is the story of Heru Behutet. I actually brought the book to the Killer Priest podcast one day. People were thanking me because they never seen such a, a book or a story. Okay, here we go, everybody. Um, boom. The principle of Ashtaroth. <laughs> the principle of Ashtaroth. <laughs> right. Okay, we got a Star Wars, the original by uh, Cannabis Spa. Ooh, and... Uh, he manifests and said, thanks, I should have been had this book. See? See how we're in Kemet for so long, but the Kemetic teachers aren't telling you about this book? You, on the other channels, which I won't mention because I don't want to seem like I'm talking about anybody particularly, but on the other channels, why is this book never quoted? Why are the stories never quoted? How can you be... The Hebrew Israelites kill the Kemetic brothers, and I'll say that, I'll say that to every Kemetic brothers. Hebrew Israelites and Christians destroy you all. Because if you meet a Hebrew Israelite, he knows what's in the book of Isaiah. He knows what's in the book of Jeremiah. He knows what's in Genesis. He knows what's in Exodus. He knows what's in the book of Revelation. So you can quote it. Walk up to the comedic brothers that you see on the other channels and just ask them to quote any comedic writing story. It's a shame. They'll tell you all about the esoteric within. You got to go up in the nostrils and the nose and go back down and come to the left come to the right, and he rules the heart, all this, they do not quote anything that any scribe taught about the stories because they are ashamed of the stories. I'll tell you firsthand, I know the comedic teachers, I know them, I went to their house, they are ashamed of it because as soon as they start talking about the stories, everybody's going to question them like they question Tahuti. I'm just here, I'm here for it, so I don't, I love it, I love it, bring it on. But if you take this step, into the stories, you'll be questioned just like the Hebrew Israelites. I remember Sonetter one time asked me, he said, yeah, um, Tehuti, if you believe that the Natura were real, isn't that just like how the Christians say that Jesus was real? <laughs> the, 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 they don't want to be put in that position. I'm here ready to defend it. All right, everybody, boom. Glad you all um, appreciate that answer. I don't, I, the manifesto. Woo. Okay. Here we go, everybody. Okay, I see Humble. Okay, here we go. Here's somebody who liked the answer. We got another splendid breakdown. Your pod classes are getting down. Your po Sorry, another. Let me blow this up. It's hard to read this small thing. Okay. Another splendid breakdown. Your pod classes are going down in history. Thank you, Humble LLC. Glad you appreciate it. Daniel said, Mur put the book in the room. There's the link. To the book, boom, and there's support. Boom. Thank you, Humble LLC. Oh, RPM like the answer. He said, good breakdown. Shannon said, amazing, 103. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Okay, stereo website bookmarked. <laughs> stereo website bookmark. Wonderful. Okay, wonderful, everybody. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um I'm going to take another small break. I'm going to put the brothers in the room again, and I'm going to um, I am going to uh, let me see what the next what question is here. And uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do right now before I take a little break? I'm going to put the link in the room for the brothers to jump back in. But I'm going to give a shout out right now to some of the um, oh, cannabis boss says, good answer, Saba. More questions? Yes, send them in. Thank you. Bev, send them, in, send them in. So here's the link to the room for the brothers to get ready to jump in again. And I'm going to go ahead and give some shout outs to people that sent donations and questions in oh, today. And I want to acknowledge them. There's actually a lot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, it's quite a little bit. Um, oh, boy. There's a. Ooh, whoa, we're going down. Here we go. Here we go. 
Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. September 26th. Oh, that's from Men or Mondays. Okay, we got um Octavius Sly. Oh, he sent one um before the pod class. Let me get let me see this here. So Jamiro Walker, that's Men Under Class. Lamar, Black on the Card. Okay, so the next one is Oct shout out to Octavius Sly. Let me go ahead and put him in the room here. Here we go, Octavius Sly. One click there. And then I'm going to shout out Octavius Sly for his donation, which he put in um, $10. Let me go ahead and do a screen share. Shout out to Octavius Sly. Um, let me go ahead and screen share this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Octavius, where are you? There we go. Shout out to Octavius Sly. Thank you, brother. He says, what do you know about Sabau fiends? Okay. Great. Great question. Let me, let me see where, where, where his uh, question went. What, where? Oh, there it is. Boom. I'm going to put this here. Okay, good. Sabau fiends. Um, let me rename this. Shout out to Octavius Sly. Okay, shout out to Octavius Sly. We'll get to that question. I do these in order, but shout out to Octavius Sly. And the next one in for the donation is um is uh oh Super Magul. What did he say? Is Tahoot wait? Cat oh shout out to Oh, he said he was gonna ask this. Nice, nice. Yeah, in the in the uh In the Metronetter class, um, he said he was going to ask this question. Let me go ahead and put it in the screen here. Shout out to AJ Super Mogul. And go ahead and put that right here. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Put that right here. <clears throat> Rename. I like AJ Super Magul, formerly known as. I like his. Um, I like his technique of asking questions. He actually just listens to me say something, and then he repeats. He sends what I say to him in a um, in a cash app. It's my own words that I say, and then he he sends it. <laughs> he sends it to me. Let me put this in. He actually sent me this one in a in the email. So it's not on the cash app, but I, I know what the I got the question. Let me go ahead and put this on the screen for everybody. AJ Super Magul with the wonderful donation. I'll put it on the screen here. We'll take off um uh AJ Super Magul. Shout out to Boom. Is it on the screen yet? Shout out to AJ Sumagul. Appreciate you, my brother, for the support. AJ Sumagul. Shout out to AJ Sumagul. He's probably sleeping. Um, he's probably sleeping right now. <laughs> I don't know if he's even in the room. Is he in the room? Okay, shout out to you, my brother. Awesome, appreciate the support. You are fabuloso. Fabulous. Thank you, my brother. F A B O L O. Thank you. All right, I'm going to take that off the screen. And um, I'm going to do one more and then we're taking a break. Oh, we got the monsters here. Wait a minute. Who's this? Ah. Uh, uh. Oh, shout out to the book buyers. We got some book buyers. Book buyers, book buyers. We got book buyers who bought books from the um, from the website. Shout out to the book buyers. I'm just going to shout you out, Sugar Candy. I'm not going to put you up on the screen because um, 
you don't even know this is going on right now. So, so uh, the book buyers who buy things from the website, I'm just going to shout you out. Shout out to Sugar Candy, who bought purchase a book September 29th. Shout out to Sugar Candy. Appreciate you. And shout out to the next book buyer who bought a book off the website. Shout out to SGC Reveza. You know who you are. SGC Reveza, who bought, um, it looks like uh, one book. Uh, bought. Um, this would have been stepping out of the matrix. Shout out who also bought a book on the 29th. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Wonderful. And here's the next donation. This is from Jonathan Hacker. Uh, what is this? This is a. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. 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 Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay. Shout out to Jonathan Hacker who sent. Um, a dollar forty eight. Let me put this on the screen. Like I said, everybody's uh everybody's donation goes up, and I appreciate it all from the 273 to the the uh, dollar. What is this? I can't see it. Dollar forty eight. Shout out to Jonathan Hacker. He says for the wisdom. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, now I'm gonna stop this. And uh, we'll go to Bella, beautiful Bella, beautiful Bella, who said, Reciprocity for the Ancestors, beautiful teachings. All right. It's not a question, it's just some support, which I appreciate. So let me go ahead and put this on the screen. And it is boom, boom. And shout out to Bella, who put, um, who says, Reciprocity for the ancestors' beautiful teachings. Reciprocity for the ancestors' beautiful teachings. Thank you, Bella. You are all great. And you are serious and loyal and dedicated. You communicate with me outside of the pod class, and you are very serious about making um, making this your way of life. Okay, wonderful. We'll close that. Where are all the brothers ready? Because I'm about to jump off here. I put the link in the room, right? I only see scribe. Okay, um, inbox. Duffy. D woo, woo, Duffy. Needle Campbell. Owen Heithy. Wow. Here we go. Look at the Duffy's another giant. I think she's the only female giant in the pod class. The female giant of like the huge, the large, large, um, huge supporters. Her last couple of classes was like a hundred dollars. I think one was fifty. This one here. Let's go ahead and see what this is. Oh, one of the questions that a brother, um, I think it was Desmond, somebody actually mentioned uh, in the class when I was teaching. She she sent it in as a question. Let me go ahead and rename this and. Uh, up on the screen next week too okay shout out to duffy 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 who uh let me see if this goes in here oh there we go beautiful perfect okay shout out to duffy oh, there's a hottie wonderful shout out to duffy who uh let me screen share this where'd it go uh oh Okay, screen share, screen share. Shout out to Duffy with the huge donation, huge support. She is a giant. She she doesn't she only gives um, large support. She's very very appreciative of me. She's very very appreciative of me. She sends me messages to let me understand her appreciation. And um, she will not send me any small donation. She just, I mean, she just sent 100 I think, last week or the week before. Shout out to Duffy, $44. And it says, I'm going to read the question for everybody. It says, the Pope's crown and why they, be oh, oh, this is about why they believe in, in Dagon. Ooh, we. Oh, we, oh, we. Nice question. Nice question. Ooh, very good question. 
Very, very good question. Let me go ahead and get this off the screen. There. Okay. Boom. Thank you, Duffy, for that awesome question. It, it was um, the Pope's crown. The, for the Pope's crown, and why do they believe in the God? Oh, man, Duffy. Ooh, we I can't give that today, but I could I could answer it right now. But it would it would bump you in front of everybody. But I'm ready. To, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna save it for when I can. It'll probably be the beginning of next week. Okay, here we go. Um, shout out to you, Duffy. Always supporting. Arcad Infinite's in the house. Um, shout out to you. Shout out to you. Um. Okay, let me take this off the screen, <clears throat> and um, boom, boom, boom. Nito Campbell, last one I'll do for right now, and then Owen Heifey. Oh, there's a list. Oh, oh, to who, Timos? What in the world? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, man, this you you all are awesome. Thank you for appreciating me like this. Shout out to Nito Campbell, who just um, is, he always sends um, donations in sets of nine. So he usually sends um, 18 or 27. I guess I've gone up in rank, <laughs> gone up in a appreciation, because every week is 18, 27, 18, 27, 18, 27, 18, 27. But this time, I guess he did the nine, nine by four. And shout out to Nito Campbell. He is, we don't know who he is. We don't know who Nito Campbell is. He is one of the giants, a dedicated supporter. I don't see the name Nito Campbell in the room. I have no idea who he is. He's watching. He's in there. And shout out to you, whoever you are, Nito Campbell. We truly appreciate the teachings and every single week. He does this before the class starts, too. So he sends this before the class class starts. $36, whoever you are, Nito Campbell, shout out to you. Shout out to you, Nito Campbell. Okay, appreciate you. All right. And on that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to the brothers. Um, you know, actually, let me, let me do uh, let me do Owen Heithy. Owen Heithy is the best, man. He's... Owen Heithy is awesome. Let me go back to the room. Owen Heithy, where are you? Owen Heithy, by the way, in the room is um is Ascari. He is one of the giants. At one time, he had sent in the biggest the biggest donation ever. He sent it in in parts bits of two. It was like one forty three, and then like twenty seven, something like that. Um, and then um he's the reason why Tahutimos sent in his large donation. By combining Owen Heifey's donation with, I think, the scribe and ended up with some massive donation. But Owen Heifey set it off. Owen Heifey is so appreciative of, of uh, the knowledge of me. And uh, he will not let any pod class go without him sending in giant support because he feels that it is worth it. He's actually um, angry at people who don't support not angry, but he's not having it. He's not um, he's not playing around because he knows that all of us, especially you know, so-called black people, spend our money on every frivolous thing on the universe. Every, everything. Walk into somebody's house and just look at all the stuff that we spend spend money on. Toys for Christmas. How much? I think blacks spend four point six billion dollars every Christmas. I believe that was a calculation I gave. Just the black community spends four point six billion dollars every Christmas on children eight to twelve. Not not on Christmas completely, not not on Christmas, but just on children from eight to twelve. They spend four point six uh, billion. Some craziness. But shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to Owen Heithy, who is a scary. You are awesome, brother. I don't know if you're still in the room, if you're still up, but you are definitely, you are definitely, definitely well appreciated. Thank you. If you are in the room, thank you. Thank you so much. 
appreciate your support. You are awesome. On on that. Yes, Nightfire, that was all for white Jesus. <laughs> Santa travels the globe. <laughs> yes, Santa travels the globe. All right. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Shout out to Owen Heithy. That's my last. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop with the donations and and uh, do the rest of the donations when I come back after the next question. Uh, I'm gonna take a um, break here. Let the brothers uh let the brothers um take over and no I don't want to leave the site. Let the brothers take over. Um, oh here he is right here. This is um this is Owen Heithy. He says. We must support our scholars. You are the best. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Nightlife says, Saba exposing consumerism as finest. Yes. Okay, everybody. I'm going to step away for just a moment. The brothers are here. I was trying to wait for everybody else, but Tehutimos is probably, uh, I don't know if he's asleep. I'm not sure where he is, but it's maybe late where he is. And AJ Super Magul is definitely in his bed. Okay, so we're going to leave these brothers here to take over. I'll be back in the next few minutes. Everybody who's watching, do not leave. Do not. I don't want to see the numbers go from 89 to, to 72 just because I took a break. That happens every time. As soon as I step away, the numbers drop like 10. Unless you are taking your break. Maybe you're taking your break because I'm taking a break and you come back. But uh, don't leave. It's not over. I got something crazy, crazy question to break down. I don't know if I should go for nightlife's question about the meteors, but we're going to see. Okay, I'll be right back. Peace for now. I'll be right back. And shout out to Hati Ma'ad, the scribe, and Arcad Infinite. Peace. 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 Is that my mic? Peace and love, everybody. Peace and love. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Peace and love. Hotep, my eye to the chat, to the pod class. This is an excellent, excellent teaching tonight. It's beautiful. Definitely going to have to run it back a few times, like always. Um, I do want to, um, those in the chat, if you uh, post, post uh, what part of the planet that you're on, you know, post your location. You know, I'm, I'm curious. I want to see some things. Uh, you know, in the future, we're definitely going to be uh, organizing some some physical meetups. And, you know, we want to see where, where everybody is located. So if you can, you know, just post where you're at. <clears throat> just post the state. You don't, you don't got to put your address up there. Well, of course. Yeah, I definitely don't put your just address. Post, just post the state. <laughs> or your time zone if you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Go everybody go check out the website. It's an awesome. New Jersey. Website. Were you from Brick City E Manifesto? You from the Florida. Bricks? Got some people in Cali. All right. All over. Yeah, all over. So that's what's up. So Hello. yes, um, we definitely wanna invite you all to our study guide on Sunday. Uh, you know, we uh, we had an excellent class last Sunday. Uh, and we hope to see it continue to grow each week in numbers. Uh, see more of you all, you know, come join the panel and, you know, chop it up with us. Come discuss with us and, you know, um, let's learn together. Let's grow together. So, yes, yeah, Sunday, hope, hopefully we'll see, you know, more. We'll see the numbers grow each week. More and more of you are starting to come in and, and you know, reveal yourselves, you know, and, and help us uh, grow and, and organize what we're doing. You know, we have our uh, newsletter that we send out on Saturday. If you have not signed up for the newsletter on the website, go to the website, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you just put in your email address, and that'll sign you up for the newsletter. Uh, we, we put our donators on there every week. We, um, and we got some new stuff rolling out for our newsletter coming up within the next few weeks, uh, you know, because we're looking to grow the organization. So if you want to be a part of it, you know, that, that opportunity is manifesting itself so you know make sure you're subscribed to that newsletter so you can get all the information that you need to be able to come to come join us and you know be a part of the teachings of my art organization 
you know, so that's a wonderful thing. So make sure to do that if you haven't, you know, bookmark the website, you know, steady, steady more, check it, you know, because it's always being updated. And I don't know, um, I don't know who, who doesn't have the, the teachings yet in this class. Everyone should have the teachings. If you don't have the teachings, make sure you go there, purchase Tahuti's teachings. Please go purchase, go purchase the teachings if you have not done so. You know, this is, you know, this is the, this is just the, the first step. There's going to be many more coming. You know, I see, I see that, I see that uh, coming to fruition. So, you know, let, let's, uh, let's take advantage of what's been offered to us right now. And let's continue to keep, keep pushing, keep growing, keep learning, keep studying, expanding our attention span, you know, cause that's technology definitely shortens it. So, you know, let's, uh, you know, be patient, take our time and, and study so we can expand that, you know, take more knowledge in, you know, so yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, so yeah, definitely make sure y'all, y'all definitely sign up for that newsletter. Cause we're going to be putting out a lot of information, you know, and we're, and we're definitely looking to expand. So if you want to be a part of it, you know, just, just, you know, put your email address in, in on the, uh, that newsletter and, uh, you'll be receiving some information and, you know, uh, so that way you can get back to us and, you know, be a part of the organization and grow with us. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's the announcement that, that, that I have for you all. I appreciate you all. You know, the, I love seeing the consistency in the class. I love seeing the the positivity, the light, the cool being resonating in the chat room. I love it. I love each and every one of y'all. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's definitely a family in here. You know, so you know, uh, hotep my to you all. And uh, our cat infinite or a hot if you have anything to say, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, peace, brother. Peace for them beautiful words. I just want to, uh, I agree with that, brother. It's the, it's the beautiful energy that we have in this, um, in this class when we're learning, you know. And I just want to say, you know, invest in yourself. You see, I got the book right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you see it? Invest in yourself. Can you see the book? that Saba was talking about. Can you guys see it? My screen is small. Not really. It's fading out. Yeah. Fading out. But anyway, but this is the book that he was talking about of the story from Haru Bahutek. You know, invest in yourself and, and study, you know? You spend money on everything. Uh, that knowledge is out there and we need to start learning and reading, buying books and, you know, stop wasting our money like the Saba said. Yes, that one right there. Yes, that's the book I was trying to show. <laughs> you manifesto this is what yes. it's going to look like. And over time, it's going it's to have all types of lines and the manifesto is going to be up here teaching. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, come join us and join us for Metal Metal Mondays too. I'm learning so much, I'm learning the the glyphs, the uh, the Metal Netta. It's a beautiful thing, and that that I'm 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 using some flashcards. I downloaded an app uh, maybe a few months ago, and I've been. It's just like flash. That's a little app on your phone, and it just goes through them. And I've been learning that way, but I'm also doing the Metal Netta Monday class with Sabi. And man, I'm just telling you, it's it's just a beautiful thing to be able to learn. I get so excited <laughs> when the information is presented, the way Saba breaks it down. To be able to learn is just, I don't know, man. <laughs> and I'm tired. I work 12 hours. I'm in far. It's 2 a.m. I'm 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 like I'm like excited to get this knowledge because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, uh, like the brother was saying. And if, if you guys don't realize that, then, you know, you're just not on the same frequency. Um, but we're going to keep on spreading this 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 um, knowledge, and we're going to keep on learning and growing. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it to Ahati. <laughs> Good brother, I want to say Hotep Ma'at. Like I said, everybody join us, and I'm going to pass the mic to Ahati. <clears throat> Hotep Ma'at, brother, Hotep Ma'at. Um... Yeah, I like what the scribe said where he's he asked for everybody's um, location. So you see in the chat, a lot of you are from the same states and even not too far from each other. I saw some people from San Diego 
in Los Angeles. Um, I want to give a shout out to the sisters. There, there's a couple sisters in here, Cannabis Spa, Bev, and Shannon. These are good sisters. These are real good sisters. So if there's any sisters that are new or hearing this on a repeat, reach out to these sisters because they're, uh, they're actually giving their all and trying their hardest to uh, expand and learn with Tahuti so they would be able to help and guide you. Um, that's what we're all here for. We're all here to help each other. We're all, help, all here to help each other advance. And we can do that with those of us that have more knowledge than the other. And, um, and we can grow. And just to uh, go off of what the scribe said, the end result is that we physically get Saba a place to have his physical foundation where he can speak at. And those of us that are confident enough to speak with him. Um, we're also interested in uh, creating the festivals again. I know you ladies like the, the colors, the bees, the jewelry. So we want to see you come out with your children, with the rest of your families, and, and we can throw our own uh, block parties. But there'll be uh, comedic themes. And we won't just be playing around because if anybody asks us uh, what Heru Bahuta symbol is, we could tell them that it's the disc with the wings, with Maat's wings on it. Uh, so we're... Uh, and then Voltage Controller, he said, yes, that's a great goal. If Voltage Controller could come out with his, with his Technique 1200s, and we, and, and we, could have a, we could have a freestyle session. So just see the vision with us because we're, we're already creating it. And uh, we, we have big aspirations for what we're doing with the Teachers of Ma movement. And uh, we, we want to grow along every along with every uh, one of you out there. Um, you have found a home. You finally found a home where the truth will not be compromised for popularity. You found a place where uh, you can ask questions and get truthful answers and not get dishonesty. That's one thing with Tahuti. He, he was never dishonest with me. If he didn't know something, he said he would tell me, I don't know. And to ask him next week when uh, class was, was to be held next week. So I, that's one of the most things I, I respected off of him. Because I noticed a lot of these other brothers uh, use a lot of conjecture or opinions when they're caught in a prideful trap. So they'd rather be dishonest with you than just to admit that they don't know. And it's okay to admit you, you don't know. None of, even Tahuti doesn't know everything. We, we, all, we all can learn from each other. Um, but we also respect those that have the knowledge uh, have more knowledge than us. That's another key. You gotta be a great listener. Um, that's what I had to learn to do at first. I listened listen for many years. You can ask to Hootie if you want at another time. But I used to sit there and just listen to him talk, 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 because I was trying to absorb as much as I could in. So one day I would be on here talking to you now. Um, and again, uh, we have a membership program going now. Uh, more details will be up on the website soon. You don't have to. So I want to explain something to the people also. You can become a member and, and just come to these uh, teachings, and that's fine. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, reciprocity, where we give to get. Because we as a people have no problem, like Saba was saying, giving to the Tomahoos. The Tomahoos ain't giving you nothing back. Tom, who's just take, 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 take. At least here, you're going to get back knowledge that you could take with you back into the Netakert or what's now called the underworld or the other world. So you're given the greatest gift, in my opinion, here, and it's priceless. It's your consciousness. You're getting your consciousness back. You're getting your sound frequency back. So you can become a member and be not active. You could just support our movement. Or you can become an active member and you could sit up here on here with the panel with us one day or do some other role within the movement because that's how community is built. Every member is needed. The Tom who cannot run what we're on right now without every member of his society. So even the people that are knowledgeable and they're the bricklayer, brick, bricklayers, the Tom who uses them. And the same with us. Uh, these brothers, I know the scribe, I know Arcad. Arcad's sacrificing right now. I know Arcad has a work schedule, he has a family, and when we talk, he's very tired. He's sacrificing. 
that, that's what the movement needs. The movement needs sacrificers, and, and we have to learn to start sacrificing our time. Uh, Saba here it, it, it is when he's very busy, and he puts in a lot of time and work behind the scenes, too. And um, if anybody deserves your financial support, it's not your cell phone company or, or, or the banks. It's this man right here because he's going to support you with the knowledge that will take you into what's now known as the afterlife in a peaceful state so that you can live on in eternity. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Saba because he's playing with the screen back and forth. <laughs> Okay. okay, I am back. And um, unfortunately, when I'm, when everybody is on, all of your uh, voice are choppy. I don't know why that is. Um, so I can't, I can only hear every second word, but I know you guys were saying some positive, positive, beautiful things, but it's always choppy. I think I have to go back to the Dell. I'm not sure what, what this is. I can't, hear, <laughs> I can't hear any full sentences. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's uh, let's continue, everybody. I think it's eleven ten. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do two more answers, I think. And um, I'm gonna go for. Uh, I have the next up is this young lady right here. I think lady. I think Nightfire is. I don't know. Want to guess anybody's gender? But Nightfire um, has the next question up, and then um, then the heavy hitter. Heavy hitters. Heavy hitter, man. Heavy, heavy, heavy hitter. Let me go and do this. Let me see if I can knock these both out in 40 minutes right, and close up the class. I have a heavy, 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 heavy question came in. Shout out to Nightfire who's getting the next question in. Um, and I sent you a message on uh, Facebook message. Oh, Facebook. Hopefully I didn't get uh, mandela again. Okay, let me see. You know what? Let me see something. My Facebook also disappeared off the screen. Let me see what's going on here. They don't want you to contact me, Scribe. My yeah, Facebook. Is... They, okay, here we they go. They can't stop it. And look at that. You're not even on here. Let me let me see if I can find you. It's not even showing you sent me a message. It's not showing you sent me anything. <laughs> what they're trying to do. It ain't going to work, though. <laughs> My screen does not have... Uh, Oh, I have to click on you. Okay, let me see. Sab asked a question about. Oh no, no, he knows yours. Yours didn't. Did you send me um, scrap? Did you send me another one? Uh, uh, after this, did you send me another one on the owl? Is that you? Yeah, I sent you one right right when class started, on the owl. Let me take a look and see something. Hold on. Okay. Ooh we. So much going on. Let me scroll up and see. Um, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, forty-four. Thank you, scribe. Got both of them, and I got I got both of them. I'll, uh, okay, yeah. Did not get Mandela. Okay, I got both of them in, and I'll probably um. I will probably do the uh, the owl. I'm I'm gonna do the owl one first, since that was from that's from months ago, isn't it? Uh, almost yeah, almost a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's from a long time ago, and I'm I don't know where the answer went, but I'm gonna since it's so long, I'm not gonna prolong that one. I'm gonna do the owl one first, and then I'll go to best. Okay, everybody, here we go. We're about to get into it. Welcome to the Tootsie sure. Pod class. We are about to get into the next question that is in. And um, let me see. It is a. Uh, oh, where'd it go? Okay, here we go. Press the one if everybody can hear me, please. Press the one if everybody can hear me, please. Hmm, it's not loading. Hold on. Oh, here it is. Is it? Let me see. This is uh, from uh, 
I believe this came in. This came in last class, and it is okay. Here we go. Shout out to uh, Night Fire. Shout out to Night Fire who um. I want to say sister because the, all the imagery is pink, but okay. Shout out to Nightfire. Let me go and put uh, Nightfire's question in here. And uh, Nightfire was good. I like this because Nightfire actually had um, uh, Tehutimos sent in a huge donation. And then he said, um, he said, anybody, and he said, this is for anybody. And I think Nightfire jumped on and Scribe took her question. Uh, from um, that to who Timo's donated and also sent in her own paid question. That means she didn't just uh, freeload off of the to who Timo. She also sent in the, uh, the cash app for this question here. I have to go back and look at the um, other one. I think it was on the swastika, but this one came into my cash app first. I think the other, the other one was a uh, screenshotted by scribe and then emailed to me, but this one came in. This was the one I saw immediately. So let me go ahead and put this on the screen here. Welcome to the Tutsi Pod class. The next question in that came in that I saw um, is about the. So this is Night Fire, Night Fire. And um, please share archaeological evidence on meteors and comets. Okay. Thank you, uh, Nightfire, for being new. You're well. First off, you're new, and you're really energetic in the room. You're very energetic. You're very participate. You, you participate a lot. You you've uh, donated, and uh, you have great conversations in the room. Good, good energy. And um, shout out to the seven 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 for the question. And uh, to save to save uh, some time, what I'm going to do is. I don't know when you came in. I don't know when you came in the room the last time. I don't know when you came in, but um, I will send you a link for one part of this answer that I actually gave. Um, I gave the researchable um, information on one part of this answer. I'm going to cover the part that I didn't that I did not touch on. Just to save time here, so the so it was on um so there's meteors and comets. The comets I'm gonna give you, I'll give you a link to two of the classes that I broke down comets already. Um, the meteors I didn't, so we're gonna get into that to save time and also because my comet a answer is already given, and I can send a link to that to save time. Um, I've never broken down the meteor question yet. So she says, thank you, Saba. Is that a new one? I thought you already said that. Okay. Um, oh, she said, uh, <laughs> she ran out of character. She said, uh, I, I got the question, though. My question was, can you please share archaeological evidence on of meteors and comments on Earth? No, I ran out of characters. Yes, yes, I got the, uh, got the question. I'm going to get into the meteorite part. It's a uh, comment. I can comment. I send a link. Okay, shout out to... Nightfire, such a great question. Nightfire says, uh, says Shannon Southard. Okay, awesome. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Tahuti Pod class. Desmond is screaming. What, what about this question? Desmond likes this question. I can't wait to hear this one with fire. Okay, it's, 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 um, it's gonna be just, it's gonna be a nice breakdown, not as long as the others, of course, because, uh, the, uh, the donation amount, but it is going to be extremely thorough and breaking it down and giving you, I'm just giving you some nice information, uh, of course, and let's get into it. There's somebody in here named Pekka M. Koo. Did I start? Uh, uh, wow, we have Pekka M. Koo's now. Shout out to Pekka M. Koo. Mm, uh, shout out to Pekka M. Koo. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my must have saw a class or something because I've never heard anybody say anything about Pekka M. Koo before um, I started teaching on it. That's a very interesting, unique name. Shout out to Pekka M. Koo. All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to this. Desmond keeps putting swastika. <laughs> Desmond, you want that swastika answer? That was her other free one. Um, 
but in order though, in order, in order, in order. Here we go. All right, everybody, let's get into a little breakdown. Is it even little though? A little breakdown of uh, some archaeological evidence. What is left behind? What is what is the residual? What is the remnants? What actually happens? What is going on with um, meteors? And let's get into it. Let me go in the room here. Everybody can hear me. Wonderful. Netto the Greatest is here. Yeah, your voice was very deep. My voice is not that deep. Why has nobody told me I'm three tones deeper than normal? <laughs> Sounds like God subconscious. All right, here we go. All right, everybody, let me go ahead and do a screen share and get into this one. I'm going to do this one, and I'm going to do the next one, which is the uh, – I'm going to try to do the next one, uh, the Mars one. That's a huge answer. Okay, here we go. All right, let me screen share. Uh, what can we get on meteorites? What can we get on meteorites? Welcome to the 2 t Pod class. Here we go, everybody. Let's break it down. So what is the archaeological, and I believe um, this question was sent in last week by Nightfire. Okay. What is the archaeological evidence of meteorites, their effect, and how has their evidence been saved on comedic geographic sites and even ceremonial weapons enjoy so again what is the archaeological evidence of meteorites their effects and how has their evidence been saved been saved on comedic geographic sites and ceremonial weapons Enjoy, everybody. Welcome to the 2T Pod class. We're going to deal with some archaeological evidence of meteorites, uh, what their effects have been, some effects, and um, how their information has actually been saved on comedic sites and actual weapons. Welcome, everybody. Let's start with uh, Egyptian. Since we're going to go into Kemet, might as well go to the Egyptian... Uh, uh, Egyptian Geographic. I know most people have never heard of this before. You've heard of National Geographics, but this is Egyptian Geographics with Home, Nature, History, Heritage, Daily Life. And um, this article came out about a discovery in 2010 on Mount Carmel, the rare, rare uh, meteorite. Oh, let me close this. Let me hide this and go back. All right, the rare meteorite that struck the Western Desert 5,000 years ago, which is right around after the Younger Dryas period and people and the Earth became inhabited again. These things continue to hit the Earth. Now, here we go. So let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so Mount um, Camel, the rare meteorite that struck the Western Desert 5,000 years ago, and let's get into it, everybody. Welcome to the 2T Pod class. Let's break it down and get into it. Here we go. Okay. All right. So from the depth of space, millions of miles away, it came. And from the midst of eternal darkness, it set off. Let me blow this up a little bit so everybody can see just the image clear. With the writing, I can scroll down too. So let's take a look at this huge um, leftover. These, uh, these craters and debris that are left over, we're going to get into it. And check it out. Everybody, welcome to the 2T Pod class. And it says, from the depths of space, millions of miles away, it came. And from the midst of the eternal darkness, it set off. And towards the orbit of the populated blue planet, it goes to penetrate its gravity domain and hit in a terrible accident, creating a giant crater that appears... So far in the middle of Egyptian desert, the meteor of Mount Camel, described as the rarest meteor ever that has penetrated the earth 5,000 years ago, the meteorite has been through uh, the space and made a wag away between the stars to find its new home in the middle of, of Egypt, Egypt's western desert, leaving behind a huge crater and millions of fragments, which are one of Egypt's most important 
geological assets of the modern era. So as far as archaeology, as far as just what, what meteorites leave when they hit the planet is extremely visible. There's actually no archaeological digs that are needed to see the results of these meteorites, the fragments, what they do to the planet Earth, things that are actually turned into glass, um, and the and the chemicals that are left behind are all up for investigation, but all very easy actually to find and demonstrate and re-demonstrate and is very visible from the ground and the air, such as this one right here. Let me go ahead and get into it. Welcome everybody to the 2T Pod class. We are breaking down some evidence or information of meteorites and what is left behind. So here's how it looks. This huge um, crater and millions of fragments of bits of debris, debris because of course when meteorites come into the atmosphere they are extremely hot and they explode and explode um, things that are around it and they themselves explode into millions of parts. So here we go. Okay, no, uh, next to the meteorite crater the joint scientific team has found 5,000 and 178 fragments of this meteorite, which weighs between um, one kilogram and 35 kilograms, which totally weigh 800 kilograms. But the target sample is about 83 kilograms, which is currently in the Geological Museum. There's the image again. And let's go. So what I did, I got this and I got the certificate of authenticity. Check this out here. Let's go ahead and show this, and everybody can do the research. So, this certificate of authenticity of Gebel Camel, Egypt, in 2009. And we'll go ahead and read what this says and get back into this meteorite and what it's left behind. And what something very important that we've a lot of us have seen and didn't even know it was a meteorite was left behind. All right, geological studies later confirmed that the discovered meteorite weighed 10 ton tons. It consists of 90% iron. This is going to be very important. 10% nickel. And it moved from the asteroid region between Jupiter and Mars. Its speed was about 12,000 kilometers per hour before crash clashing. The crater is one of uh, 15 similar craters. Uh, spread on Earth, but this one is distinctive as its current environmental condition is very good, unlike her peers' conditions all over the world. Its environmental condition exists only on the Moon and Mars. Its metal components are basic elements of the center of the Earth and other planets of the solar system. Study of those components is therefore of great importance to the study of the subsoil and planetary compositions. Okay, let's take a look at some of the debris and let's take a look at this image over here. Here we go. All right, here we go right here. Another angle, this one in the black and white of the crater and what's left. The diameter of the crater created by the meteorite's impact, which is located uh, south of L. Jalif, El, El Jalif Al Kabr, near by the Sudanese borders, is about 45 meters and 16 meters deep. It's called Camel Crater, according to Mount Camel, which is nearby it. The evidence indicates that the impact was at an oblique angle, not a right angle. Scientists believe that the meteorite lump did not uh, disunite into the aerial space but exploded when it reached the ground that is why that big crater was formed okay and now we're going to take a look at a piece of it let's take a look over here and its measurements uh this one is a 60 gram camel meteorite piece one of the fragments and this is what it looks like and there's the measurements now in 2012 the Ministry of Environment, Environment declared Mount Camel as the natural preserve, as a natural preserve due to its importance and being at the top of the sandstone made of quartz, which dates back to Creatius period. Northward, it topped by the limited layer of sand below, 
Below it are the base rocks of Precambrian era. The area is surrounded by many mountains and paths of ancient dry valleys belong to prehistoric human villages, which makes the region bear a lot of historical, archeological, and geographical evidences. It also gives the region a unique aesthetic appearance. Okay, boom. All right, let's move on. Okay. Okay, so that, let me go ahead and shrink that down. Okay, so that is, anybody wants to look that up, that is a Gif Egyptian uh, geographic and the Mount Camel uh, meteorite. It's debris, the fragments that were found, the size of the crater, the diameter, the size of what the meteorite would have been, its weight, the speed that it would have traveled to make the impact at an oblong angle, and some of the fragments here measured and uh, separated. So now we're going to get into something very, very interesting. And this leads us to, we're staying in Kemet with this. So this leads us to Unk, Tut Unk Amun. Tut Unk Amun's knives. Has anyone ever seen this before? Let me take a look and show you all. Here's Tut Unk Amun's knives. Have anybody ever seen this before? Uh, the sister who asked the question. Have you ever seen these before? These are some interesting knives found in the ownership of Tut Unk Amun. You'll notice one looks a little greenish, and then there's this one right here, very interesting one, composed of iron and some other interesting um, elements, not just iron. The other elements are what's gonna make this very unique and interesting. Has anybody ever seen these knives before? Ceremonial weapon knives of Tut Unk Amun. They became popularized for a specific reason. Has anybody ever seen these before? Let me go and see. Okay. Anybody ever seen these before? Here we go. So we're going to get into, into it. Here we go. So I will take you to the news article and their discovery of what makes them significant to the subject matter. Why am I talking about uh, King Tut's knives in a conversation about remnants and evidence of meteors. Okay, so not only do we have, uh, and this, um, by the way, this article is from a site that has thousands, thousands of, um, thousands of uh, meteors, thousands of them. This is just one. I'm not going to break down the thousands. Uh, this is just one of the ones, but we're going to get into how this knife ties into the meteors. Let's take a look, everybody. Welcome to Tutti Pa class. What's the significance of these knives? King Tut, King Tut had a dagger made of extraterrestrial origin. This came out in Washington Post. Very interesting article where scientists started studying the knives of King Tut, but why? What is interesting about the knives of King Tut? They're not actual knives that were used in a fight. But there were ceremonial knives which had significant, which were given to him as a gift. And here we go, everybody. We're going to go ahead and read read some of this, and let's see what it says. So King Tut, uh, King Tut, the ancient Egyptian pharaoh, was uh, entombed with a dagger made from metal mined from a meteorite. According to a new scientific study, the iron dagger was discovered within Tutankhamun's sarcophagus. Those Famous unearth in Luxor in 1922 prompted a wave of global interest. Uh, the history and grandeur of the oldest civilizations. The young king died at 19 in the 14th century. While the Bronze Age cultures extensively used copper, bronze, gold, and other metals, the event of iron smithing, smithing hadn't yet happened. So iron smithing hadn't yet happened. So what do we have here? The researchers who published their findings on Tuesday in the journal, uh, Meteorites and Planetary Science, used a state-of-the-art X-ray uh, florensis Sp um, uh, spectrometry to analyze the composition of the blade. All right, very interesting. Let's continue on. Let's see what's going on with this King Tut blade here. Okay, their analysis strongly suggests that the blade carried materials of extraterrestrial origin and confirms the ancient Egyptians attributed great value to meteoric iron for production of precious objects. So in actuality, what happened is you had 
a meteoric iron and meteoric glass, which are formed when meteorites hit the planet. And the people of Kemet were known to value these items and actually make Kepara scarab green images out of meteorite glass. And this particular knife here, which became a, a subject of interest when they actually analyzed the elements that it compo was composed of. So um, they had uh, the ability to sculpt metals found in meteorites into sophisticated objects. In this context, the high manuf uh, manufacturing quality of Tutankhamun's dagger's blade is evidence of early success for iron smithing in the 14th century BC. Researchers write, according to their report, the ancient Egyptians' description, descriptions of iron appeared around the century after Tutankhamun's death, refer to them to the term iron of the sky. Okay, so iron of the sky because they source a particular iron not coming from Earth. So they called it iron of the sky. So beyond the Mediterranean Sea, the fall of meteorites, the fall of meteorites was perceived as a divine message in other ancient cultures. Researchers write, it is generally accepted that other civilizations around the world, including the Inuit people, um, the ancient civilizations in Tibet, Syria, Mesopotamia, and prehistoric Hopewell uh, living, living in eastern North America from 400 BC to 400 CE, used uh, meteoric iron for the production of small tools and ceremonial objects. So this taking the, the remnants of meteorites and what it what they produce um, became something very sacred to ancient people, one being King Tut, and it went across the world when they saw these things coming from the sky and their results of what they left behind. They would use these as special symbols, symbolizing thing that came, things that came from the sky to the ancient people. Things that come from the sky are very valuable because of their symbolic meaning of where their uh, teachers came from or the heavenly concept. Okay, let us continue, everybody. Welcome to Tutti Pa class. We're going to get more into these knives, and I'm going to show the study that was done on them and what was actually found. Here we go. Okay, so for, for understandable reasons, ancient peoples watched, watched the stars in the heavens and the objects that seemed to descend from there with intense curiosity and awe. The sky was very important to ancient Egyptians. British Egyptologist Joyce uh, uh, Tilsley told Nature, something that falls from the sky <clears throat> is going to be considered a gift from the gods. Metals extracted from space debris were used by myriad of cultures across the centuries to create totems of power. Not too long ago, the Smithsonian exhibited a 17th century knife that was once in the possession of the Mughal Emperor uh, Jahangir. Recently, analysis of the blade found that it too was crafted with an ore from a meteorite. In 2006, an Austri Austrian um, astrochemist discovered that the glass affixed to a jewel, also found in Tutankhamun's tomb, was probably formed by the heat generated from meteorite impacting the earth. Okay. Okay, now, this is the actual site here, which has thousands of um, meteorite fragments. The meteor, uh, meteorite, sorry, <clears throat> meteorite tickle society, uh, Lunar and Planetary Institute. So the metal and meteorites also contain a few tenths, and here's where it gets interesting. Here's how we source what's inside of the knife. So uh, the metal, the metal and meteorites also contains a few tenths of percentage cobalt and nickel. Cobalt ratio in meteoritic uh, metal is usually in the 10 to 25 range. Iron nickel metal in meteorites also has a high concentration by terrestrial standards of rare metals like gold, uh, platinum, iridium. It is usually easiest and cheapest to test for nickel, however, because it is more abundant and easier to measure than rare metals. Okay. 
So nickel, nickel content in ancient iron, which is the ancient iron that's used to make weapons, ceremonial knives, um, the nickel content in ancient iron artifacts made from terrestrial iron, or is never higher than 4%. Okay, so the nickel content is never higher than 4%. Well, Tutank Amun's blade has been examined, and guess what? Guess what it has in it, and what percent? So what does it have in it, and what percent? Let me shrink this down. Boom, we're gonna go over here. Here are the knives again, and this is the scanning, okay? This is the scan also the enlarged nickel. They have nickel, sulfur, chloride, elemental distribution uh, maps of one of the side of T King Tut's dagger analyzed with portable XRF spectrophysy. So here, spe uh, spectrocopy. So here is the, the nickel, the Ni, the S, the sulfur, and the Cl chloride. And this is the amounts that are found inside of them which rendered very interesting results because these are not supposed to be in any iron of any earthly, um, any earthly origin. Okay, so let's go. All right, so analysis of the, oop, analysis, analysis of the dagger blade was carried out at the Egyptian Museum of Cairo. The XRF head was mounted on a stable tripod equipped with lateral side arm, 60 centimeters long, Tutank Amun's blade was subjected to X-ray uh, fluorescence spectros spectroscopy, um, a non-destructive testing method to analyze its composition, composition. The blade turns out to be mostly iron with 11% nickel and 0.6% cobalt. Okay, let me shrink that down. So it ended up being 11% nickel and 6% cobalt because the blade was actually made from meteoric leftovers. And that's why at the time, in ancient, um, ancient time, in the 14th century BC, all of the iron blades, knives, weapons were no higher than 4% because that's the nickel that is found on Earth. But inside of a meteorite, because the meteorite is cobalt, sulfur, and high percentages of nickel when they took the meteorite, um, the meteorite fractions and made their weapons or made their ceremonial knives, they turned out looking like this, which is why these knives don't look the same as regular knives, especially this greenish one right here. And there are scarab or kepara beetles that are made of what's called meteoritic glass. And so boom. There you go, I'm gonna leave it right there. Um, so what we have here, if we analyze and summarize everything, this is uh, one of thousands of uh, meteoric crater sites that have been found. They're, they're um, let me blow this up so everybody can see. Sorry, one second. The writing is very, very small. Here's the pictures right here. So these are the craters that are found. You can find this in Egyptian geography. Uh, these are the craters that are found, and these are the fragments, thousands of fragments that are found with the content that match what would be inside of a meteorite as opposed to a terrestrial rock that is found. And the ancient people of ancient times would see these things falling from the sky, value them, and they would actually make their jewelry kepara, a symbol of evolution, the kepara beetle, and their ceremonial knives. These knives were actually given to um, Tutank Amun as a uh, gift in the Armana tablets from the people of the Hittite area. So this was actually a gift given by the people in that area that were doing the same thing as the people in Kemet and people all across the world by taking, seeing the meteorite fall and then going to the area and collecting what they consider the sacred uh, fragments. This is the website here. If you want to, uh, to research thousands of meteorite debris, leftovers, craters, impact their weight uh anything you want to know all over the world you can literally type in the place in the world and it will give you the information that you can go research and the pictures and the images and boom there you have it um thank you for asking the question and that is my answer on that question research more if you want more information i'm not sure uh why anyone would but if you if you are anybody is 
are very interested for some reason in media rights and you want more and more information on media rights, I would suggest you go to this website here, which gives so much information. It's literally thousands. And I just took one of them, which was this one here up top. And this has thousands of it, thousands of them. And yes, King Tut's knife is of extraterrestrial origin because it definitely does not match the nickel content of any terrestrial um, object found on Earth, especially in uh, 14th century BC. So boom. Thank you, um, Night Life. I believe that Night Life for asking the question on the evidence of meteorites. There is multifarious evidence. There's crater evidence. There's uh, fractal evidence, debris evidence, um, heat evidence, chemical change evidence, um, ancient cultures using the the uh, fractions to make weapons evidence stored for thousands of years, high nickel content and cobalt content that's found in the meteorites in the nearby areas match the weapons and ceremonial knives and artifacts that also match what is in the meteorite that does not match the other ceremonial artifacts that are made from the ground. And they're calling these things, when they make them, they're calling these artifacts gifts from the heavens because the ancient people are literally watching these meteorites fall and going to the sites and making them boom. That is my answer. Thank you, sister, for asking the question on meteorites. And later on, the uh, moderators can send you the link to my comment breakdown. It's almost 12 o'clock, so I don't have the time to do a full comment breakdown. Let me take it off screen share. But that is my answer, and I hope you were there to get it. I'm not seeing the screen, so boom. Yeah. Let me go ahead and check the chat room. I hope I have time to answer this one last question, but um, boom, thank you so much for the support and the question. Um, appreciate that. I see Ava is in here. Um, thank you, Ava, for showing up. Peace. You are awesome. Always popping in and supporting. All right. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, e manifestos here. And uh, okay, let me go on to the next question. I don't see the nightlife sister in here. I'm not sure uh, if she's still in here or if she got the answer. If not, you can watch back on repeat. I know it is late and some people are falling asleep. Okay, boom. So here we go. All right, everybody, we're going on to the next question. Is a uh, truth seeker here in the house? Is truth seeker here in the house? I think this is my last. Question of the night is Truth Seeker here in the house. Truth Seeker. Is he even here? Let me see what we got here. Truth Seeker asked. Uh Matthew McDowell. Is that that is Truth Seeker, right? Thank you, Saba. Okay. Matthew McDowell has a question in here. And oh my goodness, this one is big. This one is a big question here. If True Seeker in the house, I would like him to be in here so that he can hear the answer. I know it is late. Is True Seeker in the house? True Seeker in the house. Truth Seeker, are you here? True Seeker, he is the last question of the night. Truth Seeker, are you here? All right, I don't see Truth Seeker here. He was here earlier. Let me get a mic check to make sure everybody hears me. Is Truth Seeker here? Jody's hanging in there. Okay, boom. All right, here we go. Truth Seeker. Let me see if there's. Okay, Lance, Wing Disc, Stranger. A stranger here. Nuclear Explosion. AJ Magool. Uh, question on Bess. Is True Seeker in the house? True Seeker, are you here? True Seeker? Nope. Okay. All right, everybody, let me go to check something out here. Okay. All right, so shout out to, um, I'm waiting for True Seeker. This is a big 
Big one, I want him to be here. Truth Seeker, if you are here, just press one. I'm going to go and give a couple shout outs to some of the donators here, which is Anthony Drain, who sends his 1072. Anthony Drain also has a question that I have to answer next week, which is uh, Pazuza, Pazazu. He asked a question about Pazazu. And let me go ahead and put him in the room here. Anthony Drain, who usually just sends donations, but he actually sent in a question last time. Let me go ahead and put him in the room. Shout out to Anthony Drain, who sends in, who sends in um, 1072 before every class. Okay, let me put him in the room. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. And here he is. Shout out to Anthony Drain. Shout out to Anthony Drain. I hope he's showing up in the room. Thank you, my good brother. Appreciate the question. The, sorry, the donation, 1072. He sends it in before every class. Shout out to Anthony Drain and your support. Appreciate you, my good brother. I don't even know if you're in the room. Uh, let me go ahead and go into. All right, and here comes. Oh, here we go. Lamar Scribe Owens, shout out to you, who sends in, oh, I can't put it in the room, I can't put it, uh, oh, yes, I can. Shout out to Lamar Scribe Owens, who sends in the huge amount for a question that he sent in that I answered. People remember the answer, and we cannot find... We cannot find where the answer is. We don't know where, what class it was in. Um, it's something he asked me a long time ago. Here it is right here. And this is um, Master Class on the Owl. Scribe likes owls and wants the breakdown of the owl. As a matter of fact, in his background, he has an owl. He has an owl. Shout out to the Scribe Master Class on the Owl. Shout out to the scribe. Thank you so much for the support. I'm going to see if... Uh, uh, let me close that. Okay. Shout out to the scribe. Thank you very much, my brother. I'm going to see if uh, True Seeker is here. If not, I'm going to go up and get to the next one or just do it next week. But shout out to the scribe. Let me see if you went in the right... Section, where is the scribe? The scribe, the scribe did not go in the section. So let me go ahead and do this again. Okay. Boom. Boom. I'm going to go right there. Okay, good. And, uh, uh next. Okay. All right. We will go on to the next one is Ron. Ron Ali. Okay, answered Lance. Ron Ali, shout out to Ron Ali. I'm put this in the room. Ron Ali. Like that. Boom. And uh, uh, where is Ron Ali? Ron Ali. Shout out to Ron Ali. I haven't seen this name before, but he says, let me go ahead and put this in the room. He says, is it showing? Shout out to Ron Ali who says, uh, where's Ron Ali? There it is. Shout out to Ron Ali who says, Five dollars. It says for the knowledge. I've watched and liked all videos. Thank you, Ron Ali. Appreciate the support, and thank you for watching and liking all the videos and appreciating the knowledge. Shout out to Ron Ali. Shout out to you. Okay, next one is a true seeker again. Oops. Books just came in the mail. I sent my PDFs to. Oh. Oh, oh, shout out to Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker. 
Truth Seeker says his uh his books came in the mail. He sent my PDFs to Lulu.com to print the books. Uh, I like actual books than digital. Now I have your books. Here are a couple of pictures. I was trying to use your cover. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Shout out to uh, shout out to Truth Seeker. He he turned them into um, he turned the PDFs into books. Looks like with the spine and all. Oh. Oh, let me put this in the room, everybody. This is interesting. He turned the books into uh, into actual hardcover books. Shout out to the True Seeker. Let me go ahead and put this in the room and share. Uh, where is he? Where is that? Where is that? Here it is, True Seeker. Here it is. Everybody can see the screen. It's a little small writing. He says, greetings. These books just came in the mail. I sent my PDFs to Lulu to print into books for me. I like actual books than the digital. Now I have your books. Here are a couple of pictures. I was trying to use your cover pics but couldn't accomplish, so I used uh, random pics I found. I think you would like this piece. So look what our true seeker did, everybody. Very good. He um, there's the books, and then he turned them into these. Look at that. Hardcover books, um, Melon in Dark Consciousness, hardcover book, and uh, Stepping Out the Matrix, and look at that. And they're in color. <laughs> hey, he got them printed in color, hardcover. I've never seen anyone do this before, but he has. Melanin in Dark Consciousness book by me and Stepping Out the Matrix book by me in hardcover and in color. Shout out to you, my brother. That is very creative and very serious for you to uh, to do that. Shout out to you. That is awesome. I've never seen uh, anyone do that before. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting the energy into it. And I hope in that form they last you for a long, long time. Uh, time and when people see them, they will inspire them to get the books and maybe do the same. I give permission for that. You want to do that? Anything you need to do to get the knowledge out, shout out to you. Appreciate you. That is very creative. People are saying, Wow, wow, that's awesome. That is awesome. Wow, Hickey Kepper has his thumbs up. Jody says, Wow, okay, good, good, good. Uh, let me go up and scroll up and see who else. Uh, let me see. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Wait a minute. Nito Campbell, Owen Heithy, Anthony Train, Lamar, and the monster. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with, with Tahuti. You know what? By the time I always scroll up for Tahuti, a lot of times he's. He's not even here, but he'll watch it back on the YouTube to Hootimos with a humongous uh, donation. Let me go ahead and put this on the screen. Shout out to you, my brother. Uh, let me go ahead and put this on the screen. Shout out to Tahootimos. He is ever so appreciative. I did a breakdown for him um, that affected him personally. And he was very appreciative and from the beginning, even before that. Very, very appreciative. I'll do a screen share for the brother. He's the one that gave a donation for, a, for I believe, Nightlife. I'm getting a little tired. But Nightlife um, got a question in from this brother right here. Thank you so much. He, he donates um, for himself and he donates for others. And thank you very much. Let me go ahead and get to this, turn this volume up so you guys can hear the claps that he deserves. Shout out to, uh, shout out to this brother here, man. This brother is not playing around. He's constantly supporting. He is awesome. Shout out to you, my good brother. You are 
always supporting. You get the horns and everything. You are. Wow. And it says, let me go ahead and read what it says. Where is the screen? Where is the screen? His donation says, let me turn this down so you all can hear. His donation says, oh, it came off the screen. Let me put it back up on the screen. That is strange. Where did his donation go? Uh oh. Okay, internet issues. One second, everybody. Let me go ahead and do this again. Because uh, it got taken down and now has disappeared. Like scribes. Owl question. Okay, here we go. We're going to put this back on the screen again. Shout out to the brother because I want to read what it says again for everyone because this brother here is just, he is of the monster supporters. I hope everybody can see this. It says, for my motivation is your preservation. My motivation is your preservation. My motivation is your preservation. I know exactly what the brother means. He actually explained this to me um, one day. I really appreciate him for that. Thank you so much for wanting me preserved. I know, I know exactly what you mean by that. You spoke to me. Um, you spoke to me outside of here and told me what that means, and I greatly appreciate that. Your motivation is my preservation. I will, I, with your help, I will stay preserved as long as possible. Thank you so much, my good brother. This is uh, Tahuti Mos, the brother who used to be a rabbi until he saw me teaching and then drop that title, drop that group, and now is known as Tahuti Mos. And he's been giving monster donations ever since that time. Oh, here, one of my goddesses actually gave me. I don't know if this is the. Because I have some I have some meteorite stone. Um, I have so many things around here. But uh, shout out to um, the brother Tutimos. You are awesome. You are awesome. It looks kind of like this, though. Oh, it's see through. Look at that. It's see through because the, uh, the stone part is green, right? <laughs> the stone part is green. So the green screen makes it see through so you can't even see the special uh you can't even see the special glass but anyways this is what it it looks like uh that is the kepa Ra, and they would make it out of the uh the meteorite glass the res the results of the meteorite glass heating up uh it's see through this is like a movie i can see my background through this but when i look at it i can see the green interesting so i can't show that to you on this but that is a uh, the design they put the glass, the meteorite glass in. Okay, shout out to Tahuti Most. Appreciate you, my good brother. You are an awesome supporter when you see this. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead to Arcad and uh, Truth Seeker. I'll do his. Uh, I have a big one for Truth Seeker, but I really want him to be there. I really want him to see this. This is um, a big one for him. Okay, here we go. Uh, shout out to, uh, oop, come on. Where'd it go? Strange. Wait a minute. Things are disappearing. Let me see if I can find it back on the screen. Where is it? 777. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Seven, I got to do it again manually. The one man teacher and engineer. Let me do this again uh, manually. Okay, we're going to go like this. Boom. Open up the tab, put it in, go like this, share, share Chrome. Okay, we got it back. Shout out to Arcad Infinite who always sends in. He always sends in 777. 777 and he always sends in, it says S-U-P-R-T in the menu. Arcad Infinite, appreciate you, my brother. For the seven 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 every week seven seven seven, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote Arcad Infinite, his favorite saying that he says all the time when he talks. Every time I step away from the pod class and I leave Arcad Infinite and the other brothers, 
I always hear this sentence from a distance. Y'all should join us. He always says that. So Monday Medinator class, y'all should join us. The Sunday uh, study class that they do with, with the Hati, y'all should join us. As a shout out to RCAD Infinite. Thank you for your support, my good brother. Appreciate you if you're even still in the room. Okay, let me uh, stop the share. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. We are winding down. We are winding down. Okay, here we go. Uh, who is next? We have another big one coming up, I think. Let's, um, oh, one second, everybody, hold on. I don't know why this is way over here. Okay. All right, who is this? This is a. Uh, oh! Netter. Um, oh, I even see Desmond way at the top here. Desmond, Desmond, Desmond's at the top. Okay. All right. I see some, some, uh, nice support in here. Now that I scroll up, uh, this is, uh, oh no, 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 don't do that yet. Wait, this is, uh, Netter the greatest, which is Netter Unk Hotep L. Let me go ahead and put him in the room. Shout out to Netzer Ankhotep L. And let me go ahead and put him in the file. Netzer Ankhotep L. Shout out to you, my good brother, so for the support. You're always in the room. Oh, you're always supporting from the beginning. Shout out to you. I don't know if you're still here now, but I'm still going to give you a shout out regardless. I appreciate your support of me. And this is uh, Sacred Numbers again 972 4. Dua, <laughs> thank you, my good brother. Dua, Dua, which is uh, reverence, thank you, and consciousness. Reverence, thank you, consciousness, and the star. Dua, thank you, my brother, with a 972. I like that you also send in these type of uh, numbers which have meaning. Shout out to you, my brother. I appreciate you. Shout out to you. Uh, Shannon says she needs to get some Libyan glass. <laughs> and Ascari, who says, get my Solomon question next week, please. Okay. Okay, okay. I will get it next week. No problem. Uh, let, me, let me check on something and see. Something is... Okay, hold on. Pizazu. Pizazu. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to go back. Okay, I will get it next week. No problemo, no problemo. Okay. Next coming up, next coming up is... um. Oh, we got somebody sending me a PayPal to find out where to buy the books. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and put this on the screen. He sent me, um, I guess, a donation, but it's, uh, he sent he sent me a message, and I guess he put the minimum amount to uh, so that the message could get through to me. I'm going to put it on the screen anyways. Shout out to the brother. I think it's a brother. Shout out to the brother who sent a dollar to ask me this question. And the question is, hello, I'm curious and interested in buying your books. Where can I purchase your books from? The Secret of the Ages, Volume 1, Melanin and Dark Consciousness, or something similar. Shout out to Gideon Baoki, uh, who sent a dollar to uh, get that question out to me. So uh, go ahead, moderators, put the link in the room to the, uh, to the website where you can get the books. If he's even in the room, I'm not sure if he's even in the room, but if not, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, put my email there. You can send me an email there, Gideon. Um, I don't have your I don't have your email address to contact you back. So hopefully you see this. 
and um, I hope you see this. I don't know how to reach you. If you're in the room, um, the moderators will put the link in the room to the website where you can get the books. Um, I don't know how to reach you to to answer other than if you're watching. Okay, shout out to Gideon Books. We're gonna go on to the next um, next donation, which is uh, whoa, whoa, begin leisure, knocking me up the side of my head with his huge donations. Um, uh, let me put this up in the room. Shout out to Be Get Leisure. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the room here. Shout out to Be Get Leisure who sends this. And, um, let me go ahead and do this. Get Leisure is awesome. Great supporter. I'm trying to see what this question is. I'm seeing it. Is BJ Get Leisure in the room? I don't know if I understand this question. I'm going to read it and see if I can understand. Oh, okay. One second, everybody. I got to fix something really quick. Okay, here we go. Um, Next week. His name that right? Okay, good. So B Get Leisure, let me go ahead and put him in the room. Shout out to B Get Leisure with the huge support. Always, always. He is so appreciative of me, and I appreciate you, my good brother. We talk outside of here, and I'm helping him out with a lot of different personal things. And he's a really very respectful, appreciative brother. And I will continue to help him because of his great his great attitude. B Get Leisure with the monster. The monster donation again. And again, shout out to Big Head Leisure. Big Head Leisure with the $50. Shout out to you, Big Head Leisure. Thank you. In the room, everybody, his name is Micah. Shout out to Micah. Appreciate you, my good brother. You are always supporting. Appreciate you so much, my good brother. Appreciate you. Be get leisure, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this down so that I can answer or read the question. I'm going to try to make uh, make um, sense of this again. The first time I read it, I didn't quite understand. Let me go ahead and look at it one more time. Be get leisure says, I'll blow it up. He says, uh, "Gift Saba." Okay, this is a gift. Um, is there any reference of God, a pep, on Medunetter? talking i'm curious oh hmm let me see if i'm reading this right so gif saba is there any reference of god a pep on medunetter talking i'm a curious okay let me let me see if i can um uh, well, you know, we'll talk outside of here, but I'm going to see if, if you mean this. Is there any, is there any writings in the papyrus of a pep, the the enemy of the netter, um, speaking? I, I believe that's what you're asking. I think I'm going to talk to you outside of here, but I do believe you are asking that of God, a pep on Metanetter. Talking, I'm a curious. Shout out to you, Be Get Leisure. Appreciate your support. You are, um, man, you're always supporting. I'm going to see you in Metanetter Monday. That's the next I'll see you after this class. I appreciate your support. And um, let me check the comments. Oh, oh, he is here. He's here. Okay. My thing lags, so I can't tell. He says, Tua Saba, yeah. Okay, and uh, let's continue going. Um, that's a good question, my brother. I'm going to um, I'm going to find something. I have not found. I have not found that. I have found a pep, a pep, the the um, the man enemy of the netter speaking the uh, the king of the Hyksos, but um. 
interesting. Apep, the the enemy of Raw speaking. I've not come across that yet, my brother, but I'm going to um, go into my archives and dig some things up and see if I can get the answer to that. I, right now, I can say no. I have not, I have not um, seen a pep um, where it says, thus saith the pep, or pep says this. I have not seen it yet, or it's not in my mind right now. I don't have it, but thank you for that, and I'll go um, into my deep archives and papyruses and see if I can find a pep talking. That's an interesting question. I've actually never thought of a pep conversing. Very, very interesting. He's always getting slaughtered in the uh, in the papyrus. He always has knives in his back. But okay, good, good, good. Uh, Desmond said, did Tahuti get my question on Cash App? If it's the one that I just said, Desmond, I'm not sure if this is this should be you, Desmond, but um, just a couple minutes ago, I said that I scrolled up and I see that Desmond sent a cash app and it's at the top of the screen i believe this is you but it's desmond clark so uh, i got a question way at the top of the screen and i'm scrolling up but just a few minutes ago i did say that i see desmond at the top of my screen who sent a cash app so i hoping that is you shout out to desmond clark okay so um next one is let's begin leisure Next one is, um, oh, wow, Robert. Team had me shaken. Is Robert in the building? I don't know what this means here. Robert is the next donation here. And, and I let me see what this means, Robert. I'm going to put it in the room. Uh, okay, here we go. So Robert says, Robert says, uh, let me give you. Where is Robert? Robert, Robert, Chrome tab. That's not right. That's right. Shout out to Robert E. Williams Jr. Who says, the team had me shaken? I don't even know what that means, Robert. Are you in the room, my brother? I don't know what that means. The team had me shaken. <laughs> I don't know, my brother, but shout out to you for the support. That is... Uh, I think it's one of the biggest supports I've ever seen you give. Shout out to that. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. The team had you, you shaken. I don't know if you're talking about the Sunday study. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's a good thing. If you gave a donation on it, then let them shake you more. Let them shake you up. Because that if the team had you shaken, uh, promotes you to give a support. Team, shake them up some more. Appreciate the shakeout. Whatever that even means, but shout out to the shakeout. Shout out to the shaken. <laughs> team, let me read that again. Am I reading this right? The team had me shaken. I guess uh, maybe they were dropping jewels. I'm not sure, but uh, shout out to the effect that the team had on you. You're awesome, Robert. I appreciate you. Uh, Desmond said, okay, cool. Yep, I, you're up there, Desmond. You're way you're at the top. Desmond, shout out to you. I'm getting a little tired now, so I'm going to just read them out now, and um, I'll get to the answering next week. Um, uh, who is this? This is a Nightfire again with, oh, Nightfire with 111? <laughs> is she doing a cash peeding? <laughs> Nightfire doing a cash pee. Let me go. Shout out to Nightfire. That's interesting with the one one one. Maybe she heard me say uh, talk about cash pee and doing the one one one, the two two two. Uh, shout out to Nightfire. Let me go ahead and put this in the room. Shout out to Nightfire who gave one one one. And up at the top there, I think I see another night fire donation. Let me um so first of all, shout out to this one. We're doing order. Shout out to Night Fire who says actually there's nothing said, it just says one one one. Shout out to Night Fire. Uh shout out to you, sister. Night fire. Or uh, night fire. Shout out to you. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm starting to break down now. It is bedtime coming up, and I want to give a Shout out and acknowledgement to all those who have sent. See, my eyes are unable to stare at the screen to give any more 
thorough answer that I'm staring at the screen for. I think the last 48 hours. Okay, shout out to uh, uh oh she said uh that was from earlier. I was asking for a source, okay. And she put her hands in the praise. Okay. Shout out to Nightfire asking for a source. Shout out to you. Let me go up and see who's next. Um Uh, Hatima'at. Hatima'at says Nightfire sent a, Is this what the dollar is for? I'm not sure. It's a. I got some from a Hati. Can you share? I can't even read this. It's in black. That's weird. Can you share evidence of it being sphere instead of a disc? Sent Cash App. Is that what the dollar? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. Oh, no. No, Nightfire sent another one. Is this for this is for nine dollars? Okay. Uh can you let me see? Uh okay. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure what that what just happened there, but I'm gonna go ahead and show Nightfire again with the nine dollars who says let me read this one here. Nightfire, shout out to you for the constant support. This one is $9. Let me get some uh, agua, sorry. Let me get some agua. And uh, Nightfire says, uh, let me see what it says here. My eyes are getting, my eyes are breaking down, but I'm going to go ahead and read this light for me. Okay, is it on the screen? Nightfire says. Uh, let me. Okay, it's big. It's big now. Can you share source of sun origin story? Hmm. The source of the sun origin story? Can, can you share source of sun origin story? Okay. Um. You want to source the the story that I read, or a? Let me go into the chat and see um, a source of the sun origin story. Hmm. Okay, let me go in the room and see because I got a bunch of things on my screen right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the room and see what this uh, question is. Shout out to Night Fire. Where's the chat room? Shout out to Night Fire. Okay, night fire. Shout out to you, Chief Caliph says sh just signing in. Okay. Um. Okay, night fire. If you have my email, or maybe you can um, clarify this for next time. I'm not sure what this is. A source of the sun origin story translation. Uh, I don't know what this. I'm not sure what this question is. A comedic papyrus with the story of the creation of the sun and the origin of where the papyrus came from. I'm not sure. I'm going to make a note of this for clarity. Shout out to uh, Nightfire for this. Um, oh. Please share the source of the story you shared earlier. Oh, um, let me clarify something. I actually never shared a story of the uh, of the sun's origin. Let me clear. Maybe that wasn't understood. So, um, yeah, I never I never discussed the sun's um, origin. I actually was talking about uh, a story of Heru Behutet in a in a fight. And there's an Anunnaki mention it, but it that it wasn't actually speaking about the sun in the sky, and that modern day um, people say the Heru Behutet is the sun in the sky, but the story itself is not speaking about 
the actual sun. So I was emphasizing that it was not the actual um, sun. That is the story of Heru Behutet, and it can be found on page 103 of Legend of the Gods. And the actual story is written on the temple of Edfu in Kemet. That is the source of the where the story came from, the temple of Edfu. It's on the walls of the temple of Edfu. It's been translated and placed inside of a modern day book translation called Legends of the Gods, and it is on page 103 of Legend of the Gods, which can be actually purchased in one day delivery on Amazon. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for for uh, clarifying, and I hope that clarified you with, it, uh, with you. It wasn't the actual sun. Shout out to Night Fire for that support. Oh, she did say thank you, thank you, okay. Wonderful. Okay. Let's go. We're getting closer to uh to Desmond. I, oh, we're on Desmond. Did Desmond send two? Let me refresh this. Hold on a second. Uh I see Desmond's name twice. Okay, here we go. So Desmond, um, we got Desmond here who says uh Okay, Desmond says, uh, we're going to put it in the room. This question sounds kind of similar to, to Nightlife's question. I wonder if there was a bit confusion of what I was actually breaking down. Let me, um, let me get Nightlife off. Okay, shout out to Desmond who actually sent a nice donation. Let me give him a shout out and his hand clap and everything, and then I'm going to read what I think the question is. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. So shout out to Desmond. I believe I'm screen sharing right now. You should all see it. So shout out to Desmond. <laughs> shout out to Desmond who says, let me pull some of these screens here. There's Desmond, Desmond, Desmond. Oh, let me do it again. Okay, Desmond, let me move this off the screen. Shout out to Desmond, sends in the 21, let me blow it up a little bit, $21, and he says, why did they call it a sun disc if it's a ball? Okay, so... The actual let me let me uh, let me see if I can clarify what I was talking about compared to what may have been interpreted. I was actually saying that the object was not in this reference was not the ball. There is a ball. There is a globe uh, ball in um, Comet that is the sun. But they were calling this a disc that was flying in the sky with multiple colors. But nowhere in that actual story did they actually call it a ball in the actual story. In the actual story, they have the word translated as the Aten um, or the Heru Behutet. And they put disc in there because they knew the ancients were speaking about something that was not the sun. The modern day people will say that that story is about the sun but in actuality it doesn't say anything about a sun or a ball it mentions a word that they translate to as a disc shaped object that was flying in the in the sky if today let me get this off the screen so if today if today we were to describe a disc shaped object flying through the sky changing into multiple colors going up into the sky um, this this terminology was was um, I think in 1947 developed by a man named Kenneth. It was it was um, a pilot. He he invented the term flying saucer. He made that term up a flying saucer because what he saw in the sky giving off lights was a disc. And for thousands and thousands of years, ancient people and modern day people have described things that are actually flat, that are circular 
but are flat flying around in the sky. And at nighttime, they give off multiple colors. And at daytime, it looks like a actual discus. It looks like a frisbee. So the Kemetians in that story actually never um, described it as a sun or a ball. The people that say that it is that are people that aren't actually reading from the text. They're just going to say it's a it's a sun without actually reading from the text. The Bible, the Bible took the story and they put it in Malachi as the sun with um, with wings. They called it that. But they actually stole it from another god that wasn't even speaking about the sun. They stole, stole it from the Anunnaki god Shamash, who's shown inside of a disc with wings, and he's also flying. So they actually never called it a ball or a sun in that story, although there are multiple stories of Aten and the, and the sun. But that particular one, they never called it a ball or never called it the... Um, the sun in that story. If you have another story where they called it a disc and it was the sun, but in that one they uh, they did not. So um. So yes, so people call it many different things, whatever you want to call it. In ancient times, they called it a disc that was flying, and it gave off multiple lights. At that time, they called it Heru Bahute. Today, they call it. They don't know what to call it. They call it unidentified flying object. They call it a flying saucer. They call it whatever they call it today. But whatever you want to call it, that's what you can call it. But in ancient times, it was a flying disc-shaped object that someone would be in fighting that was giving off multiple lights that would take off, go into the air, and also come back to the, to the ground. However that is interpreted, that is what they called it. Um, even the raw in the story was not the sun. That's another thing too. They called the raw. People today are calling raw in that story the sun, when it says that raw was a king that did something on the 363rd year, that he did something on that year. So that also was not the sun. It's modern day people saying, saying that. Um, oh, you came in late. Okay, no problem. Go back to that one and. Uh, It'll be much, um, much clearer. Okay, shout out to you. And thank you for the support, for wanting the clarity. Appreciate the support. Thank you, Desmond, for the support. And um, Just Balance. Where have I seen this name before? Oh, Mushman. Shout out to Mushman. I know Mushman. Shout out to Mushman, who, uh, who sends um, 10. Let me go ahead and put that up. Shout out to Mushman, who sends the 10. Uh, and what does it say? And they put this in, on the screen so I can read what it says. It says, it says here, just balance payment Mushman. And he says $10 for peace. Shout out to you, Mushman. I appreciate the peace. I appreciate the support. Thank you very, very much. I humbly accept that you are offering energy of peace in my direction. I love peace. And um, actually one of my favorite songs by Large Professor was called Peace. Something to that fashion. I love peace. Thank you very much. Shout out to you, Mushman. Appreciate that. And I think the last one of the night, let me refresh the page. Is Desmond again? Desmond. Um, Desmond gave two, two, two. Desmond, you and um and nightlife are linked in some way. You guys, you guys, synchronizing with things throughout the nights. I don't know what's going on, but that is a uh, great Desmond. <laughs> your questions are similar, the topics are similar, and now the donation is sequencing. Her donation, very, very interesting. Let me uh, throw that on here. And shout out to Desmond, who sends 222. Nightlife sent 111. Desmond sent 222. Shout out to you, Desmond. Appreciate uh, the support. Um, oh, you remember that song? That's right, my brother. Remember? 
Oh, hip hop Houston sound. Yes, peace, peace of what? You can't mean P A C E because I seen brothers in the street shoot the next man and turn around and say peace, but that's leaving people in pieces. It's not what the meaning of peace is. Yeah, that's when, that's when hip hop was here in full effect. Shout out to Large Professor. All right, let me refresh the page. I think we're ready to close up. Desmond again. Wait, my eyes are. My eyes. I cracked a joke with one of my goddesses, or maybe two. I'm not sure, but I cracked a joke. And my eyes are burning. My eyes are um, are burning. I'm going to be Amenhotep Ray Charles. So, okay, shout out to uh, Desmond again, who sent 333. So, Nightlife sends 111. Wait a minute. Desmond says 222. And now I see 333, three, three. shout out to Desmond. They put up on the screen. Shout out to Desmond. Is it on the screen? 222? Two, two, two? No. 333. Uh, three, three. Chrome, is this it? Shout out to Desmond with the 333. Three, three. Cash Peden, you have set a trend. <laughs> You've set a trend. Shout out to Desmond with the 333. His last one was 222. I like that you all are um you all are being very creative with the the support and having fun with it and doing number games and sacred numbers and going up in numbers and it's it's uh I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It makes it uh makes getting the donations exciting and Creative shout out to all of you for that. I believe that concludes all the donations of the night. I am definitely too tired to get into the nuclear question. Plus, the brother's not even uh, brother is not here. He was here in the beginning, but he's not here now. So I'm gonna get into that next week, nice and fresh, where I can just boom go into it, and it's gonna be one of the longest answers. So I definitely can't answer that right now. Shout out to uh, Truth Seeker who sent that question in, and I appreciate it. It is time to close it up. Let me give a shout out to everybody. Um, all right, Vegan Gains, Vegeta Gains is here. Salute to my good brother. I can't stay long, but I will rewatch. Just wanted to send love. Shout out to you, v Vegeta Gains. Vegeta Gains, shout out to you. For popping in. Shout out to Hosey. I haven't seen you all night. He says, Time for bed. Have a good sleep to Hooty. Yes, it's about that time. Shout out to everybody that came to the Tahuti pod class. I'm glad you all appreciated the answers that I gave, the time that I put into the answers, and the energy that you put in. Um, yes, come to Sun come to class on Sunday. It's a great session. Shout out to Shannon. Shout out to uh, everybody. Oh, um, Mr. Elite, how can I get your PDF? Scribe, are you here? Uh, send Mr. Elite the, uh, the website. Mr. Elite, how can I get the PDF? Escape the metric matrix. How do I? Scribe will send you. Oh, he did already. Click on there and you can get it um, there. Thank you. That saves me a lot of email time. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to Desmond who, oh, Desmond put pictures of UFO. Shout out to Desmond. Uh, shout out to Darius McNear. Shout out to uh, Eric. That's it. <laughs> what an interesting name. Eric. That's it. Right, shout out to Eric. That's it. Rigo, Rigo, Rigo. Shout out to you, Rigo. This is one of the other uh, great supporters, always um, sending in big supports um, under uh, Rod Rigo. Shout out to Rigo. I appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you. Um, shout out to uh, That's It. Eric says, thank you, Tootie, for your hard work. Thank you for appreciating it um you'd be surprised the work that's actually going into this stuff uh shout out to um ava shout out to nightlife 
Shout out to Ahati Ma'at, my soldier. Um, oh, Nightfire. Nightfire, thank you. Shout out to Nightfire. I thought I was saying Nightfire. Um, shout out to everybody that's in the room. Jody, shout out to Jody. Master K, appreciate it. Um, he says to Desmond, perhaps you need to send in your hypothesis to be cited by other scientists regarding how impact creators are formed. Interesting. Okay. Interesting conversations. That's good. I like it when the class sparks conversations on the topic. That can only elevate us more. The more conversations you have, the more insights you seek, and then boom, you discover new things and you widen your horizon. And your perspective on life. Keep keep talking about it, good or bad. Keep building. Keep building. Okay, shout out to everybody. Appreciate you. Let me give a shout out to the moderators before I close out. Shout out to the great moderators, um, who is the scribe, of course. Um, I'm going to put um, the moderators who are Anki and Ma'at, Nani Ascent Mur. Sinetia Moon, Ahati Ma'at, and the great technician moderator, the one and only scribe. The one and only scribe. Shout out to you, my good brother. Appreciate you. Shout out to you and all your support and everything that you do. Shout out to Ascari, who's really uh he's really loyal and dedicated. Shout out to you. Um, check your PayPal. Let me refresh and see. Um, oh, wow. I got a PayPal last minute. Rigo always does that. <laughs> Is this Rigo? He must be, he must be him. Oh my goodness. Rigo. Rigo hitting me with the uppercut. Last minute uppercut. I'm ready to, for bed and Rigo comes with the Hadouken sonic boom. Get over here. Crazy. Sonia Blade hits and wow, Rigo, this man just ended the class last minute with a last minute donation. Appreciate you, my brother. Let me see where this went to. Where did it go? Is this him, Rigo? Yeah. Oh, no, let's begin leisure. Hold on, Rigo. Your donation has... Oh, you know what? That's what's happening. I see what's happening. My computer is putting uh, donations on top of each other, so it looks like uh, that's how sometimes I see questions may get lost. Okay, I got a the Mac, man. The Mac, it's putting uh, things on top of each other, and I don't see. Here it is. I had to move all those, and I see. Rodrigo, here we go. Okay, boom. Let me get back to it. Let me give this man his major props for the surprise uppercut knockout donation to end the night. What a blessing. What a blessing of appreciation from this brother. Let me go ahead and give him a shout out. Um, let me see. Where'd it go? Okay, shout out to you, my brother. Where? Let me get you on the screen. This is taking a nice time to get you up and we have got you up. There it is. You are up. Boom. Rodrigo L. Varado. You sound like my my PayPal. PayPal is Akiel Arnado. You're Rodrigo Alvarado. All right. So shout out to you. Let me go ahead and put on Oh man, you get the you get the battle horns. You get uh, shout out to you, my good brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support out of nowhere. Pops in the room right at the end. Uppercuts me with a fifty-two dollars, my brother. I'm so I'm tired, and but thank you so much. <laughs> Thought I was just about to close out. Give a couple shout outs, and this man comes in.
Thank you, my brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. You do that a lot. You come in last minute and just do the uppercut hit. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Appreciate you, my good brother, Rigo. Thank you for telling me to check the PayPal. I actually wasn't going to check and refresh again. Thank you. Appreciate you, my good brother. Awesome, man. Okay, I think that is it for the night. Shout out to everybody, every, everybody who came, supported. This has been a great night of support, a great night of good communication, um, good thoughts. And uh, Derry says, RIP. Another great episode, RIP Julio. Looking down. <laughs> R.I.P. Coolio looking down from Gangsta's Paradise. How ironic. How ironic is that, right? How ironic is that? That the brother who put out that song, you can actually add his most popular song to his R.I.P. now. That is uh, that is very nice. Awesome. Shout out to Unki and Ma'at. He says, check the email. That must have been it. Um, shout out to Rigo who says dang. Shout out to Hati Ma'ad who says join every Sunday. That's right, everybody. Take heed, join every Sunday for the Stepping Out of the Matrix Sunday book study. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Okay, everybody, let me give a shout out to the moderators. And let me, the, our moderators are Anki and Ma'at, Nani Aset Mur, Sineti Amun, Ahati Ma'at. And the great technician moderator who is the scribe. Let me see if I can find him here. I just had his name up here. The scribe who is our personal technician, the smallest brother with the deepest voice. Shout out to you, the scribe. There he is. Shout out to the scribe. People are thanking him, and he's saying, You're welcome to Elite. Shout out to Mitcha. Shout out to everybody. For those who want to support and get the uh, get my books, my PDFs. I have Melanin Dark Consciousness PDF, and I have Stepping Out the Matrix. You can contact me directly, or you can go to the website that Scribe will put in the room. You can contact me directly. If you want to directly contact me, ask me a personal question, direct question about the book or anything, or you can go to the website, either or is fine with me. Please support with Cash App TT Amun. Please support with Rocky at Rocky SV Cash App TT Amun. If you appreciate the time, the tenacity, the diligence, the coherency of what it is that I do, compared to what else is available out there. If you appreciate that, please send in any support or donation or question through Cash App TT Amun or PayPal is at Rocky SV. Everyone go to the website that Ahati just put or Scribe put on the, the uh, in the chat. The website is the Teachings of Ma'at. Everybody support that. Go there. The website is building and building every day. Also, on Mondays, I'm changing it to 12 o'clock. It used to be 11.30, but 12 o'clock on Mondays is Medunetter Monday. Come there, and it's like another 2 Pod class, just more personal. And I break down the glyphs. I break down sentences that are actually in the papyrus and so much more. Contact me directly at mysticaltelevision at gmail.com if you want to know more about MetaNetter Mondays and how to join, what it costs, um, and what you need. Okay, shout out to everybody. This has been a wonderful class, wonderful energy. Here it is, the teachings of Ma'at. Go ahead and sign in for the newsletter there. Okay, and then he said, Mer said, uh, got books, email to Huti Saba at mysticaltelevision, gmail.com for your inquiry. 
Shout out to everybody in the chat. Appreciate you all. Oh, oh no. My screen has just went in half. That is okay. Interesting. Okay, well, that's good. More comedic imagery behind me, anyways. All right, shout out everybody. It looks interesting. It looks like it's the Matrix, and then it cuts down, and then it's a uh, Meruneta. That looks actually kind of cool there. That looks good. Meruneta merging into the Matrix. Okay, shout out to everybody. I'm going to get um, I'm going to get Zebra here. Hey Zebra, there you are. Shout out to Zebra, right here. Boom. Shout out to Neith on my hat. Appreciate everybody. This looks really cool. This looks like really uh looks like a studio with uh Metanetter coming out of the matrix. That looks really neat, decent. All right, shout out to everybody who came to support the Tahuti Pa class. We are gonna end off with the affirmation. The affirmation, and then we shall close out. This has been a wonderful PA class. Awesome questions. Wait till next week when I get into this nuclear explosion. Here's the affirmation. We'll say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Anki and Ma'at, Un MS, Nin Tet, Aset and Mayat, Me and Hepapet and Mayat, Her and Hu Kiwi, Per Ikut. I live from Ma'at. I exist within her. I do not speak in the place of Ma'at. Every day I advance towards Ma'at. My being is surrounded in darkness. I come forth as conscious light. Thank you, everyone who supported, those who watch, who may support uh, later. Thank you for all the continuous dedication for being great students and appreciating who I am and what I do. I greatly appreciate you for that. Peace and love, everyone. We love you very much. And I am dedicated to be your Saba, the door opener for you, and for you to be the Saba, which is the student. Peace and love, everybody. Shout out to all of the people. Rigo says, wah. And then Shannon says, very artful. <laughs> yes, it was very interesting, very interesting. Sleep well, everyone. Yes, Jordy, we will sleep well. Shout out to everybody. This has been a beautiful class. Contact me if you have any other questions. Go to the website. Contact the Hockey Scribe, the Hootimos, Arcad, AJ, the whole team. If you want to know more about the Sunday builds, their builds. And actually, last Sunday, Scribe gave a little build. It was awesome. Wonderful, everybody. You are awesome. Fabulous. Peace and love. Ma'at Hotep. See you all next week.